With the dog days of summer now behind us, we're bringing you a marathon of our favorite summertime escapes on this special episode of Homeworthy. From glamorous gardens and oceanfront estates to country cottages and poolside patios, these tastemakers will surely have you booking one more vacation before the season ends. Enjoy! You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Like and subscribe for more. Hello, Homeworthy. Welcome. I am Bunny Williams, and I'm so happy to have all of you come into our house in Falls Village, Connecticut. I would say 38 years ago, um, I was looking for a house. I was married to someone else at the time, and we had been renting a house in the northwest corner of Connecticut. And I was looking for a house that I would fall in love with. I also was looking for a place to start a garden because I really, as much as I love my interior design, gardening is my hobby and other passion. And when I turned in the driveway of this house, without even going inside, I had this feeling, and I'm not a superstitious person at all, ever. All of a sudden, my palms started to perspire, and something happened to me physically when I drove in the driveway. The driveway's lined with these beautiful big locust trees. I saw this white house sitting on a hill, and I thought to myself, I'm gonna live in this house. I hadn't even gone inside, and of course, when we went inside, it was pretty horrifying because it was a rooming house and it had not had any uh, real love for a long time. Um, the house was built, um, the main part of the house was built in 1860 by Mr. Brewster. Uh, the house was on Brewster Road at the time and Mr. Brewster was sort of the main guy in town and this was called the manor house of the, of the town. It was originally a big farm um, and it's now we have about uh, 12 acres, it's all the land was sold off. So now we're in the living room of our house. Um, this room is a square room. Um, it has these wonderful long uh, French doors and windows that give the room a lot of light. One of the things that I loved when I came to this house is that nobody had ruined the details. So the, the moldings were here, the old mantle was here. This part of the house was built in 1860. And when I walked in the door, it was a rooming house at the time. Actually, there were beds in this room, if you can believe it, somebody was sleeping here. And, um, but when I walked into it, I didn't, as, I didn't see any of the mess. I just saw what the bones of this, this whole house. And this room had its original bones. And that's sort of what I loved about it. It's a square room and there's, you know, people say, oh, do you move your furniture around? And I said, well, I really can't move my furniture around in this room because I made a floor plan that works. Um, we entertain a lot. Um, I've got a big sofa in front of the windows, this comfortable chair I'm sitting in. And so I've made a seating group that's perfect for six people. And then in front of the fireplace, I have two benches that can pull in for eight. And I always think, a dinner party of eight people is perfect, and we use this room a lot in the winter. It's cold outside, and this house is quite warm and cozy. So we eat in the dining room of this house, and we entertain. Um, you can see I always believe in making my guests feel comfortable. So against the wall is a cabinet. It's a Regency 19th century painted cabinet, and it's the bar, and it's set up the drinks are out, the glasses are out. All I have to do is put a bottle of wine in a, can, in a canister and bring an ice bucket. And my friends just help themselves. If they want another drink, they get up and help themselves. And I think when you entertain, you want to make people feel comfortable and at home. And if you're rushing off to the kitchen or someplace else, it makes the guests feel uncomfortable. So we do entertain a lot. We use this room a lot. I actually love this room in the morning when the sun's coming in. I can sit in this chair and read the paper or read a book. 
Most of the furnishings in this room have been collected over a period of time. Frankly, when I bought this house, I couldn't even afford to decorate this room. So we furnished our library, and this room sat, sat empty for about five years, believe it or not. And little by little, I thought, okay, now I need to, uh, to do the fine things for the living room. And the first thing, one of the first things I bought was the mirror over the mantel. I found it down in the, in the village in a kind of crusty antique shop when there were lots more in New York. And it was a federal mirror, mirror the period of the house. I'm not, a, I'm not into having everything be of the period, but when I saw that over mantel mir mirror and it fit perfectly, I thought I had to have it. In the corner of this, of this living room is a 1950s mirrored screen. It's very chic, kind of uh, stylish, I think, but it gives, it's wonderful at night because with candlelight and the lamp lights on, it gives a glow to the corner. And I think corners of rooms are often forgotten, so sticking a, a screen in a corner just makes the corner come alive. When we entertain, I want everything done before the guests get here. I like to have relaxed, re really relaxed entertaining. We do buffet. We often, in this house, will do the buffet in the kitchen. People get their plates, help themselves, and they come and sit down in the dining room. If I can, I like to have somebody help clean up, and I might get somebody to come and help pass seconds and um, take the plates away and serve dessert. But we're pretty informal, and the main thing about entertaining is the host and hostess should not be stressful. If you're stressful, your guests are gonna be stressful. If you're popping up and down and worrying about things, you're gonna make your guests uncomfortable. And I also say, if you're not a cook, don't worry about it. Trader Joe's has great food. Go buy it, but serve it beautifully. Put it on a pretty platter. Have a pretty table that's set. People aren't gonna know whether you cook the dinner or not if you serve it beautifully. And I really believe that you should not think, oh, I, I'm, not, I'm not Julia Childs, but I need to go to the cookbook for you know, the entire day and cook something. I don't think you have to do that anymore. The main thing is to get your friends together, for you to be relaxed and to have a wonderful time. The secretary desk in this room is one that was a splurge. I had another one here that frankly I'd bought along the side of the road and I always wanted to upgrade it. And there was a great Swedish dealer named Arne Schlesch, and he moved, he, he closed his shop, and there was an auction at Sotheby's, and I bought this um, Danish, it's actually a Danish secretary desk that is the same period of the house, even though it's, it's, it's Danish. So that's one of my favorite things. Um, I have a pair of chairs that came from my furniture collection, Bunny Williams Home, little drinks tables that we make. And so I mix some of my new things with um, the one of a kinds that we find. My feeling about decorating is I want a room to feel relaxed, not forced, and I'd like it to open up to you the longer you're in it. If you sit in this room for a while, you'll see I've used this wonderful hand block linen print on one chair. It's not repeated again in the room. My sofa is a beige uh, twill fabric. I often do sofas in solid colors, but then over the back is a beautiful Susani. When we found that when we were in Turkey, I've got in African fabrics for pillows on either side and an English needlepoint pillow in the center. So there's pattern on the sofa, but every single thing is different. It's but it's, it's a harmony of color. Um, and I think you can't, you, you have to think about how you put it together in a color palette, but you can have different textures. And I think that becomes more interesting and as I say, kind of evolves. It's like the mantle, the uh, objects on the mantle in this room. I loved aptware and I had a uh, pair of aptware vases. So everything on the mantle is browns. It's, it's wedgewood, it's aptware, and there are a pair of Chinese dogs I found that are brown pottery. So it was collected over a period of time. It all works together, but it's, it's different. The wall color in this room is this, um, actually it's sort of, it's not really melon, it's not really yellow. I was in Italy 
um, at the Villa San Michele having lunch. And it was this beautiful room that was the most extraordinary color I'd ever seen. And I, it was supposedly designed by Michelangelo. And it had its original plaster. I just fell in love with the color. And I noticed that all the napkins in the restaurant were the exact dyed exactly the color of the room because I wasn't sure how I was going to remember the color when I got home. So I went to the maitre d' after a very expensive lunch and asked if I could buy a napkin. And when he saw the size of the bill, he said, oh, you can have one. And so I brought the napkin home. And actually, I painted these walls myself. This was 35 years ago. And I wanted it to look like old plaster. So I used water-based paint that I thinned down. And I used watercolors to, make, to get the color. It was the hardest thing I ever did because water-based paint dries very quickly, but the walls have kind of an irregular quality and I've never repainted them and I'm, I know I'll never get this finish if I have a crack in the walls, but it's just gonna have to stay because I don't dare, I've painted the trim again, but I don't dare paint the walls again. I think my interior design sense first starts with comfort and livability. No matter where I'm working, I want to talk to my clients about how they live, do their children, what do they like to do? Are they television watchers? Do they play games? What's their lifestyle like? Because you're basically creating a canvas for them to live in. I personally like rooms that are a bit relaxed because I think it's not intimidating to people. If something is too perfect and too lined up and and symmetrical. If it, if it gets moved, then it all falls apart. So I like things, my, I like my floor plans a little bit more relaxed. I don't mind the chairs are angled. And guess what? When there are eight people in the room, things get moved around, but I don't get obsessive about it. And I think that um, you, you, your guests will feel more comfortable and your children will. I mean, they're not going to feel like uh, and you're not going to be screaming at them that they moved something out of place. So you want, you want people to be comfortable where they live. And I try to, even, even formal rooms, I try to relax them. I'm very dog friendly. Uh, as everyone knows, you may see my dogs. And uh, because I'm totally undisciplined about how they behave. Um, I often put a throw over the um, seat of my sofas. I try to blend it into the color of the sofa so you don't really know it's there. But if, in case they come in with wet paws, I can put it in the dry cleaner or wash it and put it back. You know, I think the one thing that's interesting today is people don't stay in a house very long. You know, you buy a house, you're, you're, you, know, you, you stay there five or six years, you move on. Um, I think when you can stay in a house for a long time, um, it gets a patina, you get to do it over a period of time, and things change. I mean, you move on, as I say, the a table you buy in the living room may go in a guest bedroom, or you, know, you have children, the children's rooms become grown-up rooms, Houses evolve, and I, I think this house, because we've lived here a long time, has evolved. And certainly when you get into creating gardens, once you get them established and growing, you never want to leave them because you can't get it again. One of my other favorite rooms in this house is the screen porch. I, growing up in Virginia, everybody had a screen porch, and I was very lucky that this house had a screen porch, which I'd like to show you now. When I bought this house, the screen porch was here, and luckily, it, the screens can go out and it has glass for the winter. So it can be a glassed-in porch in the, in the winter. But in the summer, it's a place we really use a lot. Um, it faces the garden, so I get to sit here, look out on the garden when I sit. I don't have a lot of time to sit. But um, we love to come out here in the afternoon, late in the afternoon, have a glass of wine, have the fans on, um, and chat and have the lovely summer air. It also is a place that I do my jigsaw puzzles. And I had a table made by one of our artisans from 100 Main, especially for jigsaw puzzle doing. So I always have one set up and I'll do it for an hour. I find it very relaxing. Then I get frustrated and leave, but it's always there. And to me, it's just one of the great summer projects. 
the room's always filled with plants. We have a big greenhouse, so there are begonias and ferns and things that do very well in a shady environment. And the plants get changed periodically, but it, it's in the shade, so we want things that do well in a shady situation. This screen porch is really kind of a nightmare. It's very, very long and narrow. So when I look at any room, I analyze it with its strong suit and its problems. Lots of rooms have problems. They are, they're not always perfect for furniture placement. You have to analyze your elevations, where your windows are. So this room was kind of hard to furnish in the fact that it's so long and narrow. So in the center of the room, I put this very, very long sofa that four people can sit on. Again, I think about a number of people. I group chairs around it. And then at one end of the room, I have a round table that you can have supper or breakfast or sit out and eat at. And at the other end is my puzzle table. So I use the whole space, though you can't do that many seating groups in it. It's also quite narrow, so you it's hard to kind of move in, but I tried to make it as comfortable as possible. But any room, the first thing I do is to look at the room and analyze its, its good points, its bad points. What are you going to do? Design is often correcting problems of a room. How do you make a low ceiling room look taller? How do you balance it? You often start with trying to solve the architectural problems of, of a space before you even start to decorate it. We have a slip cover on our sofa. I'm, I'm really into slip covers. Uh, they can go in the wash. Um, they're actually better than upholstery. So this is covered underneath, but this has this duck slip cover that can come off and go to um, the laundry or into the wash and be put back on. One of the very, very first things that I had for this room is I had a dear, dear friend, Robert Jackson, who was one of the great decorative painters. He was one of my best, best friends. And he had painted a room for an apartment in New York. And the apartment was sold, and the mural that he painted was taken down, and he was able to get it back. And he gave me, as a present when we first bought this house, this part of this paneled room, uh, this painted room that he'd done. And it's one of my favorite garden scenes. I mean, I just wish my garden would look like this panel. And so we stretched it and um, attached it to the clabbered uh, building. I built the frame around it. But it's one of the things that's been here the longest and one of my great treasures. A room needs plants. It needs flowers. It needs books. It needs something to make you feel. It needs magazines it, to make people feel that, they, that it's lived in. And I try to encourage that with my clients. I try to encourage them that that's okay. The coffee table can have books on it. Um, you know, I'll buy cash bow for them, like in this porch, these beautiful cash bow that have the caladiums in it, which are made from Delft tiles. I'm always looking for things like that because it, then it's very easy for a client to go to Home Depot or Trader Joe's and get a plant and put in there. Just having a green plant in a room makes it come alive and you feel that it's being lived in. Um, I want to do everything to make my houses n not feel like a hotel. We've come from the living room into the library, and this is a wonderful portrait by a really dear friend of mine who lives in uh, Connecticut, Hillary Cooper. And I loved her work, and I said to her, I want you to paint John. John said, I don't want my portrait painted. And I said, I know she will capture you perfectly. And what I love is that he's sitting in a chair with his beloved BB in his lap holding her and it's a pose you see all the time. Um, it, it's just wonderful and I find it so much more personal than just a photograph. Well, I run out and I find that I hang pictures on bookshelves because I run out of wall space. And I have a lot of books that are books that I'm not going to read, their history, their older books that are maybe a series of um, Trollop or something like that. So it's not the books that I get to. The lower ones are where I put the art books and things that I'm, I'm going to 
probably pull off the shelves. So I'm often hanging a picture right over the books. We collect too many things. You, you know, John Rosselli, who I'm married to, was an antique dealer for 60 years. We love so many things. We love porcelain. I love, he loves bronzes. Um, it's really what catches our eye. I always say a collector is somebody who buys a lot of one thing. We just buy a lot of things. Uh, and it's terrible because I can hardly fit anything, but it's the hunt we love. Um, and we, we always say, oh, we don't need anything. And then the next thing you know, you're in an antique shop and you go, oh, isn't this just wonderful? Um, and so it comes to the house. It's a constant thing of rearranging the accessories and the objects to make it look orderly and not just piled up. Now we're leaving the main house and we're going over to the barn. And I'll tell you the story of the barn when we get there. Come on, Annabelle. Let's go. Come on. Let's go, Annabelle. Come on. Good girl. Good girl. This is my beloved Annabelle, who is wonderful, except she can be a terror. So she can be a terrible terrier, but I adore this dog. She came from Texas, and she's a rescue from PetFinders.com. We are now in the barn, what we refer to as the barn. When I first bought this house, this was a garage. It was no windows. It had um, big 50s garage doors that you needed a remote control to open. And it was filled with cars, trucks, gear, you know, everything. When it was pretty much a mess, but, it, but we used it. It had the garbage cans and the extra storage things. And when John Rosselli came into my life, um, he walked around and I was so afraid that John would say, I, you know, why don't you sell this house and let's go do something together. And he came into this room and he looked at it and he said, I think we could do something with this space. This barn is 18th century. It's been here since about 1760, 1780. All the timber frame is original to the, the farm. Um, and when you started to look at it, you saw these beautiful, big, wide board ceilings. We renovated it by taking the roof off, taking the siding off. We had to heat it. We had to build the chimney. We put in the windows. We basically left the barn standing at one point and used the timber frame as the accent part of the interiors. Um, it's a room that we wanted very much because, as I said always, that we love to entertain. And this is a big room, so I can have, you know, 12, 14 people. Um, and in the winter, we've got the fires going. Um, it's just kind of very special. It's filled with lots of things that belong to John, um, things I've added to it, um, pictures that we love, many pictures of animals and farm animals. and that we've collected over a period of time. There's always a huge flower arrangement on the end of the desk that comes from the garden with the, this time of year it's hydrangeas and Queen Anne's lace. But every week that gets done. And in the winter it gets big orchids and plants. Um, it's just a great place to entertain in. We got married in this barn. Um, we were together for a number of years and um, we, when we decided to get married, we did get married right in front of the fireplace. And we had 18 people for lunch in the conservatory. And my nephew, then later, many years later, I gave a wedding for my nephew and he, uh, Carter and Kate got married here. And then during COVID, my niece and James got married in this room um, with only immediate family. So we've had uh, 150 people, we've had 18 people, and we've had eight people <laughs> for family weddings. So it's really very special for us. You also, if you look closely on our on a needlepoint chair in this room, is the newest member of our family. Um, about a month and a half ago, two months ago, um, a wonderful cat came into our life, uh, her, and it, her name is Snowy. Uh, she's beautiful white with pink ears. 
One of the very special things in this room is the mirror over the mantel. It's an extremely large convex mirror, which is, you usually don't see, convex means it's curved, and you don't see them this big that often. And the beauty of it is that it it reflects the entire room. So it gives, when you look in the mirror, you see the whole room, which you don't often see if you just have a, a piece of straight uh, plate glass. This was a mirror that John had, um, and we restored it, and it's just a very special piece. Um, one of my favorite paintings is Over the Door, and it's a painting of horse's rear ends, which I gave to my husband for his birthday one time, and my, the card said, this is not what I think of you. What did he say? He loved it. <laughs> he loved it. One of the most important things, again, when you make your guests feel comfortable. Have you ever sat down in a chair and had no place to put your iced tea or your glass of wine, and you're, do I put it on the floor? What do I do with it? So to me, it's called a drinks table, and it's absolutely essential. And I quite, I laugh a lot and say that I, I started Bunny Williams' home because I was designing drinks tables because I couldn't find enough. And so I started designing them, having them made. And that's launched into a whole furniture collection. But it started with the absolute need for little tables next to every chair. They can be tiny, but everybody should sit down and you should in your own house sit in every chair and say, where do I put my glass of wine? Where do I put my cup of coffee? Because if you're stranded without it, you're not going to be comfortable. Accessorizing tables is, I, have, I, have, I mean, I think it's kind of an art. I always say when you're doing a table, you're creating a little still life. You have to think about it. Things, this table, this beautiful big um, bone box that John's had for years. So this table is quite balanced. They're pairs. Um, there's this wonderful bronze giraffe. We love bronzes. Um, so this is organized because it's, it's kind of paired. On the other hand, on this table, John over the years has been collecting these incredible silver fish. So they're not they're not pairs, but you have to arrange them and balance them and line them up. And it's complicated because when it gets dusted and clean, somebody's got to put it back the same way. So having objects and accessories does take some maintenance. I actually love it. I mean, I walk in a room, and when I come here every weekend, I'm always pushing things around a little bit, but I actually love doing that. But you have to think of your tables as a little bit of a still life each time. It's funny in life, you kind of never know what's going to happen. One day, I was going to the grocery store, and I went by one of my favorite junk shops, and there, leaning against his building, were, was this facade of windows. There are three arched windows that I did a U-turn, went in, and I said, those windows are so beautiful. And he, he said they came off of a conservatory on the Hudson River of about 1860. And I said, well, that's the period of my house. We're in this space that we're in, I had a tiny, tiny little greenhouse. There was a shed and there was a little greenhouse. The greenhouse was 32 feet long and these windows were 32 feet long. So I bought the windows and we had them delivered. I ripped off the greenhouse and the shed. We built the side windows to match and created this conservatory. Um, this room is probably my most favorite room in the whole house. It is filled with plants. Things grow, passion flowers. This vine is a passion flower. Jasmines, ferns, um, all kinds of different plants. This big palm. And then in the winter, to sit in here on a beautiful winter day and see the garden all covered in snow is really fantastic. Um, we, we entertain in here, we have dinners in here. My family's coming this weekend. We'll have all 10 of us, we'll have meals in this room. And it's beautiful at night, beautiful at daytime, um, and it makes a bigger dining room for us. The ceiling are three skylights which need to I, I put in to get more light to grow the plants, but actually, because the light is so strong, I've made these sort of scrim 
that I pull by hand, these shades that are made out of parachute cloth. And you can just pull them, um, but it makes a better filtered light. And certainly when you're in this room, if the sun were right over top of you, it would be almost unbearable. So I love seeing the sun through the filtered light. And the wonderful thing about this room is it looks out into the parterre garden. And a parterre garden is from the French where the beds are, are divided up into geometric shapes, often with boxwood around them, and then they have different plantings. This is my red rocket. We are now going up to the studio, which is up on top of the hill. So we're going to have a little ride up through the orchard, by the pool, up to the studio. So we built this barn, and then this is the vegetable garden and cutting garden. This is where all the flowers come from. It's a big greenhouse. Look at the tomatoes. And I planted, we got the fields to, we scoured up the fields to put the Queen Anne's lace in it, because I just love Queen Anne's lace, one of my favorite things. So that's the swimming pool with the temple. That's the pool house. All of this I had to create. It was an A-frame house with a wooden deck around it. It was so ugly. That property where the pool was, I couldn't afford. And it was, it was a field and somebody bought it. And then I ended up buying it from them. This was a house somebody built and lived in. And I bought this probably five or six years ago. And where we go in was a, uh, just a, a dirt cellar. I mean, it wasn't even a finished space. But I had this idea that I wanted a big, I wanted it much more contemporary. And I wanted it to look like it belonged to the property. But I wanted these big glass windows and the view and everything. So I had no idea COVID was coming. And so I worked here for two years, uh, completing two large projects. So it's been pretty special to me. Okay, you can go in. You can go in now. Yes. This is my gym. I knew I would never go in a gym if it wasn't pretty. So I hung a 19th century garden tapestry in it to make it not so gym-like. I also hung a collection of needlepoint pictures that I had collected years and years ago that I thought were sort of granny. So I took them down, but I saved them. And then when I did this very modern space, I, it gave them a new life. So this is what I call the studio. And this room that we're in was a living room, a kitchen, uh, a laundry room, two bedrooms, a loft with a sleeping loft. It was all chopped up. And I had this idea it was an A-frame house, and I had this idea of one giant room with windows at both ends, so I could see the view of the Litchfield Hills, the clouds. I wanted it much more contemporary. I wanted it very clean, and I wanted a place that I could sit by the fire, read a book. I could have my samples. I have this big work table with my computer. I have a drawing board. I can work on plans. I have easels to paint and draw. It's really a studio. I can do a little bit of everything. I built in bookcases to bring my gardening books, my art books, my interior design books, some of my old magazines. So it's a reference library, my samples that I use that are changing all the time, um, my inspiration board. There's no kitchen in this house. I didn't want John said, we need a kitchen. I said, no, we don't. We have a house with a kitchen. This is not about cooking and entertaining. This is my getaway place. I have a refrigerator drawer and a, a freezer drawer. So I have an ice um, and I can have, you know, drinks and things like that, but that's all I need. It was a house with no architectural merit. So it was prime to gut it. There was no you know, it was, a, it was home built. I mean, somebody had built it themselves. So there was no architectural merit to this house. It would be, I couldn't do this to my period house. I couldn't rip out all those moldings. But, and the scale of it with this big high ceiling lends itself to just simple plaster walls and poured concrete floors. So the bones of this house I knew would be always be more contemporary, simpler, 
um, and I wanted it to be very much a part of the landscape. This house probably was built in maybe the 80s, uh, 70s, and it was built by a couple. They built it themselves. Um, so, as I say, there was the, the volume was great, but there was not. I wasn't ripping apart any, you know, history. Um, so that's what's fun to take a space that you can renovate and do that too because you're not destroying something wonderful. I have some antiques in here, but I have more contemporary furniture. But it's again a mixture. I'm not gonna do the, the chairs are a contemporary. This is a chaise that I do at Bunny Williams' home. I've got French chairs. I've got this big table that came out of a library. Um, so it's a mixture. It's a mixture of modern art, um, a modern background, and some antiques. This cabinet is actually an Edwardian file cabinet, and it's perfect for papers, for the pens, for all the art material, but it was originally a filing cabinet. Um, this is what you put your, so now I have my papers. It was just the perfect storage piece. I could have bought a big metal filing cabinet, but I thought this was more interesting. I love these hall chairs, these French, these were, these wooden chairs were made for halls when people came in in their wet coats so, so there are no cushions and seats. I've always loved them. I find them, I find that chair almost like a piece of sculpture. So I look at furniture, there's an African chair. I mean, that, doesn't that look like a piece of sculpture? So furniture to me, it has to catch my eye, the shape of it. Um, and that's what makes you like it and want it. I love having a big branch and again, any room, if you put something tall in it, it make, even if you have an eight, feel, eight foot ceiling room, put a big branch in it. It's gonna make the ceilings feel taller. And I think people are always doing things that are too small. Go for it, do something bigger. And this is the simplest thing in the world to do, is to have a big branch and a glass vase. You can cut them along the side of the road. People ask me this all the time about what inspires you. Um, I think that you have to always be looking at new things. You have to, I think a, a designer's brain is like a scramble of everything they've seen. Um, trips that you've been to, places that you've been. And what, what inspires you in the end is to take a space like this and think, what do you want it to be? And then you go back to references of things that you might have seen. I have all these scrapbooks and I like, oh, I want the plaster walls. I'm sure someplace I saw this raised hearth and I love the wood underneath. So the inspirations come from this, I call it my scrapbook in my brain, of things that I've exposed myself to over the years. But it's not just one thing. Um, I don't think we should be inspired by just one thing because then you're copying that thing. What we want to do as a designer is see a lot, take a lot, be inspired by a lot, and then put it together and make it our own. You can feel discouraged. I don't think you're uninspired. You can go to a project. Years and years ago, I had these wonderful clients. I knew them personally, and they, I had worked for friends of theirs, and they asked me to come and work on their house. And I drove up to a house that was really the ugliest house I'd ever seen. I, it was uglier than this house. I didn't know, I actually was one of those things where I thought, I don't know what to do with this. So I was almost ready to say, I, you have the wrong person. When they were showing me around the house and they opened these concealed closet doors, there were many of them, and they opened the concealed closet door and in the closets were the most beautiful sets of china I think I'd ever seen in my life. I mean, sets for 20 of um, Imari, of um, Coalport, I mean, just extraordinary china. And I thought, anybody who would buy this china, there's something here. And I ended up working on this project, loving it, pushing myself out of my comfort zone, and being excited by it. And it was one of the first times I've done that. And I thought we all have to think outside the box and go for it.
I put these two big chairs by the windows and John and I come and sit. The problem with the chairs is I often come up here to read or do something and I sit in the chair and I just look at the clouds. The interesting thing about a house and a garden is you can't love one thing more than another. It's like you can't want love one child more than another. You really shouldn't love one dog more than another. What happens is that every place has a special time in a moment. The kitchen when you're cooking, your bedroom when you're sleeping, the screen porch when I'm doing puzzles, this studio when I'm working, and my garden all the time. Um, it's just something that we use all of it. People are like, well, where do you go? I said, you don't understand. I get up at six o'clock in the morning. I'm out in the garden, cutting flowers, doing flowers for the house. I'm a putterer. I like to work, I like to be in, in charge and have ownership of my house. Come back in the kitchen, make my peaches and yogurt. Um, and then you go on and you think maybe somebody's coming for dinner and you're in the barn. You have an hour in the afternoon, you go on the porch, work on your puzzle. It, you use your whole house, so it's really hard to pick one favorite spot. Um, and I wish I had more time to be in all of them uh, more, but um, we try to make the best of it. But I'm so glad all of you came, and I hope maybe one day you'll come for a garden visit. Bye! Hello! I'm Betty. Welcome to my Newport home. I can't wait to show you around. Hello, I'm Betty Bearden Pardee in Newport, Rhode Island. Very fortunate to live here. When we moved here about 30 years ago and decided to build a house a few years after that, I realized that there was no reference book on the private homes of Newport. So, I produced Private Newport and Living Newport um, coffee table books that capture about 35 of the private homes of Newport. And of course from there, social media, blogs, etc, etc. And here we are today and I'm so happy to be visiting with you. We did something that we had said we would never ever ever do, build a house. But we found this lot which had been originally part of the Belmont estate and took a deep breath and dived into home building. It turned out to be the most fun we have had and we cherished and adored every moment of it. And one thing of course, as we all know, when you build your own house, you can personalize it. And I'm really looking forward to walking with you all through this house and showing you the choices that we made and a lot of them have to do with entertaining. Having been an editor at Bon Appetit, uh, producing Entertaining with Style, uh, I've had lots of ideas and opportunities and photo shoots and meeting people to get some great ideas. This is a salon, which is the main room of the house. It's got a slight oval shape to it um, that I found more appealing and also gave us the opportunity to do some very important storage tricks that I can't wait to show you all. But first, I love the floor. I had no idea that we would be able to find and have that wonderful contractor pattern these floors after, of course, French floors. It's wormy chestnut that we found on the internet and had the boards planed and he created this beautiful, it's a sort of a parquet de Versailles, but a small version that's in scale more with our lifestyle and this room. But one thing I really love and I want to point out to you all because I think it says, speaks so much to my lineage. My darling mother who's Southern, when we were building the house and she was so excited, she said, darling, is there anything from my house that you would like? And I paused because she has a very beautiful home in Atlanta. And I said, well, mother, I, I wouldn't think of taking anything. She said, no, I want to see you enjoying it while I'm still alive, not after I'm gone. So we built the room in honor of my mother with that gorgeous 18th century giltwood mirror that she let me take out of her dining room. 
And I said something to her. She was so funny. I said, well, but Mother, that's in your dining room, don't you? And she said, oh, heck, I'll just get the other one in the bedroom and put it over there. <laughs> so anyway, her spirit is in this house. And as we go through it, I'll point out one or two other things that, um, that she gave us. And I'm so glad she did because she lived at least 12 years after we built the house and moved in. This is another piece that um, you know, antique that we discovered. And what I love so much about it is the sexy curve of the metal um, the pedestal that it's sitting on. And then we had a wooden top done and then faux painted to look like marble. But when you enter from the front door, this is the first thing you see. And of course it goes with the oval of this particular room. And I also have claws that can cover it, um, but I just think that it deserves to have those legs being shown off like that. And then um, I have a thing about consoles. So I found this in uh, Christie's catalog, a pair of them on either side, gilt wood. They're not French, they're Italian, but I think they go very well. And the beautiful rose, deep rose fireplace that we found at an antique shop in Maine. Of course, the fun of building his house is the treasures that you find and the story that went with each treasure. Oh, the trek up to Maine, or this and that. And then, you know, the husband saying, are we ever gonna get there? And finally we got there. But here again, it fits so beautifully to the scale of this room. And I have to say, I have to point out that I'm all about flowers. And I love the opportunity today to dream about some of the things I've always wanted to do, but this was an opportunity to do it. So one of them, for instance, are um, special topiaries that were done just for you all um, with clematis scaling up them in um, an old, old, old terracotta pot. And I think they just bring the garden indoors and still look very dressy. And also, we're, our ceiling is about 10 and a half feet, not too, too tall. And I love stacking. It's not a salon style. A salon style would have the whole wall covered, but at least the three gilt wood frames marching up that panel draw your eye up and make you look at other details like the overdoors here, which I had said we had some tongue in cheek. That's to me very tongue in cheek, a little something from a 18th century French house. Um, and then these are closets, one, two, and three. And do you wanna know what's in the closets? Yes, I do. Well, let's go over, let me show you. Now remember, I said I am very into entertaining. And one of the rules of entertaining is that if it's close at hand, you'll use it and it'll be a lot easier and you won't fuss about entertaining. So here you have the gold ballroom chairs that go at the tables when you're dining. They are stacked shaker style and I can get eight in each closet. So I've got 16, which does two tables, 54 inches. But the real fun, and here again, you'll see this wall is a little wider than a normal wall would be between rooms. And look what's in here. All of the roll-out tables. So you must have some pretty incredible dinner parties. Oh, well, everybody in Newport does. But this just makes it easier. And we don't have a formal dining room. We just dine in every room in the house. We have. Christmas Eve dinner here. We have Christmas Day lunch in front of the, oh, that's a secret. I will tell you about that later. Um, but anyway, I just think if it's, if it's here and you can put your hands on it, you'll use it. Another Italian piece in an otherwise French house. <clears throat> it's an 18th century giltwood settee, which, and I just love the curve of it. And it picks up that curve of the wall, which is, part of what makes this, gives us a feeling of being um, an oval room. And this is fabric that I had forgotten that I had. It was in my mother's attic, and she reminded me I had it since 1970, and it's a beautiful hand-printed clearance house with a Chinese scene on it. And the colors, to me, are so magical. And the way they light up, and of course, you've got the window right there, so you're looking directly onto that pattern. And then there's a little tiny, chaise here, little tiny chair that 
well actually it's the foot, footstool to a, a chaise that has the same fabric on it. But you know, one thing we were so lucky about, when we built the house and started building in 1997, the contractor who had been in charge of Doris Duke's Newport Restoration Foundation was available. And here was a man who was only used to working on 18th century houses. And we very much wanted this to feel like an 18th century house on the interior. He understood exactly what he, we wanted, and he rose to the challenge, and he's still one of our best friends. Well, it's very French. A number of the touches are very tongue-in-cheek, not to be taken too seriously. It's on a scale that is, well, certainly for our lifestyle, not, you know, 20-foot ceilings as so many of the mansions in Newport. But everything from the beautiful wormy chestnut floor to the Honduran mahogany in the library, these were all the touches that just brought us such pleasure each day. All of the room openings are very large. So you flow, I'll never forget my mother. I grew up in Beverly Hills, California, and we had a Mediterranean house. And she said, this house does not flow. And I've always taken that as a measure. So I knew when we built this home that we would be sure that you could easily move from one room into the next. And yet the rooms aren't so large or the opening so big that you feel put off by it. And this is the Parquet de Versailles, but then we took it and flowed, here again the word flow, right into the sunroom. And you can see it's a totally different pattern with almost pie wedges and then centered with the uh, leopard print round table, skirted. I just love, I think it's such a soft, soft, soft feeling to walk into a room. And of course, that's one of the tables that I can use for dining for one group of eight, or I can go in here and get another one. And this room can actually hold three 54 inch round tables. And then my love, my red, I have to have, I have to have a red. I have to have a room that has red in it. And I have these, uh, here again, Italian, in my, my French house, uh, Italian um, painted uh, chairs, four of them. But one thing in this room I'm looking at, and we just put this out, we just got the sofa in. Our apartment in New York in the 70s, no, not in the 70s, I'm sorry, in the 80s, um, had Fortuny pillows, and I have saved them, and I built this settee around this and the red chairs I had. So I always have a spot in one room of any house or apartment I've had that has red in it. And I'm so excited about way, the way this works. And I sort of call it my Deanna Vreeland room because she, you know, she loved leopard and she loved red. Talk about serendipity. We are, we only lived at the time about half a mile from here. So it was very easy to come over every day. And I was here on the job all day long. Um, and I came in a little early one day and they were finishing, um, you know, the wall board and everything. And I walked in and I looked up and I saw this interesting, gorgeous shape. And I turned to the uh, carpenter and I said, Louis, I said, what is this? And he said, oh, don't worry, Mrs. Pardee, we're, we're going to be boarding over it. And I said, no, no, we're not going to, we're going to keep this. So we took the painting that had been done on the walls and we continued it up into that, but come and stand underneath it. You feel like you're underneath a Chinese umbrella. And very importantly, I'm standing right here and this is where the Christmas tree goes and it can be 11 feet. They're hard to find, but anyway. So at Christmas time, this is a Christmas tree. And if I hadn't gotten over there early that morning, that would have been gone. If you had to ask me my favorite room in this house, I would say it's this room because of the paintwork. And at the time we were building, there was a wonderful book out called The Swedish Room. And this is where I was inspired to have the painters do this hand-painted work on all of the walls, as you can see. And one thing right here, they also touched it with a little bit of gold. So at night, when the candles are on, this glimmers a little tiny bit.
But I love color. And here again, back to the red. I love, this is my favorite vignette. Come here, and you just have to get this right here. The two chairs centered on the panel and with that sconce above. Well, of course, that's Augustus Caesar dressed to go out in Newport. <laughs> I always have to have a little bit of wit in each room, something that draws a question like your question. Um, and actually the rest of the fascinator came out or dropped off after I was getting out of the car to go to a party. So um, I haven't glued it back on, but I think it suits him very well. And at Christmas time, we put, we put ropes of Christmas balls around him and then we can drape him with fabric and oh, we have a lot of fun with Caesar. When I was talking about being so fortunate as to find all these treasures, whether it's a mantle or the wormy chestnut boards, um, I was at church one morning and this older couple who were dear friends of ours, um, she said, well, I, I hear you're building. Uh, do you need any library paneling? And I said, well, I, yes, I, I think we would. She said, well, I've had some in storage for 37 years from my parents' house up around Brown in Providence. And um, she said, I, we'd love for you all to have it. Now this is Honduran mahogany, the kind that you can't get anymore. And coincidentally, the, their library and their home in Providence had been about this size. And all of this had come out of their home. The, the, the baseboard, the sideboards right here, as you see, right here all the way up to here. We did the door surrounds because um, of the, the height of the doors. But it just it's, gives new meaning to recycling. And every time we walk in here, of course, we spend a lot of time here. It's the library. We have dinner, the two of us, right there every night. We always think of this couple and who are no longer with us. We created this bar because but this just right there and it's hidden and, and you don't even know about it until you open it up. What is Betty Pardee's drink of choice? Champagne. <laughs> I didn't hesitate, did I? No. <laughs> this is another thing. I, mean, I keep talking about entertaining, but um, I'm such a flower person and love, just love bringing the garden in and in, in, in as many different ways as I can. And while I adore a fire and a roaring fire during the winter when we're here, I don't like that big black hole in the summer when it's sunny out and everything. So I finally said, this will be the reason that I will come up with something that will sit there for the summer. These are begonias, a beautiful shade of begonias with a, with a sort of, um, plummy and the little seafoam green inside. And we put them in a, a um, copper, big copper container. And I picked up the clematis, which is the same color, and the blues of the delphinium that pick up this color down here. So you've got this correspondence between something that had never been here before and something that I've been doing on a regular basis when they come into bloom. So. This is probably one of the most exciting things that I did in getting ready for this shoot was finally identifying something to put in the black hole of a fireplace during the summer. And as we move from the library across the sunroom onto the sun porch, I wanted to point out something again in each room. I wanted to create something that was a bit unusual as a floral decor statement. And we came up with the idea of all the precious miniature hostas, tiny, tiny, tiny. Look at these little leaves. And they're just in a red and gold lacquered top to an old, old, old Chinese box. I love using found objects that you wouldn't otherwise use for, um, for a flower arrangement. So this is just a touch of green in this room, just enough. But then we go out to my happy place in the winter and in the summer, but the sun porch and we have um, 
screens that we put in at the end of the that are otherwise glass and we can sit here all winter and be at about you know lovely 65 degrees this green and white is just the shade of the hedges that are out there that you see through the window so it's a seamless view taking right out as opposed to another print that i had had in here before that was a little disruptive and a little break between here and the outdoors. And we're looking out at the garden, which we are going to go visit in just a moment. But first, follow me and let's go in and look at the kitchen, which I think will surprise you a bit. Well, here we are, the last, the last room we're going to see on the first floor, the kitchen. And as I said, you were in for a little bit of a surprise. It doesn't look like your typical white kitchen of today. Uh, and this was done 23 years ago. And I don't even know what was popular back then because I always knew that in this French house, I wanted to have a very country French looking kitchen. And again, back to my wonderful mother, it is her French armoire around which I built this entire kitchen. And talk about serendipity. I have never seen this color limestone, but we were fortunate enough when I went up to the, to the marble house and lo and behold, here was this color, which I had never seen before. It's the same color as the fruit wood of the French armoire and of the cabinet um, doors. And it's just the warmest. Everyone walks in this kitchen and just wants to stay. Well, everyone wants to stay in the kitchen, <laughs> but anyway, it works, it works, it works so well. And um, I, didn't want, I didn't want any cabinets. I just wanted, and let me show you, the armoire holds so much. I mean, you can get, you can get a, an entire kitchen's worth of, of plates and glasses, et cetera, et cetera, <clears throat> in here. And then of course, next door, we have a china closet for the fancy, but this to me is so much easier. Open two doors and you've got everything right there. Well, this is just, I've always loved banquettes and being nestled in someplace. You know, when I go to a restaurant, if there's ever a choice, I'll take the banquette. <clears throat> and this just worked right here, got the window and the table fits right in here with the, with the pillows so that you feel like you're, you're really comfy. And then the draperies that are just hanging down to soften the walls. And it's set for our lunch. I'm gonna show you the china closet. One of my favorite closets in the house. Lots of champagne flutes. <laughs> Wedding china, which is Herond. And this is my newest find, La Tuile La Loupe. The French, wonderful, wonderful French pottery. But I have to say, one always stands out for me because it's so unusual as a plate. It's an old Tiffany set that here again, I found it in an antique shop in Newport. This beautiful chinoiserie scene and that yummy shade of Chinese red, back to red. I couldn't be in the entry hall and not give you all something special. And my gardener was able to find these two pots of very tall, gorgeous apricot lilies that just fit right here at this spot with the chaise behind us and the gilded mirror. And from here, we're gonna go up the stairs and this is where I'm going to have the opportunity to tell you that the architect built our home, designed it around this beautiful wrought iron staircase that he had found in a townhouse in Manhattan. I didn't even know he had it. He had a barn full of all these wonderful pieces. And um, as you can see, when you go up, it goes up three stories. And of course the polished brass handrail. But every time I walk up and down this, I feel so romantic just knowing that story and where it came from. And then of course, curving the steps to give you that sense of you know, coming down and meeting the tumbled limestone floor, which is sort of a casual ver version of the more modern or the more um, uh, classical white marble with black. So this is again, the honeyed colors, the buttercreams, 
with um, a light gray for the little diamonds. Come on, we're going upstairs. When we were building the house, I knew that there was one thing that I was going to be determined that I would do right, and that is the second floor landing was not just going to be a lost space, but a space that welcomed you up. The two guest rooms are off of this landing, so it also gives people an opportunity to both use their room and then to come out here. I wanted to cozy it up by having um, the right angle bookcases that have every kind of book in it from every topic you can think of. But what I knew we were going to center this space with was this wonderful Biedemeyer library table that I found in New York just before we were moving out. And every time I walk up here and I look, I feel like I'm in a room that I can sit here. And of course, I wanted to have a window seat so that there was no doubt as to the fact that you could rest here, you could sit, you could take a book, you could read it, you could look at the family photographs and everything. And into the bedroom we come. And this bedroom is definitely centered by a Lee a la Posene, Lee a la Posene's bed <laughs> that I designed 35 years ago for our apartment in Boston. And of course, then the architect designed this room with its peaked ceilings for um, this bed. I always love that about you know architects, how they can just make things fit and it all comes together like a jigsaw puzzle. And it's very romantic, but it's not cloyingly oppressive like very heavy side panels that are typical to um, a you know, canopy bed. And we face the east, so we get that sun in the morning. And here again, the colors are a soft buttercream it's just such an easy color to live with and everything coordinates with it. I mentioned Boston and just as we were leaving, I was in one of the antique shops and I saw these panels, wall wallpaper panels, painted on silk and um, silver. And I thought, I don't know what I'm gonna do with them, but they're too beautiful to pass up. So I bought them and of course, they work perfectly in here making a very large four panels, which hide the television, which is behind here. So I don't even have to look at it, except at night when television is on. So reminder, if you ever see a beautiful panel or a few of wallpaper, buy them. You'll always find a place to use them. Oh, here again, flowers for me is, is where my life starts. If I've ever felt a little stressed or something, I'll go out in the garden, clip some flowers and do an arrangement. So I always want to have something, certainly always by your bedside, because you go to sleep and you wake up and it's right there to greet you. And I had fun, I've never done a, an arrangement using <laughs> begonia leaves and ladies mantle, which is you remember we had in the library. Um, and then of course the beech leaves. So every time I do something, it's a different arrangement and to me, that's one of the joys of flower arranging. And it just fits right here on this old gold stand and just informs, I think, when you walk in, the picks up this beautiful French chest. Well, actually, <laughs> if we're talking about the bedside table and the flower arrangement, um, I'm gonna mention that this is a table I made. I loved the base, but it didn't have a top, but that didn't stop me. So we put a top on and, um, I love, I love embroidered linen, so this is part and parcel of why I have linens that repeat the linens which I adore. Making a bed is one of my favorite things in the world. Um, and then just my favorite girlfriends, my favorite moments are all on this bedside table. And always a little pad to write notes if I wake up early in the morning or late at night and um, want to remember something. So it doesn't hold a lot, but each one of them means so very much to me. And I also love shagreen. So I've been collecting um, pieces of shagreen over the years. And I love the shade of green. And here we are, we've left the house and the rooms and now we're in the garden rooms. Uh, this is the largest garden and the one that looks most French and honors the 
architecture. And what I love about this garden in particular is that everything in here is evergreen. In the winter when we're here, we are looking out at green. And it makes such a difference when you're spending time, as we love to do up here in the, in the, in the wintertime. We're standing in what I consider my coziest garden, and it's green and white. When we were designing the house, and then of course I was designing the garden to go with it, I looked back on all the English gardens that I'd seen and loved, and the French ones, and there was one common denominator, and that was a green and white garden, whether it's Sissinghurst or whatever. And it is so easy and such a pleasure to, to plant and to cut from this garden. And then this wonderful surprise Christmas gift from my husband, the Christmas that we were breaking ground. It's an orangery and it actually is also a, a greenhouse. You can see the, the glass roof can, can open. One thing I love is that this is such an intimate space because it only seats eight to 10, whereas the larger garden, I can have 75 for a cocktail party and it's still, it still feels cozy and everyone's outdoors. And of course we know how important that was in the last two years. Well, here we are in the cutting garden where you're going to really get a dose of color. Lots of roses, it's that time of year in Newport. And I, I saved these and I didn't cut them for in, in the house because I knew you all would wanna see them. This one, you'll get a big kick out of the name of this rose, Delish. D-E-E-L-I-S-H, Durandii Climatus. Um, just started putting in our dahlias, which of course in August, September, and October are just glorious and really supply all of the color that we need for the house because a lot of other flowers are not blooming in um, October. Um, roses, unfortunately, the deer have had their way with them. And then we swing right around, more ladies' mantle, and our little spot of culinary heaven with my favorite kale and of course strawberries and uh, little French um, strawberries. No, I meant um, cher um, cherry tomatoes and that. Uh, um, and then just some oddities that just work. You saw this as you're going up the stairs, um, nice and big and proud and just a beautiful froth of, of pink right next to the right next to the blue and more roses and some phlox is coming up it's sort of a duke's mixture it depends on what we lost last year or what i wasn't happy with or more importantly what i really wanted to trial and hope that it would work and i think this year it's probably more roses <laughs> well i got so carried away with roses i had to move my peonies out to the back courtyard so they now have two very large beds here, which is a lovely happenstance because they are right across from the 82 foot rose chain that is going by a little bit now because roses, have, they sort of go down in July and then come back in August and September. But to me, this is such a defining statement in what is normally just the back courtyard with the garages and you can imagine how many times a day I drive in and out of this space and these never cease to assure me that I made the right decision in trying this out and it worked. And the Crown Princess Margareta is the name of that gorgeous rose. It's a David Austin. I have to say truly having lived here for almost 35 years, it is magical. And I'm always fascinated to see so many new people who come to town and they all feel the same way. There's no place like it in the world. And I know that sounds like a big, bold statement, but it is true. The trees, the architecture, the water, the breezes, and of course, so many people forget we're on an island. So that makes it even more special. And I couldn't be happier here. We even stay here in the winter. I love it in the winter. The snow falling on the, all the topiaries and the green hedges that we've designed for the garden just give you a totally different feeling about Newport and this property. Hi, Homeworthy. I'm Tina. Welcome to our Rockport, Maine home. Come on in, I'll show you around.
I'm Tina Pine, CFO, Chief Family Officer. I live here with my husband, Joe, and we have two lovely visitors, our children, Cameron Pine, who's 22 and lives in DC, Sam Pine, his wife, Mary Summers, and his lovely daughters, who are 17-year-old twins, Camille and Marguerite. But mainly the two cats live here and we work for them, Johnny, John Pine, and Sabine Pine. This house was built actually in the 80s and we bought it about 12 years ago and it was very different than what you're gonna to see today. It was owned by a couple who had uh, quite different tastes than we do. Uh, it was pretty gaudy. It was so fugly that nobody bought it. And when we looked at it, we realized that this was just a view with a house attached to it. And we had to make uh, enormous space for it to so you could see they had small windows covered with curtains and the view is what you're gonna love about this house we started with seven acres we bought the house and and they had a guest cottage which you'll see which was unfinished uh, they had done the stonework and if you did that stonework that would have been a million dollars in itself uh, the house stood on the market for I don't know how many years because it was so gaudy no one could see past it. So we bought this property and then we had a neighbor who had this fabulous little Frank Lloyd Wright design house. By saying design means it was built after he died, but it's his design. And it's so close to the water, you could never build anything like that again. So we bought it and turned it into a dining hall. Then my husband decided he needed a barn for the little tractor that he has. That got way out of hand. It's three levels and you could fit 12 Suburbans in the bottom. I mean, it's crazy. Uh, six Suburbans, not 12. Uh, you could put others in the other part. And we built an apartment on top of it, which is so adorable. That was so fun to do. That was a great project. And a big garden, a vegetable garden there because we, we needed that. Uh, then there was one property left uh, that was between our two properties. So when our neighbor decided to sell, she sold it to us. And now we have 23 acres and we have five houses on the property and it's become a family compound. This is a foyer. This is where people enter the house and they see my two famous Jamie's pick, Jamie Wyatt. Pieces that came from the Deadly Sins collection, which I absolutely love. This is what I get to wake up and see every day. I just love it. This living room was so different when we bought this house. This was all wall with a little bitty porch on the end that you, we never sat on. And it had these small windows. This was a part of the house I just could not understand people. So we blew it out, put a big porch out here, put the fireplace in, found this piece of granite, added that small window and just changed it completely. It was the ugliest room in the house and now it's my favorite. This is Colin Page. Uh, he did this piece, it's um, on Highway 17, he said that he saw this mountains of Camden and did this great piece for us. And then we have these darker pieces are by Rivington Pine, who, as you might guess, is a relative of my brother-in-law who just passed away in November. And he did, he did some kinky kind of fun stuff that I've always loved. I got a piece every year for my birthday. These are kind of cool. These trunks I bought at Round Top in Texas, and they have a CT on them. And I asked the lady, what, what is this for? And she said, these were for Kathy Tupper. Who's Kathy Tupper? The Tupperware lady. She found a Tupperware, and this is what she used to haul her stuff around in. I thought that was just so cool, I had to buy them. And these are French hinges from doors. Got these in London. Just so much fun. And this coffee table, which, oh, you couldn't possibly lift. It's big pieces of steel from bath ironwork. And this guy designed the bottom for it and put it together. But they're so heavy, you can't possibly move them. And then this piece is Brian White, who is a local artist who we have several pieces. This is all made with shells. And it's just so cool. And he did this with some screen. It's, <clears throat> I gave him a picture of a Dior dress. Uh, he made the waist a little bit too big for me. I'd like for it to be smaller, but 
it's a lot it's a big fun piece i can't even count the number of pieces we have you'll see more upstairs and in other rooms as we go through the house this skull in here that's my ex-husband to remind my current husband what i'm capable of <laughs> You have to come outside just to really appreciate, but we have this long porch that you can have great cocktail parties. And I love to, I, that's my little herb garden because I cook and I love to cook. It's, it's great fun. You just go out in the garden, pick some vegetables, come up and cook them and get some fresh seafood. But this is our view. Tell me about this house over here. Ah, that's our friend Angus. Angus was sitting on this very porch one Saturday and he said, I need to get out of here. I need to get out of Alabama. It's too hot. I need a place. And I turned him around and said, that 116 acres is for sale. The bank has it and it's the deal of the century. And he bought it the next morning. So now I got Angus who I've known for 40 years and Joe and I've been friends with forever. So it's great to have him as my next door neighbor. Stucco. Yeah, you don't see that in Maine very often. A as Joe said, the people that built this house had more money than sense. They just did all kind of different things that we've been able to turn into more of a comfortable home. It had, it was bizarre when we bought it. There was a solar system that I'm sure 20 years ago was the state of the art that was in here that was built in the side and had black rocks and went up. We took all of it out. It wasn't functional anymore. And we took all of it out and just made it a, a comfortable, simpler, much simpler house. Do you sit here a lot? When I'm reading, like I just sit here and chill. I mean, just sit here and look at it from my view. It's just, it's just so incredible. And the breeze comes through and there's not that many bugs in Maine. You know, it's pretty good here because we're on the water. And the breeze goes through, so we don't have many bugs. So I just, I just sit here and pretend I'm somebody. <laughs> Tina, you are somebody. <laughs> A legend in my own mind. <laughs> Brian White did these little things too. And he did this for me for Valentine's Day one year. Isn't that cool? Who's this baby up that's, that's a little dead baby head. <laughs> I bought that at an antique shop. My daughter thinks it's disgusting. I think it's kind of cool. People either love it or they hate it. I like art because it, it invokes people to say that's disgusting or that's gross or, oh, that's kind of cool. I think it's cool. Little dead baby heads. They did them from dolls. They made them from dolls. I have, you'll see the garden and we have lots of flowers everywhere and we keep the house full of flowers all the time. That's the deal. Uh, just filling them up with different things. I have garlic scapes. I, I use all kind of crazy flowers in here. It's just really fun to do that. This piece we bought at an, an auction in New Orleans. It's carved from a solid piece of wood and it's African. And we had this fabulous tree that was going by so I kept all of the sticks from it and I've used it in several you'll see this in several of the houses that I, I just could not let it go to waste it's just too cool looking but that piece is you know very heavy and just an interesting thing my design sense is all about the art and all about the views I I think that if you just do neutral things the furniture doesn't matter the furniture needs to be simple because that's not what you're looking at. What you're looking at is the fun things that you find in little shops. The previous owners were really fun people. I wish I could have known them. Sparkle was her name and she married, she was a Weber fuel heir and she married a lobster fisherman's son who became a dentist who wore gold chains and rings on every hand and drove a Rolls Royce, which is very not Maine, if you know what I mean. But they had mirrors everywhere. There was dark blue marble it was they had an eight person tub upstairs in the bathroom that uh, you knew that there was some serious party going on they had more money when since than they built this house it was built dynamited into a granite hill at 180 foot elevation overlooking the ocean and then they built a uh, guest 
cottage and a croquet court, a regulation croquet court. And I would meet people and they'd say, oh yeah, I played naked croquet at your house. And I just wish I could have been around for that. So we kind of simplified everything. We turned the croquet court into a golf putting green, which you'll see, it's really pretty. And it's, it's kind of like this eternity line on the ocean or infinity line, whatever you call that on the ocean and you'll see it later. I can't wait to show you. Maybe we'll do a few putts together. Okay, let's go to the dining room. This is the dining room. And um, when I grew up, we had a lazy Susan in our, this is a Chihuly piece, by the way, which I love his stuff. I have, the, I have uh, others in bookshelves. But when I grew up, we had a lazy Susan. So we had this made for this table that we bought at an auction. And we eat like this. You just roll stuff around, it's really fun. But I'll tell you a little story about these chairs. We used to live on an island. My husband's family has been here more than 100 years. And we lived on this island until I decided we really needed a driveway but, and bought this house. But in the attic were these cool chairs. Well, my husband thought they were ugly and we needed to get rid of them. So my fancy friend who knows a lot about antiques saw them and said, these are very, very, she's English. She goes, these are very valuable chairs, darling. You must check them out. Let me call my dealer. And the dealer said, I'll give you $50,000 for them. So then we fell in love with them and here they are. Otherwise, they'd probably still be in the attic. <laughs> That's a Brian White piece here. A little dress he did for me that I just love. I have big dinner parties here, and we uh, have, as I told you, this, this Frank Lloyd Wright house that we call the dining hall. Can I have actually seated 40 people in there for dinner, and you'll see that soon. It's so cute. And that's a Ken Nolan. He lived here in the summers. He was married to Paige Rents, who was head of Architectural Digest for many years. And these are a couple more little riff pines that we have. This little nude is Roberta Getschke. She's, uh, you know, we try to use local artists. She's a local artist as well. And I found these in a, in a trunk. I also found a Louis Vuitton trunk in the garage that they had here when, when this couple, this interesting couple um, who had this house, uh, they, she passed away. There's also lots of rumors about that too, maybe. Naked croquet, maybe. Uh, anyway, she passed away and he uh, sold the house and there was just all kinds of stuff. It was so fugly, you can't even believe how fugly it was. I mean, it had a giant arrangements of fake flowers everywhere, but underneath some of that stuff were treasures, like these little pieces of coral, which I just love. This is Sabine. This is my baby. This is what my, bar, my daughter got me when she left for college. So I have a, a little baby and she is just a love bunny. She's my sweetheart. She is the easiest, if she didn't shed, she'd be perfect. You're perfect, baby. I became an organic gardener and we grow most of our food here. Uh, all of the vegetables and herbs. I love to grow herbs and I love to cook. So it had to be something that we could just go out to the garden, pick a tomato, pick some herbs, come up and make things. And I, I love doing that. We, I love putting things away and I put them in bags and freeze them. And when we leave for the summer, I take all of that stuff with me. It drives my husband and child crazy. But I love to use my things that I grew to cook with. It's just really fun. Welcome to the kitchen, my space. This is where I live and this is where I cook. My husband says this is a cluster. I'm not gonna use the other word he says, but this is a cluster, but I know where everything is and I really love to cook. So he's not changing it. It's staying just like it is. Okay, so this kitchen is small, but it's where I hang out. And I, we bought these in Portland at an antique shop, bought all of them and I have to put my spoons and forks and everything in them because I don't have enough space, but it's kind of cool because you always know where they are. So you see, it's my happy place. This is wine vinegar that I make. A friend of mine gave us for the 4th of July a big bottle of rosé and my daughter and her friends promptly drank it in one night, mind you. 
she had a little parte down there. So I make uh, wine vinegar with it. I take a base, like you could even buy some wine vinegar, put it in the bottle. And you know, when you don't finish a bottle or a bottle happens to be bad, you can pour the remains in there and you need to use a cork top though. And uh, you have it all year and at Christmas time or whatever, you could give it to your friends, use it for marinades, use it for sauces. It's just way fun to do. This is my garlic scapes that I let dry and we grow a lot of garlic. So these little pods are actually quite tasty. So we let them dry out and then I take them and harvest them and kind of saute them in oil and put them in the fridge in a jar and use them for garlic, which is fun. So I'm taking some of these cloves, all right? And you eat them. I'm gonna have horrible garlic breath after this, but you just eat them or you saute them and put them in a jar and use them for seasoning, like if you do eggs or whatever. They're wonderful. There's just two different ways to use garlic, the tops and the bottoms. This is from the garden this morning. This is our little cat feed up here. And this is lemongrass for the cat. Have to keep that on the counter. And then we have the morning harvest. This is what I live for. I just love this. We harvested the peaches and I like golden beets. My husband hates beets, but all the red ones are so messy. I grow the golden ones our first melon, and potatoes we grow in a sack. You take uh, two black plastic bags, put some dirt in it and throw some potato eyes in it. You can cut them, you know, you could cut them or just throw them in there and they grow up. You just put them outside, punch some holes in the bottom and then you empty it out and you have all your potatoes ready. What's your favorite main meal? Mmm. Last night our meal was pretty fun. We did dry roasted mussels with a butter sauce that you just dip your bread in. Uh, I love to make lobster stew because after we have lobster, I cook all the heads down and then I make a stew with it. And I like to eat the heads. My husband, the Yankee, thinks that's disgusting. He hates it. These are little patty squash. These are really fun to cook. And look at these tomatoes. These are yum, yum. And we grow onions. It's just, it's just so much fun to have fresh stuff. Some cucumbers, they're so cute. Watermelon, our first one, and these herbs are just, I use them all the time and I make teas with them. Like this is lemon verbatim, this smells, I wish you could smell this on the camera, it smells so good. I dry them all out and I make tea with it. And pineapple sage, have you ever had pineapple sage? It's great in salads, but it also makes a great tea, it's delicious. I, I do a lot of cocktails with herbs. Uh, uh, my favorite is a gin and tonic with a little bit of pink peppercorns and a little bit of thyme in it, and it makes it so pretty. It's so pretty, it's lovely. Like this is what I do with the garlic. And I have the other thing that I make with the garlic top. And then I make a garlic confit. That's all garlic and this is also garlic confit. Just to give you a little bit of, oh, and this is my honey. I also have honey and you I make, make a, yeah, that's my honey. And that's just some of the stuff that happens to be in the fridge. The rest of it's in the freezer. You can just, you know, I'll just lay them out like that. Now this honey is my concoction. I, I put, um, my honey concoction is I take garlic and I ferment it in honey. And then I add turmeric and ginger and lion's mane mushroom uh, extract to it and I drink it every day. And it's an immune system thing and it's really cool. Hi darling. Does baby want a treat? Maybe that's what you want. She wants a treat. She did. She discovered a new kind of treat this morning, and I think she likes it. You like your new kind of treat? The bookshelves are kind of fun, and these are the chihuly pieces uh, that are in the kitchen. And then we have another Rivington pine here. Um, but they're all books that were mostly on the island, and we we found all the blue ones and stuck them together. <laughs> <laughs> you know, old books. And this is another Brian White piece that Rivington Pine began the piece 
and he passed away, never finished it. So we hired Brian to finish it, and I was going to put it in the bedroom, but I thought his face was too scary. So we put him in here. And these are Richard Remsen, who's a local artist who studied with Chihuly, and he did these cool lobster claws for us. And I know this also looks like a cluster that makes my very Virgo husband crazy, but I love to do drink, fun drink contest here. We have like gin tasting and everybody comes and we put little cups out and we add herbs to it and we have tastings and we have like five kinds of gin because that's my new thing, but I also love tequila. So we have tequila tastings and it's just fun to start before a party and everybody gets in a really good mood. And then we have this Bo Bartlett and this uh, Ken Nolan, another Ken Nolan, but Bo Bartlett did this piece, which we love. It's called the anniversary. And Joe bought it for me for our anniversary. And Brian White <laughs> had this whale vertebra in his shop. And every time I'd go, I'd say, can I buy that? No, it's mine. And the next time we go, I said, Brian, come on, sell that to me. No, it's mine. And then one day the doorbell rang and Brian White is a very different kind of guy. He's uh, He didn't speak for the first two years we met him. He was just this big, giant, teddy bear looking guy. And he walks in and the doorbell rings and he hands me the vertebra and he goes, I found a bigger one. And he walked away. <laughs> he just walked away. I go, thank you. Thank you very much. I am from New Iberia, Louisiana, where they make Tabasco sauce. I moved to Houston in 1986, and in around 1998, I met my husband on a blind date. The blind date was interesting in itself because I was with 12 women, and you might wonder about that, but um, this girlfriend called me and said, this guy's going to call you, and he called me on a Friday at 4 o'clock and said, would you like to have a drink? I said, uh, what planet are you from? You don't call someone for a drive-by on a Friday afternoon. And he said, well, I've been married for 27 years. I'm just recently divorced. I don't know the rules. I thought that was cute. So I invited him to my girlfriend's house. Well, we were in a group of 12 women. And when he drove up, he had this STS Cadillac in this like seersucker khaki looking suit. And I thought, this guy's going to be a dud. Let's all say we're Tina. And we did. We were 12 women in line. He went through the whole line. And when he got to me, he said, I hope that you're Tina. And he asked me out again, so he must have liked it. <laughs> and here we are. We had a child. I was 40. Had a child, my one and only child at 40. This is the guest room. And there's just one thing. This, this a couple things I want to show you. This chest came off of the island. We used to live on an island, my husband's family home. They've been here a hundred years. And we took some antiques, uh, well, all of the antiques off of it that we liked. Because an island, you have to put it on a barge, take it off. It's not exactly easy. And then I bought him this great little sergeant, which is right over here, um, recently at an auction here. And it's right here. It's so cute. I just love it. You know, it, because he painted it right before he died, and he is, a you know, one of the top 10 American artists, and I just knew Joe would like it, so I wanted to get it for him. And, you know, it was in an auction, and not everybody appreciated it, so I got a much better deal on it than you can imagine. Okay, not many people want you to see a bathroom, but I kind of do, because the first piece that Brian White ever did for us, he did not want to do a bathroom. We met through a mutual friend. He said, tell your friend from Texas, no, I don't do bathrooms. Then he came over and saw the other art that we had and said, I'm doing what I want. I said, okay, Brian, and this is what he did. Now, I think it's pretty cool. And when Brian asked me if I liked it, I said, I love it, except the panties are too damn big. People are gonna think I have a big old butt. And so I told him if he ever did anything like that again, he needed to make tiny panties. These things, Joe, do you remember what these are from? I think they're from the late 1500s and they were like done on horseback and they had this big ball. I have more of them here. Put them on this wall because this wall was hard to do. So we, we just kind of mounted them, had this guy make these little pieces and mounted them on here just for fun. We're gonna go to the bedroom. One of my favorite places in the house and the most serene.
this is the bedroom. We have some more of Riv, Riv's pieces, the darker ones, and another ugly baby head in here. And uh, this is a picture of my husband's grandmother, Florence, and her sister-in-law, Mary Cuttings Pine. Oh, they were the grand dames, the grand dames. They would get on the QE2 and go to London and spend their summers in London and stay at the Stafford. And when Joe and I started staying at the Stafford, the old bartender there remembered them. He remembered what they drank, what kind of martinis they liked, because five o'clock every day in the American bar, there they were, the two of them. Their husbands had passed away and they traveled together and hung out together. And I have this sable jacket and the pearls that she's wearing, which is so cool. And that sable jacket is just gorgeous and it's still in great shape. Look at her, she got her cigarette. So Mary lived in Far Hills, New Jersey, and she had an interesting next door neighbor. Uh, and she uh, decided to invite him over for tea, and he was a Tyson. She must have thought he was from the chicken people, but it was Mike Tyson. And Mike Tyson walks in for tea with Aunt Mary with his entourage, with his gold chains, and sits down and has tea with her for an hour. So I wish I could have been a fly on the wall for that encounter. But can you even imagine how cute that was? This is another Brian White piece, uh, probably his most famous piece. It's a wedding dress with a Tiffany box, and it's all done of shells. And this is like this hard stuff that he uses, which is like a canvas that he somehow hardens and each of those pieces with shells and beads. I just love that. But the highlight of this room is the view. And this is John Pine. He's 16 years old and he belongs to our daughter. However, he has been here for about a year, if you know how that goes. When your kid has an animal, you sometimes get it back. His eyes are blue and everything is serene, just like him. It, I designed this room the color of the cat. That is what this whole house is. Very simple furnishings, neutral colors, because the art and the view are what it's all about. As I said, it's a view with a house. And I mean, you wake up in the morning and see this. It's just incredible. It's hard to be in a bad mood. This is the bathroom. When we bought this house, this bathroom, I cannot tell you how fugly it was. It had an eight person tub, mirrors on the ceiling, mirrors in the front, navy blue, navy blue granite or marble rather, navy blue marble. It was so bad, but our daughter loved it because it was like a pool inside. And Joe finally said, I can't stand to look at this another day. We have to change it. But these windows were here. And look at this, you sit in the tub and look at this view. Not bad. We're going to the barn, the barn that got out of hand. The barn that can hold a lot of stuff that was supposed to be built for one little tractor. You'll see. This is a Jeremy Guy um, sculpture piece that he is a London, barn ar London born artist who lives in Canada. This art piece and the other one in the front, are, and more that you'll see, um, I did. I worked with Rockport Steel and did them, and it was so much fun. And that one, uh, art dealer friend of ours came from California, and she just commissioned me to do three more, so yay! Be fun. We built a little workout room. I wish we used it a little more <laughs> for our guests that come and, and the kids play ping pong. That's a picture of Cammie when she was a little baby. Of course, got to have all of the nautical flags up there. Welcome to the garden, which is so much fun. I think they're called Rose Mallow and they're really fun and they're in the hibiscus family and there's some pink ones back there that you can't see. And this is lemon balm, which I make tea with makes wonderful tea you dry it out and chop it up and just drink it and there's some nasturtiums and corn and oh my gosh and then we have these really cool onions that are just about finished we had all of our garlic but 
Let's just grab an onion. A little onion. <laughs> Everybody needs an onion. I don't even remember. It starts with an L, uh, the name of these, but we decided to grow them and see how they did this year. So they're new. And these are these little teddy bear sunflowers, uh, different types. They're so cute. I just love them. They're furry and there's some borage and some peppers over here and some wildflowers and some squash over here like we I showed you that uh, petty squash. But the corn stalks are fun to also we keep them because we decorate with them for for uh, October. Aren't these just pretty? And that's all sage, because sage comes back and I just think it makes a great filler. So it's really fun to have sage. We grow, oh, look at these. We took these off of the island, sweet peas, and these are perennials, which you can't even find anymore. So we just really cherish them. And some Swiss chard, but this is all um, delicata, which is my favorite squash. I see a cucumber over there. I see a cucumber and this was um, lettuces but you know now it, it they're kind of finished and we had some more corn which is finished and this is the potatoes I was telling you about um, we have sweet potatoes in here that we haven't harvested but these are sweet potatoes and you see it's just in a bag you could use a black trash trash bag to do it but these are just a little more we've harvested we had bags lined all along so as they harvest as they're ready and you can tell because they flower and it kind of falls over like this so these are ready to harvest and these are little red potatoes in this one we harvested some purple fingerlings and then these are all fruit trees here this is we harvested the peaches here's a peach they missed a little peach. We just harvested the peaches this morning. These are, oh God, they're so good. Yum, 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 yum. So this whole area was woods where we needed to build that thing here for that little tractor. And this is what became of it. And then I told you about the dining hall. So let's look at that next. This is the second property we bought, what we call the dining hall. It's this Frank Lloyd Wright design, little house, and it's just cute. You wanna see it? Okay. So we bought it and we painted it because it was dark like lots of that stuff was. And the people that owned it were from New York, and they hadn't been here in 10 years. They didn't even have a kitchen. So we added a little kitchen and we took some restoration hardware tables, put them together, bought some chairs, built the little benches. We have actually seated 50 people for a wine dinner here to benefit the hospital. We have these little tables that come here. And the fun thing about those dinners is when you get here, you have a bowl, which I'm going to show you, of rocks. And you have to pick a rock. And the rock has a number on it, okay? And each seat has a number, so you don't know who you're going to sit next to, and it makes dinner parties so much more fun because you may have somebody stuffy around somebody really fun, and you can't sit by your spouse. And we turned this part of it, which was just a porch, into a cute little bar. Well, I don't know how cute it is, but it's functional. And it's a bar and everybody congregates in here and comes and we mix drinks and see, I gotta have my pink peppercorns everywhere because I use that in the gin and tonics. And we have storage under here in the bench and enclose this as part of the house. So when we bought this place, we thought, we're gonna use it for parties. We're gonna have dinners. So we decided to put a fireplace and we really wanted a pizza oven. So we told the fireplace guy, the stone worker, could you just put a pizza oven in the back of it and you have heat? So he did, it's not huge. I'm scared to open it. Uh, it's not huge, but it, you know, you can make your pizzas in here. And, and I always put a roast at night because you got that heat. You don't ever want to waste your heat in a pizza oven. And then we have one of those Brazilian grills where you turn the handle. But I guess the most important thing we need to look at is my husband's boat. He loves the boat. 
So we're going to walk down and take a look. Here we are at the boat, my husband's favorite part. He loves his boat. Have you ever seen a dog when they're in a car and they're sticking their head out with their tongue? That's how he is driving that boat. It's his happy place. This is our property called the tree house. It's the last piece of property that we bought and I'm gonna take you inside. But before I do, I wanna tell you about these crazy sculpture pieces. Rockport Steel is who I work with to do my sculpture and I was walking around and saw this scrap on the ground and that's it. I painted them, turned them upside down and made them into sculpture. And that's a piece of driftwood that was on the property. Welcome to the tree house. The tree house was the last piece that we bought. We didn't do very much to it except paint and of course furnish it. That's another Brian White piece. Boy, I have a lot of his stuff. And that's another Bo Bartlett, which I just love. This is a table that we had in Houston that we refinished and had done. I'm also gonna show you something that I found at the Ham Museum in Los Angeles that I could not resist buying three of them. They're made by Herman Miller. And, ah, and when you're drinking, it's really fun. <laughs> See why we call it the tree house? They kind of look like pieces of art. I mean, they can sit you know, up and they, they were all lined up at the Hammer Museum. They must have had 12 of them. And then I saw these kids jump on them and start playing with them. And I just thought, oh my God, I have to have them. They're just so much fun. So when we lived on the island, I commissioned a portrait of the island and I got my husband's boat. You think there was a sidebar in there? I mean, yes, that's the house, but the boat is what he did the painting of. These are Rosa Rugosas, very common in Maine. They're sea roses because they can take the elements, but a lot of people don't know that when they're finished, that these are full of vitamin C. It's rose hips. You just crunch, dry them out. I, I put them like a big tray on a cookie sheet in the oven for, I turn the oven on 200 when it gets to two, and put them in. When it gets to 200, I turn the oven off and leave them in there till they're dry. And then I take them and crunch them up and make tea with them. It's still, they're delicious. I mix it with mint, I mix it with lemon balm. A lot of stuff that I grow, I make so many different teas and rose petals as well. Makes great tea, it gives it great flavor. It's really fun. They, they were roses. This is a secondary market. At one point they were <laughs> Yeah, rose. yeah, like this rose. Where did we just see some? See what this rose is? And these are the old kind that um, smell good, but this is what a Rosa Rugosa, I mean, this is the end of it. It's not super pretty, but that's what it looks like. And then it turns to this, they dry up. This and then to the dry part. So you could just pick the dry ones and make tea full of vitamin C chock full. So this is the guest cottage and I saved showing it to you for last because it might be my favorite but I have to tell you different people that stay here choose different houses. It's so bizarre. Everybody has different tastes of what they like. Come and have a look. We have our zinnias. Are these just fabulous? I love them. I use them for cut flowers and in the other pots I decided to make a little herb garden here for somebody that's staying here. Just some mint and some basil and rosemary and parsley. And of course I have to have pineapple sage on everything. Welcome to the guest cottage. This place we bought with the original house and it was not complete. The stone, well, the stone work was done, which would have cost us a fortune and the inside was a total shell. So we got to do exactly what we wanted. I wanted to make it look somewhat like a ship, you know, kind of the feel of the water. And so we did, it's got two bedrooms and it is where a lot of people like to stay because it's really cute. And it's just super comfortable. 
We did the kitchen with drawers so you wouldn't have all of your appliances up. And of course it's got its own little bar like every other house. This is Joe's contribution to the guest cottage. He cannot stand to have a television showing. So this is called Reversica. And he had this put in here, which I think is so cute. He can't tell it's a TV. So this is the second bedroom. There's two bedrooms in this house. We went to auction and bought this in Thomaston, Maine. And I just wanted to make it feel really serene. This little area here has fabulous views and you could just sit here and read a book and hang out. I mean, it's just super comfortable. This is the master guest room of the guest house. And we have twin granddaughters. They're 17 now, but when they were little, we got chair and a half that pull out to single beds. So their parents could stay in this room and they could stay in the room too. It's just, it's just comfortable. It's just a fun, comfortable kind of place. So my husband started playing golf in the last few years, and this was a regulation croquet court, which we used, but it was really hard to take care of. So I called this golf company to surprise him. I got this with this view. We have a trail that goes up to the main house which is uh, like a goat trail. There's a bench in the middle for a reason because it is not easy to climb. But I mean, what kind of putt-putt range do you have with this kind of view? Of course, Texas flags on the holes. I'm happy where I'm planted. Wherever I am is where my family is and that's where I'm happy. And I try to make it comfortable for everyone. I love to cook. Uh, I cook a lot when I'm here. We eat a lot of meals at home and we have friends come over and we have, we, we're out on this patio so much. It's just so much fun to be here. There's so many, and everything's organic on the property. The food is fabulous in Maine. We live in, we live five minutes from three James Beard restaurants. We live within 10 minutes, you have the airport and the snow bowl in the winter and of course, five minutes from three golf courses, which makes it really special. Hi, my name is Darren. Welcome to my house in Millbrook, New York. This is my weekend house, which has sort of become my full-time residence. And I live here with my husband, Michael, and my twin 13-year-old girls, Bunny and Lulu. Sadly, they have spectacular rooms and a bathroom, which I've designed, but you don't get to see them because we've been told that they're verboten. I've been an interior designer for, I, I guess, about 30 years now. This is your basic colonial house. It's a farmhouse. It was never meant to be a grand house. It was always just a farmhouse. So the rooms tend to be on the smaller side. The ceilings tend to be a little bit low. So this house was built in 1800 and it was, when we bought it, a Christmas tree farm, which it certainly no longer is. We moved 3,000 trees. We had this idea that we would keep about 75 trees, so we would always have a tree. First of all, not so bright because the trees grow, so they're already way too big for the house. And also, several years in a row when we first bought the house, we tried to cut our own trees down and pull them in the house. And the only thing we succeeded in doing is fighting, tearing the paint to shreds in the entryway, like pulling these trees in, because they're not all wrapped up and perfect. There are these massive trees and you're trying to like lug it in. It, it was a nightmare. It's like Clark Griswold. I give you the Griswold family Christmas tree. It looks great. A little full, a lot of sap. We were most definitely the Griswold family the first three years that we were doing Christmas here. You know, you, you have this idea that you want it to be perfect and you want it to do it yourself. And then you wake up and you think, no, no, there's a reason other people have figured things out for you. Like, let them figure those things out for you. How have I designed the house? You know, that's kind of a funny question because unlike for a client where there's very much so, you know, a set of rules or a set of guidelines or a set of needs, for us, this has always been way more organic and it's always been more of a bit of a laboratory for me to try out things that I think I would enjoy. Um, and I have to say, for the most part, they've all been really successful. 
So we're going to go into the foyer. It's a little foyer, but there's something about the foyer that's kind of important mentally to think about. Big front door. Almost nobody comes in the front door. This is Millbrook. Everybody comes through the kitchen. However, I have a partner who's a rug dealer. He's a 70-year-old Persian man who has access to any rug you can possibly imagine. I could have the most exceptional quality rug that anybody could possibly find. And instead, I purposely have this super worn out, it's got holes in it, I think there's a tear in it somewhere, because as much as I want people to come in and see beautiful things, I also want them to come in and know that they don't have to be precious, that it's not formal, that it's comfortable, it's worn, it's lived in, that it's a home. Michael and I bought the house, and again, it was a spur-of-the-moment thing. So we jumped on a plane, we went to the south of France, went to every single flea market all through the south of France, and just bought everything that we loved. There was no plan, there was no scheme. It literally was, let's fill a container with things that we love, and when we get them home, I'll figure out how they fit into a puzzle. So this settee came from the south of France. This, I think, was the flea market in Paris. The pair of Napoleon III chairs, that was in the south of France. Um, this table was at the flea market in Paris. I also have to apologize, I totally have bourbon voice today. We were out at a hunt ball last night doing a little drinking of the bourbon, and so I'm a little like salty and sexy. Anyway, so this was the first edition that was added to the house. That's the 1800 part of the house that we just came from. This is the addition. We went through great pains to match the floors with the old part of the house. The old part of the house, very wide plank, pine floors, which are super soft. And pine also bleeds through paint. So we put this in, and then I had somebody paint it. I had this really amazing artist, um, Matt Austin. His name is Matt Austin. The guy's like a god. He's just genius. So Matt Austin came up with this pattern. It's uh, based on a piazza in Portugal, in Lisbon, and we purposely painted it so that the wood would come through. And as pine bleeds, that the knots, the oil and the knots of the pine would bleed through the paint and come up. So from day one, this didn't look like a perfect pristine floor. From day one, it looked like an old, worn floor, and it looked like the kitchen had been here forever. And that was the goal. I collect anything that goes on a table. I don't know my, so my husband's an amazing cook and I swear to God, this was not a setup. He's literally just making lunch. Before we sit down for dinner, my only question is, what are we eating? Because then I know what silverware to put on the table. So I, I get off on buying tabletop. This stuff is all made in Italy. These are handmade in France. Look at And then these, which you can't really see, there's an amazing silversmith in Florence. And I had these cups made, and they've got our initials on them with the date that I had them made. And we use these for water, we use them for wine. They can be red wine goblets, they can be whatever you want. But, you know, the point is, people are always like, how do you do a tablescape? You, you don't, just do it. Just put stuff on the table. It's not a premeditated thing like, oh, I'm gonna create this atmosphere today. Just put things that you have in the house that you think are beautiful and see how they work together. So this is the good stuff. This is the Heron Rothschild pattern. Mr. and Mrs. Rothschild, although I think it was Duke and Lady or whatever, Duke and Duchess Rothschild, she had had a little diamond necklace that he'd given her and she'd misplaced it and the gardener found it. The birds had used it to create a nest in the garden. And so Mr. Rothschild commissioned this china to commemorate that moment. And the other great thing about this is, when they were first making china, you would often have um, imperfections in, in the glaze. And so they would put these little tiny bugs over what were imperfections, and then it became part of the pattern. The fanciest is this. The fanciest, is, and I'm gonna forget what it's called, and it's terrible, but I just can't remember what it's called. Um, but it's heron, and this is all hand-painted. All of that detail, it's crazy. 
It's amazing. So I opened a shop called Tent in Amenia. I did it during COVID. I took an old gas station, gut renovated it, and created this like tented phantasmagoria of fabulous stuff. It's got furniture that I've designed, but then it has tabletop and accessories and gifts from all over the world. This we call the garden room. We were able to dig down, and so we could get much higher ceilings because we went down. This has become the room that we really hang out in. In the summer, we just drop all of these down, and it's basically like a completely open room. This really wasn't meant to be the television room. And the walls are all reclaimed oak, so they're old oak, so they're really warm and, and, and yummy. Um, and I didn't want to look at the television. I didn't want to see the television all the time. So we put it behind these panels. How sexy is that? Is that not good? A little bougie, but kind of sexy. So we have prided ourselves on creating like these perfect magical Christmases every year for the girls. So about four years ago, we decided I'm gonna get zebra finches for the girls. I've never seen a zebra finch in, in real life. I'm just getting zebra finches. So I find this amazing antique bird cage and it's huge, it's incredible. It's about 11 o'clock, the girls are sleeping, the Christmas presents are all under the tree, the room is flawless, we've had no arguments and we take the birds and we release them into the bird cage. Well, I'm so brain dead that the little tiny birds fit right through the slats in the bird cage. So we've got 10 tiny little zebra finches now flying all around the room. They stayed in this room, thank God. They're in the tree. So now it's 11.50. We are cursing at each other. We're screaming at each other. We're trying to be quiet and not wake up the girls. And we're trying to get these birds we're sticking our arms into the Christmas tree because they've gone into the Christmas tree. We managed to catch them all. We put them back in the original little cage. And the next morning I woke up and I found this guy, an ironsmith who makes bird cages upstate New York. And he made this cage for us. These are not the original zebra finches. Sadly, zebra finches are really brutal animals and they attack each other for dominance for the females. So we're down to two. Um, and they're males, so the two males won't fight as long as there's not a female. Like, why do I know these things? I don't know. You just learn this useless information. I have no idea why. In all sincerity, I have no idea why, because we don't kill things. Um, but friends of ours give us taxidermy. They give us dead things. Like, one girlfriend of mine gave us this turtle that she's had for years, and she suddenly decided it didn't look quite right on her end table anymore. Um, another friend had a farm down the road where um, her husband raised fallow sheep and she would go out every year and collect. They shed their antlers every year, these huge antlers. And she would go out and collect the best pair and put them on these bronze heads. That's a piece of sculpture that I love. I think it's amazing. And then recently we had lunch for a girlfriend and afterwards we went to her friend's store and we're in the store and Michael and I were both like, oh my God, look at the beaver with this big fat belly. That's so awesome. And Barbara bought us the beaver. Pointedly, all of the upholstery that I've designed is purposely super sloppy, super comfortable. Um, you know, some people like, some people like cushions that are spring with foam so that they spring back and they always look perfect and they're always mint. I, I don't want my house to look like that. I don't want my house to look like a suburban fantasy of perfection and leave it to beaver. I want my house to look incredibly comfortable and like people actually live here. And yes, the dog is always on the sofa. <laughs> this is our bedroom. This is the room in the house that is my sanctuary. It's where I want to wake up every single day and the first things I see are things that make me happy. The walls uh, are fabric. They're not painted. They're not wallpaper. They're texture. So the sound quality is really amazing. This whole mush is, is like the... It's, it's just me. That's me. Like The perfection and the precision of the photography um, and the newness of the photography and then our girls, when they were like two years old, they did these paintings. And honestly, I think they're really good. 
And I love the combination of them. I, I just think the juxtaposition of the triptych, the triptych, the it's so like that's that's a home moment. That's the definition of home right there. There are a million places in every single room of every single room I've ever designed to sit. There is never one central seating arrangement. I, I, I just find a central seating arrangement kills the room. It's got one purpose and one purpose only. And if instead there's a place to lie down, I've got chaises, like in three different rooms in this house, I have a chaise. Because if you want to lie down and read a book, lie down and read a book. Doesn't matter what room in the house you're in. Um, you know, different chairs, different nooks. I, I just think having a variety of places makes a room adaptable, makes it much more usable, um, and makes it all feel more gracious, makes it feel more luscious and, and, and homey. So two rooms I love to do. I love to do kitchens, ironic, because I don't cook, and bathrooms. So our bathroom, I went a little bit over the top. Um, but if you can't go over the top in your own bathroom, where can you go over the top? So this sink was all carved by a local guy, by a local guy up here. There's a stone that's, that's native to Vermont called Danby. And we got an entire cube of it. And he carved this single sink out. So it's got two basins in it. I'm going to say something. A little gross if you're sharing a sink and your husband's like toothpaste is going into your sink. I don't want that to happen. So this is actually carved to flow here, and this side is carved to flow into his drain with a little bit of a rise in the top, but it all looks like one single plane. But it keeps the spit out of my side of the sink. A girlfriend of ours was investigating a company in Normandy that makes all of the brass and copper pots for all the French chefs in, in France, but all the chefs all over the world. And she discovered that they also made this amazing bathroom, these incredible bathtubs. This is really like a cooking vessel, but it's a bathtub. My favorite thing about this house is that it is 100% me. It is 100% a reflection of me. Every single square inch of it, every single item it is, is what I want it to be. So when I come here, this is nirvana. This is haven. This is heaven. This is home. Hi, I'm Victoria Mealy. Welcome to Newport. I can't wait to show you around my home and introduce you to my family. My parents owned this entire property. They bought it in 1952. And, um, after my father died, my mother sold Land's End in 1957 and moved over here to what was the gardener's cottage. This was still an eight-car garage. Um, and then in 1968, she attached the two houses. Uh, my husband and I bought Land's End back in 1989 from the, the people who had it then. And we lived there for 30 years. And when she passed away, in 2018, we sold that house and moved over here. This house, and especially this room, is a little bit of a mishmash of her things, my things from next door, and every house I've ever lived in. So it's quite an eclectic collection. I'm Nick Mealy. I'm her favorite son. Um, I am a professional photographer. Um, and uh, I've grown up coming here my entire life um, and now I get to bring my wife and two kids here to enjoy Newport. And to make his mother crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I have a new book out uh, called The Newport Summer. Um, it is a uh, coffee table book uh, available everywhere and it's kind of uh, 20 years of me uh, photographing here over the summers, uh, people, parties, houses, details, lifestyle, um, everything, uh, dogs, um, like my beautiful dog Lola here, um, and um, it's uh, kind of um, Slim Aarons esque a summer in Newport, really June, July, August, September. My mother, Marion Oates Leiter Charles, was one of the grand dames of Newport. People called her Oatsy, and she made everyone feel 
uh, like they were the only one in the room. She did. You know, which is one of her, her, her many talents. She was brought up to, uh, mainly probably because she was from the South, um, she was brought up to entertain and amuse and, you know, and be smart and be able to talk on a great variety of subjects. She was great friends with Jack Kennedy, with Nancy Reagan. Um, the list goes on and on. She uh, sat next to uh, Prince Charles at a dinner. On oh, she told him he was a hell of a prince at the end of the dinner. He absolutely loved her. She had incredible wit and would say anything to anyone. And people sort of just flocked to her. And uh, she was very big on the social scene in Washington for many years knew all the presidents and all the politicians and and led sort of a fascinating life. I mean, she once said to me, you realize you grew up knowing people that other people only read about in books. And that was true. She was a very um, a very interesting person. I was scared of her for the majority <laughs> of my childhood. She wasn't, you know, very child friendly. Um, <laughs> it wasn't until I uh, hit college and in, in my 20s that I really got to um, appreciate her. Um, and she also uh, taught me that you can get really far with a good sense of humor and being charming. Um, you know, it's kind of like that Oscar Wilde quote, um, it's ridiculous to divide people into good or bad. People are either charming or tedious. Which has always been my philosophy. <laughs> I, I, guess I, I guess I'm an intellectual snob. I don't really care where you came from or what you do as long as you're interesting. This was an eight car garage where we're standing right now. Um, and the other side of the house, which you'll see later, was the gardener's cottage. In 68, she connected the two houses and she turned this part into the library, uh, office, and this living room. The main furniture was hers, except for these two wonderful black lacquer pieces. I have a thing about stuffed birds, which I absolutely love, and I bought those peacocks at an auction here in Newport and ordered some plastic greenery from Amazon and stuck them in those stands and attached everything. So all these pictures on either side of the fireplace were our collection of interiors of places we've lived. The bottom one was my living room in Washington. Uh, the middle one, my living room next door at Land's End, and the top one was her library in Washington. Well, this is, oh, this is, uh, the four-year-old loves this because he put the whole collection of crabs, every time he sees them, he puts them all in the box, and he thinks that's great fun. But um, it's just, these have always been on this table. Wait, hold on, this is a perfect chance for me to plug my book. Um, because I took the uh, interior uh, pages right from this fabric. I took a photo and so it's all matching. This has been here since 1968 and it's really held up remarkably well. It's one of the few things that isn't frayed and shredded. <laughs> we bring shabby chic to a whole new level. <laughs> This picture was by Howard Cushing, who was a very well-known painter who lived right across the way. This was my great-grandmother's, or my grandmother's piano from Alabama, and she was a composer and a harpist. Originally, there was a man in Newport who was a, one of her best friends called Thomas Hagerman, and he helped her design the whole thing. But she pretty much, you know, he got the stuff, you know, she, she always knew exactly what she wanted. I mean, this, all of this paneling, which came out of the Elms, which is one of the preservation society houses, it was stuck up in the attic and they hadn't been using it. And she bought it all and pretty much designed the rooms around it. I don't believe in having, you know, children and dogs around and not letting them sit in the furniture or touch anything. I think a house is meant to be lived in and enjoyed and that hence, you know, chintz is the most wonderful thing. And anything with a pattern that can be thrown up on or pooped on and it doesn't matter. <laughs> the first summer I rehung all of the paintings she had here and I had, you know, I mean that was a that's a colossal house next door. 
And so it, it, it had, you know, 10 bedrooms and it was probably 12,000 square feet. And I really liked all my paintings. And so I brought all mine over. And that first summer I hung 300 paintings all over the house. I might add without a ruler, <laughs> just by eye. Um, and, but it was really satisfying, you know. I, I like walls that are well covered. My wife often comments it's like uh, coming to summer camp almost because, you know, the more things change everywhere else, the more they stay the same here. And um, you come back and you pick up right where you left off and you kind of leave your worries uh, at the door. Unless you have an old house and everything's leaking and cracking. <laughs> <laughs> My mother didn't do anything since 1968. So it's every time I turn around, you know, the, the other day the toilet was leaking into the front hall. It's <laughs> she named the house The Whim, which quite frankly, I've never liked. Um, but for lack of a better name, here it is. And Why so did she name it that? I have, I've never quite known, actually, and I forgot to ask her, which is one of the many things I forgot to ask her. Um, but this, the whole house is, a, it's a combination of things from her house in Washington, things that stayed here, uh, things I brought over from next door and every other place I've ever lived. So it's very much sort of an eclectic combination of just things that I like a lot. And I had a lot of paintings and she had quite a lot of paintings and I sold a lot of hers and hung a lot of mine. I kept these wonderful um, dolphin tables, which I really don't know anything about, but um, I've always loved them. The cane stand came from her house in Alabama and Montgomery where she grew up. This painting was painted by the man who built our house in Georgetown, which was a wonderful ho big house on the corner of R in Wisconsin, right across from the Georgetown Public Library. So this is the library. This is one of a number of rooms that are crammed with um, books. Uh, I have a, that's sort of my weakness. And I finally went to Kindle because my house was reaching critical mass. This portrait was painted of me when I was 25 and pregnant with my middle son by a wonderful watercolor artist named Alan Blagden who lives in Connecticut. And Tell them about the cat box in the corner. Oh yeah, the cat, the lovely cat box is in the corner because I have a fabulous Himalayan cat who's hiding from the pit bull upstairs somewhere. And uh, it's, he decided when we first moved back here that he didn't want to use the nice kitty litter box in the bathroom upstairs, but he wanted to go in the corner. So now there's a, <laughs> now there's a kitty litter box in the library. I run a um, Instagram blog with my family called A Social Life, where I'm constantly taking pictures of my wife and my kids in kind of uh, funny, Slim Aarons-esque, Wes Anderson-esque uh, situations. Um, so I definitely remember a photo like that in here. This is the one room that really hasn't changed since she had it, other than pictures, different pictures hung. But this is really exactly the way she decorated it in 1968. She had um, one of the best collections in America, probably, of anti-slavery um, art artifacts and and pictures, and and it's it's really extraordinary. And I've been trying to figure out who to uh, donate it to. Uh, it was during the Kennedy administration, and um, she went to a costume party with. Um, full leotard tights. One side was black, one side was white, and everybody's going, what are you? She said, I'm integration. <laughs> I've never heard that story. You haven't? No. Yeah. I mean, I love this. Uh, oh, this the chicken. You should definitely get the rooster. <laughs> this was the kind of uh, whimsical touches that we both like to add. In, in the house in Washington, uh, Albert Hadley did the house, and but it never looked decorated because there were always thousands of books lying around and little objects and, you know, nothing, nothing was perfect, but it was lovely. Well, that's the other thing. I photograph a lot of interiors and there's a lot of interiors in, in my book 
And to me, it's really important that things aren't overstyled, that they look lived in and they look natural. There's no, nothing I hate more than a room that looks like, you know, a stylist came in and, you know, put everything perfectly where it goes. Like, like we I've... did this morning. <laughs> no, before you got here. Well, I think there's curated, uncurated, right? So, you know, uh, just not. I, my goal was just to make it look not like a. We should have taken. Mess. We should have taken before and after pictures. <laughs>
one of my favorite. <laughs> Not that <laughs> old. Okay, maybe like 15 years ago. Um, but it's one of my favorite rooms of all time. Um, was it Albert Hadley or was it Sister Albert? Ha I, Albert I Sister no, Paris. it was Albert Hadley. And the, Albert you can Hadley. see the carpets there are the ones in the living room. But it's one of my favorite photos and one of my favorite rooms. And I'm thinking of bringing those sofas out of storage. Those are mine as okay, well. Okay, all right. But I'm thinking of bringing them out of Nick's storage that he hasn't <laughs> gone into in 10 years and um, putting them in the living room. So these are very cool. Um, these are all first edition James Bond novels by Ian Fleming, um, signed uh, to my grandmother. Um, this one isn't. But um, she was great friends with Ian Fleming and the, uh, yeah, like that. Um, uh, she was great friends with Ian Fleming and he actually named a character Felix Leiter after uh, my grandfather. And um, my grandmother says that she's the reason that James Bond is famous because um, she was great friends with uh, JFK and great friends with Ian Fleming and he, she introduced Ian Fleming to Jack Kennedy and um, when he was still a senator and a couple years later when he was president he um, was asked uh, by a newspaper or a magazine uh, what his favorite novel was and he said James Bond and that's kind of what started the um, the fever for, for James Bond novels. This is my bedroom with my wife, um, who is sitting over here with our dog. I told her she had to be on camera, so I didn't look like a weirdo who lived by myself with my mother. <laughs> um, even though you Some kinda... of that's true. Okay. <laughs> well, let's not eat all the wonderful usually, heirlooms. Well, We've cleaned it up for you guys, but there's usually multiple children in here, Legos all over the floor. Um, I tend to, I mean, I love being in this house just because the, the room has, even though it's got these incredible things, incredible, you know, wallpaper and fabrics, it feels still like homey. So when we're in here, I just feel like cozy and comfortable. Um, it doesn't feel stuffy and really <laughs> I mean, we're um, like a reality show and I'm sorry. that's um, um kind of part of what i love i mean <laughs> every night i have a kid in my bed everything and this one's usually in the bed as well this and is your third child. this yeah. is no this is my third child this is my child. fourth child <laughs> we love just staying here we love being with family um i love that my mother-in-law is right here the kids climb into bed with her in the morning um so yeah this is just it's just home um, we love these linens. This is um, Amalia, which is like a brand I just found. And it is, like, they're incredibly soft. Um, they have, like, a lot of them have a modern touch. This one's, like, you know, goes really well in this house. And it's just, you know, sharing this with the kids, too. It's, like, multi-generational, right? Like, they love this doll in the corner with, like, the little notes and the money on it. And, you know, it's just, I think it's been here forever since Otzi was here. And kind of the, someone's like, thank you note is here. Someone put a dollar. At some point, somebody put fake nails on it. I mean, it's just one of those things that like kind of has grown over time um, and has sort of become a fixture. Poems that Nick have, have written that I highly recommend you do not zoom in on because it's really, really bad. But um, it's just fun because then the kids get to see all of this stuff and see all the memories. I think people are so quick to get rid of everything old and then sort of the history is gone and I think we love, I mean, I love history and I, and familial history, but also, you know, kind of the world. And I think um, houses like this just kind of aren't around anymore. Everybody wants everything perfect, no stains. And, you know, this house is lived in. So once again, the perfect opportunity to plug my book. <laughs> it's um, like you put one in every room, I'm assuming. <laughs> this is it without its uh, jacket on. And as you can see, it matches uh, the uh, couch and the bed and as you'll see the bathroom um, and it uh, yeah when I was looking for uh, jackets I just uh, I thought this was a really cool kind of fun fun print so I love a good bathroom my favorite rooms to photograph are actually bathrooms and kitchens he does loves a good bathtub <laughs> and I do love a good bathtub um, but uh, I just think this wallpaper is amazing. Um, and the fact that it's lasted this long, I think this has been here since my grandmother.
I usually, when the kids are screaming, I lock myself in, turn the shower on with a popsicle, and I'm like, I'm taking a shower. And I just eat a popsicle for 20 minutes alone, you know, because that's what moms have to do to survive. Yeah. We don't give her a lot of alone time, no, so. No, this is for sure. So this was my mom's uh, artist studio, painting studio. Um, originally it was a bedroom, uh, yeah. but when you moved in, you turned it into your studio. And now, uh, during the summers, I take it over as my office where I yeah. edit photos and, and do, do whatnot. But this is one of my favorite rooms. Um, love this room. I love the curtains. I feel like that it's just, it's a lot of colors that I wouldn't think go together, that, but, but re end up working really well. Essentially, you bring it all in and cross your fingers that it actually works, <laughs> even if it doesn't. Furniture has to be comfortable. You have to be able to lie down and read a book or sink into a big chair and read a book. Anything that you can read a book in, basically. Uh, that's the key for me. So this is my bedroom, um, and it, I might add it's about to be redone, so don't pay too much attention to all the differing fabrics um, and the very old carpet. Uh, it uh, was originally, Nick is very mad at me because it was painted black and it was really a beautiful, it was sort of a showcase room with lots of wonderful old shell furniture and Chinese lacquer and pretty fabulous, but I have a thing about light, so I, the first thing I did was painted it white and he's really not happy with me. Um, and it's just, a, you know, it's a, a little bit of, of everything, you know, more of little boxes. I have my feather collection over here um, on, on this table. All my feathers I've collected over the years. I have a large crystal collection, which is all inside that cabinet. Why do you collect feathers? I don't know. I just think they're beautiful. It's just a little bit of everything. and. Um, a little bit less of everything than this morning because don't open the closets. <laughs> Nick made me clean it up. <laughs> so, um, but I love this room, again, because of the light and, and the amazing view. I mean, it looks right down uh, to the ocean and into the garden. Here's the whole family. Mm. <laughs> so this is um, Archer, and Archer is four. And Johnny, turn around. Johnny is seven, and uh, this is one of our first summers staying here. So now they're both so big, they can share this room together. Um, and it's sort of, you know, it's very sweet that they can, they get to spend a lot of time together here. We, and we try not to mess up the rest of the house. So this is like the kid's space where we have snacks and all the books, we have toys up here. And I think my favorite thing about the about uh, the room is that I um, I have good space to like the bed because I usually watch a lot of YouTube on that <laughs> and we're gonna be on YouTube. Archer, can you look at the camera and say your name? Archer. Hey you. Hey you. <laughs> okay, we'll say let's go on the golf cart. Let's go on the golf cart. Okay. Maybe that didn't work. So this is my probably my favorite part of the whole house. This is the property because um, my mother designed this garden, and it really was. It's a fabulous garden. Um, it, it's uh, actually in the Smithsonian. The plants for the garden. Um, so it's it was considered one of the premier gardens in the United States. I think this is the, the best part in the summer. So lots of family and kids. And this is the, um, it's a gardening shed. And this is a rose, a climbing rose called Miss Newport. And for years, nobody knew what it was because it seemed to be unique to this property, this particular strain. And uh, so it was eventually named Miss Newport. It used to grow practically nowhere else but on this property. Basically, no Newport house is complete without hydrangeas. It's the one thing I always associate with summertime. And I was really shocked when I went to New Zealand some years ago that they consider hydrangeas weeds there. I was stunned. <laughs> but I, these, I just love them. I like anything blue in the garden. A lot of the plants are new this year in this garden, so they all look a little 
unformed um, because it got a little out of hand last summer and I had to pull a lot of things out, but it's really gonna be spectacular when they all grow in. This is the gate between the two houses, which I left there because we can still walk back and forth to see our neighbors. And this is beautiful grasses in the summer when you see the heron coming out and the grasses blowing and it's really lovely, but it's, it's still early, so nothing's really grown yet. That's the Temple of Doom. My mother found it at a garden show years ago and um, didn't buy it. And then her landscaper gave it to her as a present. And it used to have a, a top. Anyway, the installation, everything turned into the singular most expensive folly on the face of the planet. So we named it the Temple of Doom. In the bushes over here, and we'll walk closer so you get a better shot, is um, a head of Angela Davis that my mother absolutely loved and had shipped back from Poland in the early 70s. And it's got, you know, peace and love and everything all carved into her head. But I love this piece. This is probably my favorite thing on the property. And it used to, I need to move it again. It used to sit further out in the lawn. Well, I think for me, Newport is a very cool place. And unlike a lot of other summer communities, because it's very um, family oriented, the same families have been in the same houses for generations and you know the same people that my grandmother was friends with my mother was friends with their their kids and I'm friends with their kids and our kids are growing up together um, so in a lot of ways no matter where uh, I, I move to or live coming back for the summers really is like coming back home yeah I've always thought of it Newport as home too even though I grew up in Washington and have lived lots of other places. For me, it's just total relaxation, and um, I, I just stay at home a lot, frankly, and enjoy my garden and my house, and I don't go to a lot of the big parties, and I fly under the radar. I get a, a real sense of peace, you know, and uh, happy times, and, you know, f family, children, picnics, you know. The typical idyllic summer. <laughs> I'm grateful every day for this view. Hello, Homeworthy. I'm Michael. Welcome to our East Hampton home. Come on in. Hello, I'm Michael Gianelli. I'm the owner of East Hampton Gardens, which is a luxury uh, garden store in the village of East Hampton. I live here with my partner, Greg Shano, who is an interior designer, and our dog, Harper. I was the senior vice president of design for Victoria's Secret, and that's where I decided when I turned 50 that I would end my career in fashion. And so what I did was I took my passion, which is gardening, and turned it into um, a business. So I bought a lovely mom and pop nursery in the village of East Hampton. We rebranded it, renovated it, Greg did the interiors of the store, and now we kind of have a luxury boutique uh, garden design firm um, in the village. My partner is an interior designer, so I have the luxury of working with him, and we have a very stringent agreement. He owns all the decisions for the interior of the property, and I own all the decisions for the exterior. So it avoided a lot of uh, arguments. So Greg, um, he came up with the whole palette, the fabrics, everything based on sort of a coastal sea glass obsession that he has. So um, I can take you through that collection <laughs> later. But he used all the colors of the sea glass to inspire the interiors of the home. When you enter the home, we had renovated where the um, front door was off center. And so we had to center the front porch. We added a beautiful brick and stone um, entry. And then when you enter the home, you actually enter into this really pretty um, living room. So this is my coffee spot. And every morning I make my coffee. I come in, I sit in one of these low chairs because they are a vintage chair that Greg uh, found at Home Nature in Southampton and redid them in sort of a Chanel-like boucle. So they're quite beautiful because they're khaki with a little bit of seafoam green, um, which are great. And they have a curved back, 
which is really nice because it's comfortable in the morning. I feel like I'm getting a little bit of a hug with my coffee. So these are my favorite chairs. They're absolutely great. A lot of the home is based in sort of a sand khaki neutral with sort of a sea foam green uh, sea glass color. And then he accented the whole thing with these Blinko lamps, which are really pretty. So um, as we go around the room, these are just sort of a classic Blinko shape. Um, in the beautiful like royal blue glass and what's great is on a sunny day The Sun will come through these windows and the blue is reflected off onto the floor and everything So when you enter the home, you're greeted sort of by this beautiful uh, Console that we found at English Country Antiques in Bridgehampton and what we've done is curated um, a, a small collection of curiosities so we've collected some beautiful vintage um, seascapes and we always love to like do a, a collection of an item, whether it's like the seascapes or florals or things like that. And then rounding it out, like I used to travel to Europe all the time. So we've collected some, you know, the Hermes trays. These shells are always found on the beach during my beach walks with Harper. So we, you know, I bring them home and the, the colors always work so well and the natural textures are like super inspiring. So. This is a collection of um, shells that I collected with my grandmother down in Florida. So she used to live in Port Charlotte and we would go to Boca Grande Beach and just go shelling. And it was like a really nice time to like hang out with her and just really be with her. So these are all from her house. And when I decorated, when Greg, we started decorating the house, we would layer the shells in and then my mom and dad would come to visit and my mother would always like want to steal them back. So um, every time she sees these, she gets really annoyed. But um, we've introduced them into her house as well. So we have those. And then funny story is Gre oh, Greg was in Paris and he got me some cute things there. Um, but these little um, dishes are hysterical because my friend Jed has this amazing antique store in East Hampton and he has a very eclectic home. So when I go there, I shoplift and I take a few trinkets and he doesn't even know yet. And he's been to my house like seven times. So um, well, he hopefully he now. won't see that. <laughs> and then Greg worked with Stephen Gambrell for a long time. So when he started his career, he uh, interned there with Stephen. And Greg was in fashion like I was. And in 2009, decided he was going to have a great career change. He went back to school, got an internship with Stephen Gambrell and um, then launched his own career. So these lamps, um, Stephen would always make, and Greg just um, had one made. It's a vintage, I guess it's a vintage wine bottle or liquid bottle of some sort. And he had a huge burlap shade made for it, which is really great. So this is always, people come in and they're always like, where did you find a lamp of that scale? Um, so Greg has these made for his clients as well. This was an original 1920s fisherman cottage and needed a ton of work. So it was a very small cottage sitting on a beautiful double lot, but it had overgrown trees. It had, a, you know, the driveway went all the way around the house and ended in our pool house. So there was no landscaping and there was nothing um, to the home. It was probably untouched since the 1950s. The best part about the home is the way the garden and the interiors interact. We, um, when we renovated it, we added a lot of windows and a lot of doors and the light really opened up the space. So I can enjoy my gardens from the interior and what I love about the space is we use all of the rooms. So not there's nothing that's like a dining room that's never in use or you know a sunroom that's always for show, but we use these um, all season. We're gonna go into the sunroom now, and the original house had a wall here, and there were two windows. So when we renovated, um, we decided that we would add this big sunroom in. So we did a double height, which is something that Greg and I are always somewhat against, but really going from a lower ceiling height and going into sort of a double height ceiling really gives you a different atmosphere. So when you come into the sunroom, Greg designed this with, um, Martin was our architect, and they came up with this idea, which was gonna be ceilinged at first, have a, a high ceiling and then a studio above. And then Greg was like, no, we're just, just gonna do one big double height um, sunroom. So what we did is we added French doors and the side windows to really open up the view to the backyard. We added in a beautiful uh, porch there. 
and then a bank of windows across the front that looks out into the front garden. So you really get the element of sort of the front and back gardens within the sunroom. It's one of our favorite rooms in the house. Um, it has a very beautiful uh, fireplace with a very clean mantle. Um, we argue all the time whether it should stay a wood-burning fireplace or it should go to a gas fireplace. And since I'm in charge of making all the fires, Greg thinks it's probably safer just to have a gas fireplace so I don't burn the house down. <laughs> but I've, I've managed to get it well, because when I first started making the fires, the, the, the smoke alarms would go off all the time and the dog would freak out and go hide. Um, but now I've got it down. So Greg designed these built-in bookshelves and he's curated and collected all of these books that friends of ours make fun of because they, they just naturally go with the surrounding space. So they are um, landscaping design books, garden books, artists, and um, sort of decorative uh, books for the shelving and then he's curated them all with these beautiful white vessels and shells that's harper saying hello and so i've started to add in sort of my collection of hotel silver which kind of just blends naturally so greg and i would go to brimfield and travel across kind of the northeast and do sort of like vintage uh the antique fairs brimfield was always our favorite so we would do that one in may and our, we started with one or two seascapes, and then it became sort of this obsession to see which ones we could find, which ones we liked, um, all of that. So what, what we've done is we, we had them all over in our other house. So now what Greg did, um, he curated it, this wall, and it really is just a beautiful wall of seascapes in different vintage frames, um, which we just think looks amazing. And it picks up like the whole color palette of the house. This is our favorite room in the house, definitely. It is very calm, serene. I love the way it's curated and it's super comfortable. So when you have a home with a dog, as you all know, the dog sheds all over everything. I recommend the nylon bristle brush for your outdoor furniture. So I go out every morning, I sweep off all the pollen and the, the dog hair and then conveniently store it in these beautiful Chinese vases. So now um, we're going to go out and we'll see the backyard um, through the French doors that lead outside here. So I wish it was uh, a better day, but you can really enjoy the colors of the garden. For some reason on a rainy day, the green really pops. So um, Greg and I would always travel to Paris and Europe for business trips. And I was always inspired by the grand gardens, especially the Tuileries gardens. And so when it was time to design this low key garden that I promised Greg, it would be low maintenance and easy to maintain. That did not happen. I worked with my friend, Hal Goldberg, who was a garden designer and has since passed, but it's really a homage to him. Um, as Greg says, uh, Hal would do the design, I would take a big red sharpie and like cross everything out and draw exactly what I wanted. And then Hal had to acquiesce, obviously. So here we have this beautiful pleached LA of hornbeams surrounded by boxwood. And this is really the entrance into the backyard from the entrance court. And then you come in and you see some of these beautiful statuary that we collected um, from an estate down in Palm Beach. And then you have sort of a French fountain that sits in these beautiful white hydrangea that will bloom. So it's like a cloud of white hydrangea and then the fountain sort of is in the middle. Um, behind that is a triage that was designed with accents of France in California. And so that was made in California and then crated and shipped here. And then the mirror, which reflects the entire length of the backyard, um, was put in uh, on site here. All right, guys, it's raining, so we're gonna run into the pool house. So come on in. This is our little pool house. This used to be the one car garage that you would drive up from the street across the pool and into this garage. So Greg had the vision of adding a bluestone floor, redoing it with wainscoting and leaving the raw beams and everything up top. So, um, it looks really uh, finished on the bottom, but then we have the rustic ceiling, which I think looks really great. We have a beautiful um, vintage rattan set that we bought at the Mulford Farms antique shop show um, years ago. 
And then this again from um, Jack, who owns Jet Antiques. He does specializes in these beautiful like chain tables and lamps and everything. So we um, picked that up from him. So this is where we come after dinner, which we serve on the dining porch. Uh, after dinner, we all kind of like come here, hang out. We listen to music, have drinks. It's really beautiful when all the candles are lit. Um, it's just a really romantic place. And it does give you like a really nice view of the garden. Um, so through the windows, you can see the fountain. And then out the front, I have some espalier pear trees and a French dining set from um, Accents of France, who did that as well. This is our combo dining room kitchen. Um, during the renovation, there was a door here, a door here, and a door here, and you would just go around in a circle, and none of it made sense. There was also a chimney that went up the center of the house. So we removed the chimney, we closed up the doors, and then we expanded the um, entryway. So the view is really from the sunroom to the living room, to the dining room, to the kitchen. Um, so it's sort of like a long open view, which we really enjoy. Uh, so this cabinet is a Belgian from Belgium and we found it in Palm Beach, which um, really just worked here because we didn't want to expand the kitchen with a ton of cabinetry. Um, so we really just put in a piece of furniture that holds my china. This is from Royal Crown Derby. Um, this beautiful pot pattern, um, Chelsea Garden, which is one of my favorites. There's some great silver pieces in here that I collect, um, which drives Greg crazy because it used to just be all white coral. And now I've, I've absconded like this one shelf. This is part of my collection of uh, blue and white Chinese import. And I get most of it from my friend Jack's store, Jet Antiques in uh, East Hampton. And um, this piece, which is one of my favorites and rare, is from Indigo Seas um, in LA, right next to the Ivy. And I loved just having lunch at the Ivy and going and explore that store. Um, and I would always come home with some fabulous piece. So this um, is a vintage iron garden table that did not have a top. So we had a piece of glass cut, which um, basically drives me insane. So it is sort of like the minute you have dinner, it's fingerprinted, it's slimed, it's like a big mess. So I have Windex and paper towels at the ready at all times. This is again part of the collection of shells that I collected with my grandmother in Florida. This, which I love, is a um, antique leaching bowl that I use um, as a vase, which holds um, collect a beautiful peony arrangement for my garden. What's a leaching bowl? A leaching bowl is when they would have these in medical offices and they would use leeches to uh, kind of clean up wounds and- Well, you've turned so. it into something very chic, Michael. <laughs> so now it's a vase. <laughs> so this little area um, is hilarious because we have a friend, Aida Totoro, who came over one night to make us a beautiful Italian feast and then complained the entire time that our kitchen was not functional, which it isn't because we don't cook. So we have things like this in the kitchen, which is sort of acts as a bar. Um, so I have collected a bunch of Baccarat crystal. Again, this is one from Indigo Seas. And, you know, I collect them from uh, Sage Street Antiques, which is my hidden treasure that Greg and I go to all the time. Um, this is a great piece that came from Portobello Road on one of Greg's trips. He got me as a gift. And then here, just more peonies. I love the topiary, um, which is from Christopher Spitz Miller and Anthony's store uh, up in Millbrook. They were down here for the Mindu Garden Show. And I have round and square shapes at my store, but they had this amazing triangle, so I had to buy it. Um, and then this is just a sampling of Greg's beach glass collection. So now we enter our, what my friend Jack calls our service kitchen. Um, here we renovated, there used to be a big wall here. There was a freestanding refrigerator, brick linoleum, and basically a freestanding stove, and in the mudroom was a washer and dryer. So we removed the wall, we added the soffit, we kind of added in all of this. If you don't know about Pietro Cordoza, 
it is probably one of the most amazing stones you can use in your kitchen. It does not stain, it doesn't ring, it feels amazing. It's been here for like 12 or 15 years and it's my favorite, favorite stone to use. It's in our city apartment as well. And then here, you know, it's just a basic galley kitchen um, that we use for basically breakfast shakes and that's about it. So this is our stove. <laughs> and what I use it for is display and I have my hotel silver my sugar bowl this is my sterling that I use every day so I just keep it in um, this little pitcher I have my coffee station I make my coffee and I go sit into the, the living room this is a portrait of Harper the artist is Beth Runquist and she is unbelievable she does gorgeous landscapes and she does these fantastic dog portraits um, and so we have this one, there's one in the city. And my favorite thing is she sent us, which I have at the shop, is the color study. So it's a quick, you know, painting. She does it to make sure the colors and everything are right. But I have to tell you, it's like one of my favorite pieces of hers. It's like this big. I love it. So this is the upstairs, but um, Greg did a fantastic job on the gallery wall. So um, we've always loved that look of like, you know, a collection of different art and pieces hung together. So we've collected sort of silver leaf mirrors, which we got at Brimfield. So Greg has curated all the pieces here. Um, beautiful vintage map of Long Island where we live um, and different artworks of Harper. Right, baby? Are you going to go downstairs now? She's like, mm, I've had it. And then I did remember, this is a portrait from Valerie Schaff. She did this beautiful portrait of Greg and I. Oh my gosh, when was that? In our youth, <laughs> a few, just a few years ago. Welcome to our primary suite. Um, here you can see that the color palette of the sea glass and the sand is really carried out throughout the house. So we have a lot of the textures in the wallpaper and some great ECATs here. So it really is just a blend of sort of like a very serene neutral palette, which keeps us very, very calm. And then Greg introduced a lot of vintage pieces. So we have this great, these pair of great tufted chairs, this beautiful sort of um, burlwood blonde dresser. This is sort of a um, ceruse desk. And it really is a play on all the patterns. So there's a lot of ECAT. There's a beautiful wave pattern that kind of is very reminiscent of the ripples of the water. Okay, so this is Harper's little bedroom. So we have these like smaller doors here built into the dormers. And then Harper really loves her crate. So when she was younger, she would come up in here and we would crate her when we would leave. But now it's just her little bedroom that um, she finds her way into when she's fed up with company, <laughs> really. Home is something that means um, comfort, safety, um, a place to be with Greg and Harper. Um, I am very sort of gregarious and I have to do a lot of selling and I'm always on in the retail environment in my store. But when I come home and Greg is here and Harper is here, it really is just a lovely place to just like sit down and relax and spend time binge watching on Netflix or just like cuddling on the couch with Harper. Sorry, Greg, I know she's not allowed on the sofa, but um, <laughs> She is always on the sofa when Greg's in Manhattan. Hi, I'm Christy Doremus, and welcome to my Bridgehampton home. I am a creative consultant and event designer. Welcome to my Bridgehampton home, where I've lived for the past five years, and it is my happy place inside and out, so I'm excited to show you around. So everything in my home is collected and it's something that I truly, truly love. Someone wise told me that if you find something you love, you will always find a place for it, no matter where you are. So that's my theory. So as I shop estate sales, thrift stores, uh, yard sales, dumpster dive, I like to find things that really, really make me so happy, make my heart sing, and then I find a place for them within my home. But because of that, my home is a very collected place. There's tons of prints, tons of patterns, 
tons of reupholstered and reimagined furniture and all of it I found piece by piece versus putting it together all at once which makes it really personal to me. Everything tells a story and everything is a conversation piece really. So this is the entry into my home, the foyer, and it can be a little bit overwhelming, or at least it was to me, having this huge room to fill up with furniture, but I created a couple of different spaces so that the room could feel segmented and styled, and I'm gonna show you one of my favorite things. Uh, this is my statement wall. And I put, I really loved this uh, De Gournay panel and I wanted to do my entire dining room in it, but I had to pick a little bit of a smaller space. So I chose this smaller wall that you really see when you walk in the door to make the statement that I wanted with the colors that I wanted. And then I picked colors from it to put around the space. My favorite part about it, because whenever you buy De Gournay, you can pick and choose the specific panels and sometimes even customize them. But my favorite panel was the lovebirds. So I knew that I wanted them to be front and center when you walked in. So those are my two lovebirds, uh, me and my husband. And this is a Scalamandre fabric called Marley that is discontinued. I found it on eBay and covered these vintage chairs that were in terrible shape. So that's one of my favorite tricks is to buy something that has amazing bones and fix it up, put something fresh and new on it so that you feel like you have a brand new piece of furniture that's totally customized for you. So another place that I've done some reupholstering and reimagining is on this bench. Uh, this is a Schumacher fabric recovered on a $50 bench that I got from an estate sale and made my husband bring home through the roof of our car. Uh, on the weekends, he gets calls for me sometimes asking him to come pick up oversized furniture. Uh, this was something that fell into that category, but I love the way it turned out and it has a story behind it. So my theory on pattern and print is more is more. And truthfully, I have zero formal design training. So everything is really chosen because I like it. And I do think that there are rules. There are rules that should be broken, but I personally like to stick within a color palette when choosing prints and patterns. So in this room, there's plenty of blues and greens that brings the indoors outside and the outdoors in. So I have a lot of patterns in here. One, two, three, four, five, six, but I think that they all work together because of the color palette. Although there's a stripe here, it's partnered with a floral and I love these Scalamandre pillows. And this is a De Gournay covered silk stool that I found at Colette, which is an amazing resource in the Hamptons that you should know about. And I really put everything together piece by piece item by item over time. So throughout my home, art is a big priority for me. I wanted to make sure that all of my art felt really personal. I found a lot of people on Instagram that I've commissioned pieces from, but this one might be my favorite piece of art that I own. I actually picked it up at Round Top in Texas, and it was a series of three uh, paintings that was done for a wedding, I believe in Georgia. And my only regret is not getting there sooner because there was only one left. Someone got the other pair. And I saw it and immediately was like, I love this, but how am I gonna get this home? I live in New York City. And as soon as I said that, this amazing woman popped out of nowhere and said, Oh, I'll just put it in my truck and I'll bring it back to New York for you. No problem. Like, here's my cell phone number. And we texted and she's the coolest art collector. And a couple weeks later, it showed up at my apartment. Somehow we fit it through the door, but now it's in my home. And I think I'll have it for a very long time. So one of my favorite things about design is that you can always add a little surprise or something that's a little weird or confusing or off because a perfect room to me 
doesn't exist and I love to add a little element of surprise. So I love plants and love gardening and I'm always searching for interesting planters that I can put around the house to make my plants really sing. And here at my entry, I have my little alligator planter to greet everyone and sometimes people don't see it and then it scares them a little bit. <laughs> a dog certainly scares a dog, but it's just a little something that makes you smile when you walk in and makes you take yourself a little bit less serious. So I am always at estate sales. There's actually amazing estate sales every weekend in, in the Hamptons, so call me if you wanna join. But this piece I actually found at one of the estate sales. It was actually kind of broken in a few different pieces and the woman was like, just take it. I mean, we gotta get this out of here. It takes up too much space, it's broken. So I brought it home and I repaired it. And now it's sort of the anchor of my living room and it's where I put some plants and just little things that are meaningful to me, uh, my brass crab collection. So from the living room, we're gonna move right in here into my dining room. Um, this table, I still don't know how I found it, but I got it on the real reel. So check there for home goods. You might be surprised what you find. And these chairs are so special to me. Um, my dad actually painted them for me. I bought them on Cherish and had them recovered and he and I did a backyard project and painted the chair, so they're really special to me. So this piece of artwork might be at the top of my list of favorites. It is a Hunt Slonem painting and my husband gave it to me when we had our son last year. So it's very special and sits here in the middle of the dining room. And just because more is more is more when it comes to color and pattern for me, I had to cover the fireplace and this shoe marker wallpaper because why not? And I think the art sits nicely against it and all of my plants and it just creates some interest and breaks up this room a little bit. So wallpaper your fireplace, wallpaper everything inside the cabinets, wallpaper it. So one of my favorite things to do is connect with artists on Instagram and hear their stories and support their work. And this piece is by an artist named Millie Sims. She's out of Charleston. And I saw on my friend's Instagram that she did this series of Audubon's Birds of America in her really cool geometric style. And I was like, I need the flamingo. And I called her and she said, oh, that's wonderful. You can pick it up at the gallery on King Street. And I'm like, no, no, I live in Bridgehampton. And she said, oh my gosh, how did you, like, how did we connect? And it was through Instagram. So throughout my home, there's lots of nods to Texas and Louisiana. My husband's from Texas. I'm from Louisiana. Uh, so I have my little Texas bowl. And my New Orleans books, this book is actually our guest book from our wedding. So everyone signed the inside. And every time I pass by it, I open the page and I don't know, it just reminds me of a really happy day. So because I'm a big gardener, I love to bring my flowers inside and put them all over the house. I have tons of plants, tons of flowers. And one of my favorite things to collect are unique and interesting planters, which are not as easy to find as you might think. But anytime I see a beautiful, interesting brass planter, I pick it up, whether it be a punch bowl that I turn into a planter. My plants are my other babies, so I spend a little quiet time in the mornings with my little watering can going around watering all of them before everyone wakes up, so gotta do what you gotta do, but they're all happy. So this is my wing of the house and you are welcome by my brass bird, Petey. I sit in this window and read magazines, look out over my garden. I'm a big plate collector. I'm into a plate wall, so I've done a lot of plate styling up here. So this is what I like to call my ladies lounge and I didn't know how I was gonna use this space when we moved in, but over time, after dinner, my girlfriends and I have come in here for a glass of wine or a margarita and some really good conversation. So I've learned to enjoy it as a little after dinner place, 
to spend some time with my friends and catch up or just during the day read a magazine. It's a little Palm Beach, Granny, Golden Girls all mixed in together with my two favorite colors, pink and green, which go with everything. I have a lot of birds. I'm realizing I have a lot of birds in my house. I think I might be a little bit of a crazy bird lady, but this is actually one of the first pieces of art that I commissioned when we bought the house. It's by an artist named Megan Karn, and she did a duo of these for me on either side of the room. And then I found this also matching pair of benches from Housing Works for $40 and had them recovered in this uh, Schumacher velvet. So when I shop at estate sales, thrift stores, resale shops, I'm always looking for amazing pieces with great bones, whether it be the woodwork or detailing on a dresser or the curve of a piece that feels unique to me. It's always that little touch of something that's unique that I love, but I don't necessarily see elsewhere versus finding something that might be mass produced or something that everyone else has. So it's always that unique touch of a vintage piece that I've never seen before or feels really unique to me. So that's what makes me go for a piece. So these chairs were upholstered in a hideous brown fabric and most people would have passed them up, which is probably why they were $40. But I loved the curve of the chair and how beautiful they were. And of course they fit right here in this space, but also a pair, buy a pair. If you find a pair of anything, always get the pair because a pair is not easy to find. So believe it or not, the pink and green theme is not over. It continues in the rest of my wing of the house into my pink and green bathroom with my pineapple wallpaper and pink soap, pink art. It's all pink and green. What can I say? I love pink and green. If you go to an estate sale, go into the linen closet because there's always it's always the last place that people look, but that's where I find the most amazing things that are hand done. And so I keep my tablecloths in here. I need to find a way to catalog them, but all mostly found in estate sales. Um, I love to entertain. I love to make any casual dinner more formal and more fun. It's always more fun with a little nice napkin or a nice tablecloth, a nice piece of china. Selecting a favorite is tough, but I do love these tablecloths with, with all of this incredible handwork. Um, these are super old and I love how detailed they are. You just can't find things like this now. It's just so impossible to find things with this much beauty and detail. Now, if you were to buy it at a mass market store. This is my room where I sort of organize all my garden supplies and my craft supplies. I try to keep it as organized as possible. Look, all my colors are labeled. But in my drawers, I keep my napkins color coordinated so that they're easy to shop from if I'm doing a dinner. Here, some reds and some pinks down here. And it just makes me happy. So now I'll take you into my family room where we spend the most of our time. And I'm not one of those people who can say I hide my TV because it's always on, usually golf. Uh, but this is where my family spends time. Uh, my son plays, we watch TV and there are yellow chairs and a lot of lemons. I don't know if it was the limoncello or what, but on my 30th birthday, my husband took me to Capri and I came back and was lemon obsessed. Um, there was a hotel we stayed at called Caesar Augustus and every morning they have the best lemon carrot juice. I've tried to recreate it a thousand times. I can never get the recipe right, but you would go out under the awning with the white and yellow stripes and drink my lemon carrot juice. And when I came back, I knew I wanted a lemon room. So among all the lemons in my lemon room, uh, my favorite item has to be this pair of 
planters, the lemon planters from the Saramichi Castle. And every time I look at them, it, I'm reminded of my trip in the Amalfi Coast. So because this is my family room, I did choose an indoor outdoor fabric for the chairs and I scotch guarded it as soon as they arrived. So everything is easy to clean, especially with kids running around. The white couches are actually pretty easy to keep clean because you can just wash the cushions or you know, clean with a little bleach, but this room is very, very livable and family friendly. So with all the pattern all over my home, this is really my sanctuary where I come to rest at the end of the day, my bedroom, where it's cool, calm, serene, and peaceful. I love this wall color by Pharaoh and Ball. It's called Blackened. And seriously, if I had to live with one paint color for the rest of my life, I would choose this color. I've had it in a couple of different bedrooms. It looks amazing with the light. It's the perfect light bluish, not too blue, not too gray, and it's just so peaceful. And that serene theme is sort of continued in this room, which my husband likes to call the relaxation room. Um, we were inspired by these amazing lounge chairs that are sort of reminiscent of the chairs at the Mayflower Grace Spa. So this is where we come to relax, read a book, look at a magazine. I wish I could say I spent more time in here than I do, but on a day when I can, it's a good day. So I have to say my bird theme around the house continues a little bit in this room with my swan console that I found online and it's kind of 70s, but I like it in my swan painting from Megan Karn that sits in here. It's just peaceful. I have a lot of swans in my garden, big swan theme, uh, but I thought swans peace goes along with the calm vibe of this room. So welcome to my one-year-old son Jackson's bedroom. Such a happy place filled with all of his toys, which are always all over the floor, real life. When decorating my son's nursery, I couldn't commit to a wallpaper or a paint. I really wanted to keep it neutral in case I changed my mind and make it a room that he can really grow into. So I kept the walls white and just added a ton of art. So some of the art I've sourced over the years, I am known to keep tons and tons and tons of frames in my basement. I always buy a good frame no matter what's in it. And then I put art that I find into the frame versus having to have it always professionally framed. On his crib, my mom actually made the bumper and the bed skirt for the bed. So just a little touch from the grandparents. These chairs actually used to be in my living room and because they were light blue and went with his nursery, they live in here but that's just something that I can take out and put somewhere else, maybe once he grows out of it. His nursery is really a culmination of things that I found around the house. I really didn't purchase a lot of furniture when I had a baby. I really just tried to make what I had already work in the space. So now it feels like an adult place. And now I'll take you to the part of my home where I personally spend the most of my time in my garden. Welcome to my garden. And just like my interiors, my garden has been put together piece by piece. It all just started with one piece of grass. And my husband actually helped me design it on Excel. So we're amateurs here, but we're learning. Every day is a school day. And I just love seeing at the beginning of the season to the end, everything that grows, coming out here in the morning, seeing what's in bloom, picking flowers, setting them on the table, being outside in nature. It's a great respite from the busyness of New York City and it's truly my happy place. Thanks for coming to visit me. I'm gonna take these inside and get dinner ready. Hey, I'm Justin Reese. Welcome to our 200 year old home in Hampton, Connecticut. Come on in. We are here in Hampton, Connecticut in the home that I share with my partner, Mark. Our two dogs, one of which you can hear right now, um, our 10 fully grown chickens, our 12 baby chicks, and I think that's it for right now. 
Scout. Doesn't love the chicks. We bought it out of foreclosure about four years ago and we've spent, you know, pretty much the bulk of that four years uh, bringing it back to life, restoring it, trying to find the right bits of its character to save and, and really cherish. So outside of restoring the house and raising chickens, um, we are sort of hobbyists by trade. I am a ceramicist, so I spend a lot of time at the pottery wheel, and Mark's a woodworker, and he makes cutting boards, sculptural pieces, some pieces of furniture, and you'll see all of those uh, scattered throughout the house. Uh, when we first bought the house, it was, I would say, squeaky. It was drafty. Lots of cobwebs, you know, it's kind of everything you'd expect an old house to be. Um, but beyond that, and once we sort of saw past that, it was really well built and it was well laid out and these spaces in each room had such a such a clear definition of what it wanted to be and, and that's what we fell in love with and we were able to see past uh, the disrepair. We are in our living room, uh, which is, I would say the second part of the home. Um, it's, you know, TV time, it's cocktail time, um, and it's really just a place to sit and enjoy it. And I think, you know, we love stocking the bookshelves with these strange little curiosities that you can just sit down and, and let yourself get lost in. Lots of things that I love here, um, and I think it really shows our love of mixing high and low, both with antiques and contemporary pieces. I think for starters, this rug is sort of the perfect example of that. I found this amazing rug guy on eBay who has an incredible assortment of old rugs, um, and they're super affordable. Is there a serpent theme I'm also seeing? Yeah, it's kind of like snuck its way in, to be honest. I've got the, the serpent lamp, um, which is this amazing House of Hackney lamp that I found in Chicago when I was traveling a lot for work. I would try to pick up a piece for the house everywhere I was, so that came from Chicago. Another thing I love about this room is all of the wood storage in here. Um, initially, we were thinking of putting doors on it and kind of hiding it. It is kind of this amazing focal point uh, of telling people how we live before we even open our mouths, and I think that helps set the tone for how cozy we want you to feel when you're here. Okay, here we are in the dining room, which I love. Um, we usually only eat here when we're entertaining, but overall, the aesthetic of this room is kind of, I don't know, I guess most people would say it, it could be a little strange. We've got these really amazing frescoes that are hand-painted onto the wall. Um, they're signed by Maria something uh, in 1948, and they're obviously a little cracked and, and the plaster's chipping off, but I love them, and then we wanted to do everything we could to not only save them, but make sure we could preserve them and keep them with the house for as long as possible. And then we kind of just based the rest of the aesthetic around that. And then, you know, there are a lot of little fun touches throughout the room, and, and everything has a story, you know, for example, this portrait, which we found at an antique mall in Vermont, I believe, is of a bank robber from my hometown in Warwick, Rhode Island, which is just kind of a crazy connection, and we have been dying for an oil portrait, um, so that was a no-brainer. And then, kind of as we swing through the room, we've got other little conversation pieces that help keep the dinner conversation flowing. I think one of the biggest is our taxidermy emu. Uh, which I found in Portland and had never seen a taxidermy emu before. And apparently, I didn't know this, but emus mate for life and this emu's mate had died and he tried to throw himself in front of a car and got hurt and it ended up dying and the owner wanted to have a taxidermy to preserve it and, and kind of save that story. It was quite a story. Quite a story. And now we're in the kitchen, which, you know, like all homes pretty much, is really the central part of the house, but it was also the, the biggest project we've had. So. Originally, it had great hardwood floors that we loved, but they were so old and, and so warped um, that we had to replace them. They really just weren't safe at that point. The beams had to stay, obviously. They're such a, a critical detail of the house, and I think it, it kind of gave us the spring pad for what we wanted the rest of the kitchen to feel like. And then with the islands, you know, we wanted islands that felt great for entertaining and cooking, and, and we had to work with the layout that we had. Um, so there were islands here. We extended the size of this island to get more of an overhang for a bar top, um, and also made it a little bit wider. So we found this beautiful leather finished granite, which means that it's not as buffed as other granites, and you can feel the ridges of the stone, which I love. The fridge in here is kind of crazy. Um, so the fridge is actually hidden behind this door, and it opens into the fridge, uh, which is strange because on the other side of the kitchen, we have what I thought was an amazing set of built-ins, when in reality, they are cabinets that lead to nowhere. This is kind of our main eating area, especially for breakfast, um, but we've got this couch, and, and a lot of people ask us, oh, like, why do you have a couch in your kitchen? But in the morning, coming down here and like plopping down with a cup of coffee and the newspaper and watching the chickens kind of roam around outside, 
it just it feels like a hug and I love that and I love when our guests kind of come down and naturally do the same thing. To me that's a, a, a good sign of a well laid out room. And then in my collection of wicker baskets, which kind of came to me in a fever dream, and I was like, we need wicker, it'll fill this space perfectly. Um, what, but what I love is I use it a lot, so bread baskets, collecting eggs from the coop, but also it's sort of like a go-to host hostess gift. I can grab a basket, throw some flowers in it from the garden, throw some eggs in there, and I'm kind of done. And it, it's great, and they're, you know, five to ten bucks each at a local antique shop. Here we are in our bedroom, which coming from a New York City apartment felt cavernous and pretty overwhelming in terms of how we were actually going to fill this space in a way that felt cozy and warm and exactly how you want a bedroom to feel. So this, to me at least, feels like the most contemporary room in the house. We've got this low bed that the dogs love because it's easy to get on. This is a, a piece from an artist that Mark used to work with when he owned a gallery in Boston. And there are just touches of, again, really contemporary art throughout the space. But what I love is you can still see all of the sort of trappings of an old house. You know, we still have the beams. And then I think over here even you can see the seam where the, the floor just totally slopes downwards. Um, so it's not perfect and, and I love that about it. So this is the room that really stole my heart. Um, we were looking at the house, not in a great mood that day, but we came in here and this wallpaper really just, I fell in love with it. And it's wallpaper that's original to the house, or at least, you know, original to several owners before us. Um, and it's wallpaper that we would have bought to put back on the wall. And I think it was that moment that I was like, okay, this is, this is the house for us and I can't wait to get my hands on it. So these chairs are some of my favorite uh, pieces that we actually own. Um, I was out here with friends one weekend, we were antiquing, and I saw them and I was like, God, these are nuts. Like, they're kind of nuts in the best possible way though. But they were a little bit on the border of like, okay, these could be bad, so I didn't buy them. Uh, the next weekend, Mark was out here by himself, and I almost told him to go buy these chairs because I couldn't stop thinking about them. And then the following weekend, we were finally back out here together, and he was like, oh, go upstairs. I found these crazy chairs. You're going to love them. And I walked in the room and these chairs were here and we had never spoken about them, but we both kind of fell in love with them in the same strange way. We have a lot of artwork in here, a lot of portraits. Um, almost all of the artwork in here, and I'm gonna say actually all of them are portraits of women. And the only men in this room are right over here. And they are these kind of um, court jester figures, which I, I, I love that idea for whatever reason, it's a room that really celebrates women. And at first I was like, oh God, we're making the pink room about women. That's a little cliche, um, but it kind of feels right. And it kind of feels like every matriarch that's ever lived in this house before probably loved this room. So we are now in what's kind of become a makeshift studio uh, for shipping my pots out, for starting seedlings, and for raising our baby chicks right now. So these chicks are our third batch of chicks that we had. They don't have individual names yet, but conceptually I want to name them all after accused witches of Salem. I had no idea that chickens liked watermelon. They love it. It's, it's kind of crazy. Watermelon, grapes, anything from the kitchen. The chickens live in a coop that was designed by Mark. Uh, it was really meant to look like an old English garden folly um, that felt special and structural and not really like a chicken coop. So we've got the one coop here where the first 10 live and the 12 baby chicks that you saw upstairs will inhabit the new coop when it's done uh, next week. We've got, let's see, we've got three eggs in here. We also have a decoy egg in each nest box. Um, which helps the chicks know where they should be laying and, and where the eggs belong and where they don't belong. Today's haul is we've got seven. And you'll see every hen lays a different egg. So we've got a green one, a white one, a sort of brown speckled one, and a few varying shades of brown and almost a pinkish one. What do you love most about this house? The thing I love most about this house is that it feels like ours, to be honest. I think. There are a lot of beautiful houses in the world and there are a lot of houses that are much more expensive than this one, but this truly feels perfect for us and then genuinely every room feels like what it wants to be in my eyes and I think that's sort of invaluable. Hi Homeworthy, I'm Courtney. Welcome to my Dallas home. Come on in. Hi, my name is Courtney Pettit, and I'm here in my home in Dallas, Texas, where I live with my husband, 
um, and my two daughters, one of which just went to university and um, the fourth grader who is now still home and gets a run of the house. I've dug actually quite a bit into the history in part because the realtor, the listing agent, was a son-in-law of the previous owners. We were actually the third owners of the home and it was built in 1936. Um, by George Marble, who worked with Charles Dilbeck, who's a famous architect here, um, a renowned architect in, in Dallas. Um, we've lived here for five years. It's our third home in Dallas and where we're going to be and, and settle forever. So this is our foyer and it was a really tough space because it's dark. There's some Gothic windows there that you're gonna see. Um, and they were covered in this fabulous red Fortuny fabric. Um, but I wanted to really brighten the space up so that you could look out to the backyard and not feel so enclosed as you're coming in. Um, so we put some um, antique um, mirror on the walls and some um, you know, trim, trim molding and millwork. I got some antique shell lights and um, we had some lamps made from the lampshade shop in, in Dallas. Um, there was um, carpet going up the stairs and we just did a high gloss black and white to keep it really sort of clean and fresh and be able to accentuate the original um, staircase. Uh, I just put some simple prints up. They were um, drawn by um, Alessandra Branca's mom, um, who was an artist and just had phenomenal prints, um, had them framed and thought that they just looked really neat. Um, this is another space, it was really tough. It was just like a little inlet nook and there was nothing that would really fit properly there. Um, so I used, um, uh, Schumacher green velvet and I thought it was just fun and said let's just do a, a little place to sit and put your shoes on or take your shoes off as you're coming um, in through the door and it really helped to sort of brighten the space up quite a bit um, and then just have some fun blue and white um, vases here and just try to brighten it up a little bit. So the jars a lot um, some I've just collected um, some I think that one is from my mom's house um, I like to get things along the way. Like I got these great little sort of these fun um, blue parrot birds from uh, Mrs. Alice um, from London. And um, the mirror was from my mom. And I got this on Cherish. I wanted to get something to sort of bright, fun that was um, an antique piece. I have a real sort of love and passion for architectural detail, for trim molding, um, things like that. And um, I think it's important to keep with the element of the home to make it really comfortable and not have it be something that it's not. So you'll see a lot of traditional elements throughout, um, a lot of which were passed down from my mother, um, who is also very traditional and loved um, colors. That's sort of what I'm used to. I grew up in a room with wallpaper that had flowers all over it um, with a blue and white trellis rug. So that's where I was saturated with, I was saturated with flowers in my sleep when I was younger. And, um, that's manifested and morphed into um, how I design and um, curate, curate rooms today. So let's go now into the living room. This is the formal living room. Um, and it was, again, it was, it was a very dark room and it was red, but it had all this fabulous millwork in it and original fireplace and these fantastic um, drapes, which are um, sort of hand brocaded. Um, they came, um, they were from the original owners and I asked for them to be kept with the house. Um, so I had them taken down, um, restored and, and cleaned and really wanted to um, have that be the showpiece of the room because um, they were just so gorgeous, like just with the birds and the, you, know, you can see the vines coming down. Um, I thought they were just too good not to, not to work around. Um, so I asked my friend Shelly Johnstone Design. Um, Shelly's from Lake Forest. She came down and helped me with some of the rooms and this was one room that she helped me with. Um, and she said, you know, just, just go white, go simple and let the room and, and everything speak for itself. So all we really did in here was we did some paint. We put a mirror above the fireplace to allow some light to come in um, to the living room. And I put up, um, my, was, um, the clock was in my grandparents' house. That's something very important to me is have a lot of elements from my grandparents or from my mother in, in the room. So again, I feel that sort of sense of comfort. And so um, in this room, I have a couple pieces like this Demi Loon piece. Um, I actually got that piece. My friend Sam um, has a resale shop in Lake Forest, Illinois. And um, one of her friends had consigned these and um, these were from, you know, they sold at Sotheby's about 20 years ago. And I thought they worked perfectly in this space. Um, 
And then we did the rest. Actually, the couch is from Trading Treasures as well. I love the shape of it and the color. I had a, um, a custom Gracie put behind, which was sort of you know there to replicate the, the theme of the vine um, with the drapery. And um, Shelly helped me with the chairs. And I actually, with the coffee table, um, I had that hand painted. Um, it's turtle or tortoise, um, tortoise shell. I had that hand painted here um, by a fantastic painter in Dallas. So I actually bought the table and it was really just, it was a hard room to find the right coffee table for. So I wanted to, to make, it, make it custom. Um, and actually one of my favorite things on the coffee tables, um, I love books. I love the color that they bring to a room. And there's a book on um, homes of the park cities in, in Dallas. Um, and I had this book when, when I first moved to Dallas. And this was the house probably, I don't know, maybe 15 years before we bought it when the book was put together. And you can see what the exterior of the home looked like. It had a bit of like a beige paint and um, a lot of ivy and a, a, a large tree there. Um, so we did a lot of, quite a lot to the, the outside on um, the exterior with some paint and had to take the ivy down. But um, I remember when I went on my walk, I thought, oh my gosh, I think that's the house <laughs> from the book. And then I'm like, it's, it's so gorgeous, I have to have it. So um, that's the living room. We do spend time in here actually. I know it probably looks like we don't, but um, because all the rooms flow here and we walk through here every day to the sunroom, which is where we're gonna go to now. Um, when I grew up, I was gonna be a teacher and I have a master's in education and was a teacher for two years. I um, moved up, uh, went to New York and worked for Goldman Sachs for about eight years and moved to Chicago and now I'm in Dallas. I work for a commercial real estate company that I love. I've been there the last you know, 16 years um, and I've grown this passion for design sort of on the side, um, really because of the moves that I've made in houses. That's really what sort of you know, kick, kicked it off was we had to move and um, as a result of having to move or relocate, we had to redesign a house and redo a house. And that's really where it started. So I was able to get in contact with, um, you know, just local contractors and the proximity that Dallas, that the design center has in Dallas to Highland Park, where we are right now, it's really fortuitous because it takes less than five minutes to drive there and maybe go pick something up. So I've been able to maintain my, my day job in, in corporate America at the commercial real estate firm while also sort of, sort of dabbling on the side, which is my sort of my artsy side or my passion, which is in decorating. The sunroom was formerly a, um, a patio that was enclosed by the previous owners, gosh, probably 40, 50 years ago. And so um, there was actually a wet bar right here. This was all closed off. And we really wanted to, um, we wanted to expand um, the backyard, the side yard. So we, we put some brick up and wanted to bring some more light in. So we took a wet bar out and um, for us, the light was more important than having the wet bar. Um, and so we put a window in there and put in some custom trellis and millwork around the room um, just to make it you know, sort of light and bright. And um, we kept the brick, which you can see, we just painted the brick and put some sisal rugs down and um, I've been, you know, there's a lot of things in here. I just, I love animals. I have monkey lamps that I've, you know, that I purchase at antique stores or like the elephants that were in my parents' home growing up or like the little frog. Um, this chair, I love, you know, John Roselli, anything from, from him that he's procured. Actually, I think this area might be John Roselli if I, as I look at the candlesticks and the, um, and the table. Um, so I've really liked to collect sort of light, and really light and airy things. And um, this fabric was a vintage fabric that I purchased, I think 50 yards for some, it was like $200 or something really is just sort of ridiculous. I wanted to work this room around the fabric. So there's always something that sort of I anchor to that is the driving force behind how I curate the, the rest of the room. Um, and it's just fun. It reminds me of growing up. It reminds me of my, my room growing up. And um, you'll find a lot of people there, you know, taking, taking a snooze. These chairs back here, I actually, um, Shelly and I got them together when she came down um, on a Dallas trip and we were in Scout Design, which is a store here in Dallas that has really fun, eclectic things. Um, and then in the back, they have antiques. And so these were a set of chairs, antique chairs, and I loved the green and thought they would be fabulous in the sunroom and just did a, a pink and white ticking stripe with it. Just sort of fun and whimsical. For some reason, I have a lot of mirrors and my mother gave me a lot of mirrors and wanted me to have a lot of mirrors. And 
um, they were, they're fabulous and they were all gold, a lot of Chippendale ones, and they just, I didn't have a place for them. And so I thought, I think I'm gonna paint them. So I don't know, um, my mother probably wouldn't be thrilled with me, but they have a purpose, they're great, and I think they look fabulous in the room. So I actually, we did them like a high gloss um, white so that we could put them up in the room. Um, I wanted you know, a sense of old, I didn't wanna buy something new, I really wanted to, incorporate old elements into the home and have a good mix of a new piece he, here and there, like the, the John Roselli chair, um, but then also incorporate antiques. So this room, there's a lot done in this room. I actually spend a lot of time in here. I'm usually um, at this room at 6 a.m. every morning doing calls. Um, this is actually my desk. This is where I work. This is uh, my father's desk from the house that I grew up in. Um, it's just a, it's a pine table that my mom actually got for him. Um, I remember when she bought it. and. Um, I sit there every day and do calls and it's typically dark and then usually at 7.30 the light starts to shine in and the sun comes in um, and it's just a great place to work. It's happy, it's bright. If I need to get outside, I open the side door. Um, my daughter, um, eldest daughter was a tennis player um, on the high school team. They, they win state every year and so I had to give an ode to her and I had like a fun Slim Aaron's picture with a tennis player um, above it to just sort of make the room a little bit more casual, a little bit more fun. Um, this is where I work. This is also where we play cards. So I actually designed the table um, and had um, my furniture maker here in Dallas make it. And um, I wanted to give an ode to my heritage, which is the Greek key. And in keeping with the room, I wanted to do like a green and white. We actually do play games here and use this table quite a bit. Um, in COVID, it got a lot of use. And Mahjong is a game that's really um, big here in Dallas. And I have a Mahjong um, quartet, um, a group of ladies, and we play once a month right here with our, you know, have our, our little drinks and get a view of the yard. So before we go out and take a look at the pool and uh, the pool house that we built, I wanna take you to the dining room, which is adjacent here to the sunroom. And as you walk in here, um, there the first thing again that I wanted to sort of center the room around was the chandelier. So my mother had given me the chandelier and it has gone with me, I think now through five houses and it lives to tell. It's, it's still living. <laughs> so um, the chandelier is here and um, the room, like the millwork you can see and um, the built-in sort of with the shell, these were all here. Um, they were painted a high gloss white. So Shelly helped me um, with this room, painted a high gloss white. And there is a phenomenal Fortuny um, fabric on the wall, which I would have loved to have kept. However, it was starting to fray from the sun in, in Dallas. And so that had to come off. And we put the same green Schumacher Rocky Velvet that you see in the front hallway is the green that we have on the walls here. I wanted to do a fun little trim just to make it you know, sort of sweet here. Um, with the Samuel and Sons trim and incorporate some of the blue and the white. Um, it's a very traditional room in here. And so we wanted to, um, I wanted to bring something fun in here. My friend um, Alyssa was moving. Um, she was going from one house in Lake Forest to another and had some things that she wanted to repurpose. And she said, do you need anything? And I said, I'm sure I'll have a space for it. And so this photograph, uh, I believe it's of the Maidstone Club in East Hampton, New York. Um, one thing, another thing that, that Shelly gave me the trick of um, was, not the trick, but it was, um, I had sort of these dark walnut chairs. And in order to make it a little bit more light and a little bit more um, informal in a, what is a very formal dining room, we painted them a high gloss white. So you can see it just makes it a little bit fresher, um, not as sort of heavy and, and a much lighter room. The, um, the mirror here, there's actually a fun story behind it. So um, the, there were five children from the previous owners, one of which, um, two of which actually I'm still in touch with, and one of which um, said that this was her grandmother's mirror um, from her grandmother's home um, around the street, and it was actually above the living room fireplace. And so we thought it would be great to put it up. She gave it to me after we moved in, and I said it has to go up on a wall because it sort of belongs to the house. Um, and so this was the grandmother of, or the mother of the previous owners. This was her mirror. And um, we've got it up here in the dining room. 
So in this little nook, um, we put in some new windows to protect the walls from the Dallas sun. Um, got this sort of fun to antique table um, off of Cherish, and you can see it's filled sort of with blue and white and silver um, and white ceramics, which is a theme around the house. Um, and the, the window treatments here, um, this is a, a Brunswick uh, blue and white silk taffeta and this green is um, Lisa Fine Fabrics, um, and Lisa is, is based here in Texas as well. The table is set. I have, um, I'm having some guests over tonight, and I thought it'd be a good idea as I was showing all of you the house, as I'm getting ready for things, I like to be efficient. Um, so as I'm getting flowers and things ready for the home, I thought I can kill two birds um, with one stone. So um, I've got um, three, three couple friends coming over tonight for a casual dinner. We're gonna do a Greek dinner, because um, these friends helped my daughter who just went to University of Texas um, get into her sorority, and I thought I would do a Greek-themed dinner for them. So that's what's, that's what's on table for tonight. So when we moved to Dallas nine years ago, we had two moves in Chicago. Um, and so those were my guinea pigs, really. And then we moved to Dallas. We, um, we moved to a street called Fairfax, and we remodeled that home. And um, that was sort of my guinea pig in Dallas, I would say. And it was a lovely home. It's actually very similar to this one, but when we moved to Dallas from Chicago, I thought, it's really hot here and I wanted a pool. <laughs> so um, we were in that house for about two years and I was on a walk and around the corner saw a home that was for sale and thought it looks good and it had a pool and it needed to be redone. And that was two ingredients that were, you know, that were high on my list uh, or two needs that were right on my high on my list, which was that the house have a pool and be ready for a renovation. And so we undertook that renovation um, and we're in that house for about two and a half years. I really was on another walk, that's the truth. And three blocks away was this house that looked a little tired, but it was a beautiful home. It was actually in a, in a coffee table book that I have on Highland Park. Um, and I've always sort of loved the home, thought it was really beautiful and it was for sale. And I called my husband, I said, this house blends everything I love, which is has the pre-war you know, sort of detail and charm um, and needs to be needs a facelift, needs to be remodeled, and they're selling it for a lot value. And I don't want it to be torn down. I want to save this one. It's too beautiful not to. And um, the rest is history. Right now we are in the entryway, um, and it was formerly the breakfast room. It was painted yellow and had this fabulous um, Pierre Du. For those of you that know Pierre Du, which is now Soleado um, fabric here, um, and this was used as the breakfast room and when i came into the house and i opened up these cabinets and saw all these shelves i thought oh my god this is amazing it's going to hold um all of these things that have been passed down to me or that i really like to collect um, so this is just a little sampling of what i have in terms of my china and um, glassware and you know sort of pots and you know wedges and things to, to collect and, and hold flowers um, but I knew I had to have the house because this little room, which was the breakfast nook, which I turned into the entryway and sort of passageway to the, to the backyard, um, it had all the space for all of, all of my china. Where I keep my, my favorite um, china and plates is, is back here. Um, and for some reason it keeps growing. And um, my husband always says, you're, you're gonna have the best estate sale someday. Um, <laughs> so he says, keep buying for it if that's what you need to do. So. Plates that I love, like from Penny Morrison. I got these at auction. Um, these I got when um, I was at school in, in Charlottesville, at the University of Virginia, at an antique store. Um, these were, you know, wedding, uh, my hair and sets, the Queen Victoria and the, um, the um, uh, Rothschild bird. So I, I love collecting china. And so this is probably my favorite one. And I will use this every day as well because um, I think all this, all these beautiful things should be used as much as possible. And when they're easily accessible like this, I can just grab them and pull them out. So one of my favorites is this um, pink and green sort of um, charger plate that I use as a brunch plate that I actually um, purchased at Palm Beach Regency. I saw them and I said, I have to have them. And the, the owner said, nope, sorry, um, they are, they're sold. And she called me back two months later and said, um, the person never come, came to pick it up. They've been calling, calling, calling. And eventually the person said, I don't want them. So she refunded her and she called me and I said, please overnight them to me. I'm gonna use them the next day. <laughs> So they're a lot of fun, whimsical, and they remind me of my girls with the pink.
This is another fun set. So I like to, um, to, to go to auctions quite a bit or buy at auctions now online. And um, this set right here, they are um, dessert plates. They were actually um, sold at Christie's and they were from the, the Cox estate. And um, the Cox family, they, were, they lived actually four blocks away from the house. And I knew that they were gonna be you know, sort of really pretty. Um, and when I saw them, I said, how neat to sort of have a piece of that estate or that home. And I just thought they were just fun and whimsical and um, I could put them with any other, any other set. All right, so this is another fun area where um, my oldest daughter always wanted me um, to collect uh, teacups. She likes to have, um, or did like to have tea parties. And so we've collected them up here and have different ones. And we will do um, tea parties sometimes for, for Valentine's Day, have mother-daughter teas and we'll put them out. Um, this is also where I, I like to pull the salt and pepper shakers from. Um, I've got some old ones here, some green and white, just sort of preppy frogs. And um, you can see the, the compare. Um, and some more sophisticated swans. And then I was um, watching, um, you know, Bunny Williams has this fabulous collection with Ballard. And so I'll have you know, very high-end things and then get something from Ballard. We just got a dog this year, my first dog ever. And I, I said, I have to have this. I just thought it was darling. And for the price point, um, just, just too good not to have. So this is where the, the salt and pepper shakers um, sit, any you know, condiment jars, um, Baccarat, we do mini ice creams, we'll put them in here um, and just, just sit, uh, select bowls and where we keep the crystal pitchers. I'm ready for anything at any time. It's easily accessible and I'm using it because it is easily accessible and I can see it. So that was important to me. Wherever I was going to be, it had to have space where I could see something because if you can see it, then you will use it. If it's wrapped up and, and safe, you tend not to use it. And these things are so fun. They're pretty. Just want to use them every day. There's one last thing I want to show you, which is um, really whimsical. And there's a there's a restaurant in Aspen called Batula that actually has these glasses. And I thought they were darling, so I wanted to have them. I don't know if you can see them well because they're 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 glass, but there's they're a little bird. And um, what we'll do is use them sometimes for brunch. We'll put something bright in there, like um, pink lemonade or orange juice, and you put a little straw in and you put that on the table, and it's just darling. So. I like to um, have new things like this um, and mix them with very traditional things like you know, sort of my grandmother's etched, etched crystal glasses or new ones that you know, I registered for or these old Tiffany ones that I had on my, on my wedding registry. But I like to mix um, old and new and these really make for a fun conversation piece at the table. So now that you've seen the former breakfast room, which is now the entryway, I'm gonna take you to the den. What's my favorite thing about this home? Probably um, it on, off when you look at it on the street, it looks sort of large and commanding, but when you come in, it's truly a home. There's no big rooms. Um, as we were remodeling, we wanted to ensure, you know, we were really keeping with the architecture of the home. So we looked at, you know, doing the open kitchen and um, wanting to, you know, to the family room. And it just, it, it wouldn't work for this house. It's a series of rooms. It's, it's a bit um, clunky, it has steps up and steps down, and um, it has two stairways that are right next to each other to go up to the second story. Um, the, the house, I just, I probably have to say the charm and the love and just sort of the beauty that's with it, but that it has the size, but I can still yell for my kids and they hear me. So this is the den um, where we really spend a lot of our time. It's a fun room, it's cozy. The, we had all these built-ins in here and um, painted the room green to give, make it fresh. It was a dark red. It's a Benjamin Moore um, artichoke is the color. Um, we kept the original sort of Delft tile that was on here that's, that's blue and white. Um, it was just charming and I thought it's so gorgeous and lovely, why, why change it? Um, you can see the Chicago brick that's at the fireplace, which you'll see at the fireplace upstairs in the master bedroom as well, that we wanted to keep and, and make part of the room. Um, they, we put in a lot of lighting, so we put in actually a fairly new sort of modern looking mighty, uh, lighting um, and did that because the house is so traditional. I wanted to infuse some modernity in, into the room. Um, we put in the sconces that you can see here and the, the portrait lights um, that you can see just to, again, make it feel like a bit like a cozy study library. The, um, the couch, again, was another friend from, uh, another, another gift from my friend Alyssa. She sent it down and it's the gift that keeps on giving. It's a fabulous couch, it's comfortable, it's chocolate velvet. 
Uh, Ruthie Summers had decorated her house and I believe she worked on it. And so I've been able to now, um, we've been able to repurpose it from Lake Forest down to, down to Dallas. Um, you can tell I like pattern and color. You see the Lisa Fine um, green that you saw in the dining room here um, and just some fun, you know, quadrille um, that's incorporated in here. I wanted to get some lavender in here, some chocolate browns, um, and, and really, and, and some greens, obviously, to, to make it sort of fun and whimsical, which, um, against which is a, a very traditional room. Um, uh, you know, the lampshade shop was, was really part of the venture with the um, renovation and with the decorating in this home. And so you'll see this, this ticking stripe here with a green, a green little velvet trim and, and pinched pleat um, on, on the shades. I think that the attention to detail just makes it a little cozier. I like to make the rooms really comfortable there. Um, Eliza, we live in a neighborhood where the houses are very close together. And, um, my youngest daughter who's in fourth grade has, um, friends that live down the street. There are seven children and she's friends with the tail end of them, like the, the youngest three. They're over a lot. So I like to keep treats out and, you know, just sugar out for them to come in and feel comfortable with. So, I'll always have M&Ms out, usually in multiple rooms, <laughs> just so that they can grab it as you're um, you know, hanging out and you're having fun and playing. Um, I want the home to be very inviting. I want children to be very comfortable here. Um, I like the kids to hang out. I feel more comfortable when my children have their friends here. Um, and I just feel like it, it fills the house with energy and love and warmth. So you'll always see some candy and sugar hanging out in the house, in every room usually. So now that we're gonna, we're gonna leave the den and go into the kitchen, um, and to get there, we're gonna go through the back hallway, which is really an extension of the den. There were these um, built-in um, bookcases, similar to the ones that you see in the den, so we painted them green and brought in the same fabric to really make the back hallway feel like it was an extension of the den. Um, and had this fun print from Paul Lang. I, I found, wanted to be, again, incorporate some fun, like modern, um, sort of whimsical art against a very in a very traditional home. In order to get some more light in the back hallway, uh, what we did is put in a mirror in here. And so you'll see lots of places around the house where we actually put in a mirror. Um, and then in the living room where you saw the clock, the sun clock that was on the mirror, um, I wanted to balance that out again here and do, um, I got this mirror um, from an antique dealer in Atlanta and thought it was just really fun. Give it some dimension, give it some more light. A little reading nook here. My daughter will sometimes hang out here um, and and draw. Um, and it just became this back hallway that turned into a nook and extension of the den. So we're almost there in the kitchen. Um, but before we get there, I wanted to show you uh, the bar area. So we put in a bar here. It was actually a desk and thought it would be really fun. Again, you see the use of the um, antique mirror and you'll see that the same sort of hard, the same hardware and cabinetry that, is, that the kitchen has. We wanted to bring the kitchen out to here, um, but also this is another entertaining space for us where it's easy you know, to grab glasses um, and give friends, um, have, have drinks and whatever you wanna do. I've got some glasses that were my grandmother's, silver you can see everywhere. And then um, for cocktails, again, I'm not big on paper. I actually um, like to use cloth things. And these are actually some cloth, um, cocktail napkins that were my mom's and just some fun vintage fabric that um, was trimmed with, with some rickrack. So they're sweet and they're fun and great in the summer or any time here in, in Dallas because it's usually summer in Dallas, nine months a year. And then in here, um, another little treat, this is the, um, the pantry. So this is where we keep our food, um, but we keep it well hidden. So um, actually all this is, we repainted it. So we just repainted this space. It was here, it was existing and put the hardware in and um, put a piece of, you know, just put a piece of um, marble on top of the space. But it's another place where I like to keep my everyday plates. And again, I think it's important to show things if you, if you have them and I love plates and I think they can become a part of the decoration of the home. I always think there's going to be room for more plates because you can stack them and things that are stackable, they're, they're compact. So I always think there's room for more plates. And I also look at it. I have two daughters. I have one who's in college now and I know they're going to be in apartments at some point. Um, so they're going to need it. And so they will start to get sets of things when they start to live on their own as well. So they, I know they will have a purpose. So now we're in the kitchen. Um, it's actually not a large kitchen for the size of the house. Um, and it ended right here. So it was actually a very tight kitchen that used to, when we bought the house, they had a butcher block that was in the center of, of the kitchen. Um, and we thought we really need to 
um, ex, you know, just sort of modernize it, bring it to today's living, and wanted to make it um, traditional, balanced. We didn't want to create a huge kitchen or have a big island. There actually isn't room for an island in this um, in this space. Um, and so what we did is just pushed the room out about 10 feet and took some of the yard space and put in some windows so that we could get some really great views of, of the backyard. Um, so I put in a, a built-in bench um, to sit on which hopefully doesn't obstruct the eye to the backyard. And this is where we hang, this is where we eat, we enjoy the backyard space. Um, it's pretty simple in here, white. I wanted to have the, the marble go all the way up so it was really a clean line. Um, and I love these ovens that I have. The one I have here, this is the third one I've actually used. Um, I just think it's a great look, it's really fun. It's almost like a piece of jewelry for the kitchen. Um, and it's, it's just a pretty thing and it's probably my favorite piece. Um, so that the kitchen was, was built around the, the stove. <laughs> I did the decorating around, around the stove here. Um, so this is our kitchen, really simple. And um, the appliance that gets the most use is the coffee maker. I don't drink coffee, um, but my husband um, probably has, I don't know, six cups a day, something like that. So gets gets used a lot. This is what I like to call the little bathroom under the stairs. Um, it's a charming little bathroom with great architectural components and a slanted ceiling. Um, the previous owners, again, it was red and they had a fabulous red twill skirt um, for the sink. And so we just re re redid this and put a new white marble countertop on, um, some different hardware, and then put a sweet little, um, there's a frog on a lily pad. Um, in the sink so that the water doesn't splash up too much because it's a small little space. Um, Shelly helped me with picking out um, the Schumacher wallpaper and, um, and material and, and fabric in here, which I think is really fun. You can see it's the original window and there's a large mirror in here to make the space feel larger and a cute, sweet little light treatment um, from a store here in Dallas, um, Caitlin Wilson. And I thought this is a fun, whimsical light and it's just a cute, charming little bathroom. So now I wanna go upstairs and show you our bedroom. So before we head into our bedroom, I wanted to show you my, um, my dressing room. I, I, I took over a bedroom and converted it into a dressing room. This was something I wanted as my sanctuary, so when I wanted to relax, and again, I'm big on being able to see things, and when you can see things, you use them. Um, so we designed this space. We wanted it, again, to be bright, light, airy, and you can see the use of mirror um, and some architectural details to really make it fun and light. Um, there's just one you know, sort of chaise lounge in here, a simple table. It's really all it needs. Um, I'd like to say that I lounge in here, but I don't. I'm never lounging. <laughs> but um, this chaise lounge ends up being a place to throw my clothes, to be honest with you. So I travel a lot for work, and I like to take in details and elements and style where I'm traveling. I am always have my eyes open and um, even hotel rooms. So uh, I'll stay at the Bristol Hotel, uh, sometimes in France, and um, they had these fabulous closets in the room. And rather than having a walk-in closet, they just had these as part of the room. And it really is a nice way to elevate the room without having a, an icky looking closet. And I wanted to replicate that in my space. Um, so you don't see any clothes, they're all hidden, they can't get dusty. So it really looks like a room, um, but it's actually the dressing room and, and where all my clothes are. And one of my favorite little spots, and this was a, a little nook that comes out because of the other side, um, we, we shortened it. And of course, that's where I, I have some of my, my shoes and I may have a shoe problem. Again, I like to collect things. I like to collect pretty things and, and wear pretty things. And I know if I, if I see them, then, then I'll use them. So now you are in our bedroom and um, it's a place obviously where we sleep and relax. Um, we're lucky that it has a fabulous fireplace. You can see the Chicago brick um, that was in the den. Um, this room was actually, um, for the original owners, um, it was a playroom. So this was a playroom, there's a fireplace. It was a place where the, the children would play. There was actually a closet in the corner that connected to the other room. Um, we sealed that up. There was a closet, um, a little jib door where, where the alcohol was kept, um, where I think people were having fun. So we decided to seal that off so that we could cover the walls. Um, it's a fun room. It's, it's, you know, we put some mirrors in here um, to, to make the room brighter. 
and it's a space where really the ceiling is is everything. So it's it's just a very bright, open, airy um, feel. What was a playroom, we turned into a master bedroom. Um, the light fixture, I really struggled to find a light that would work for this room in this space with the scale. Um, and I was lucky to, to find, I went to actually to a resale shop um, here in Dallas called Genesis Woman Shelter. And that was sitting there and I think it was $95. And I thought it was just the right um, size, scale. It was perfect for the house. Um, so again, it's, it doesn't, everything doesn't have to be high end. You can get things from resale shops. You can take things um, from parents or things that are passed down, get some new things. There's lots of fun things that just give it a lot of dimension and, and feel. Um, the fabric is a Pierre Frey and try to keep it consistent throughout the room. So this is my fourth grade daughter's room and she was you know, too young to be able to decorate it when we moved in. I worked with Shelly on this room and we decided we wanted to make it really sweet. Um, and so we, we picked out a fabric from Benison in New York and we actually, um, we put it on the walls and it's upholstered. Um, so it's a, they're upholstered sort of cushy walls. Um, I just thought it was just a really pretty sweet print that can um, stay with somebody at a very young age, but also could be a very pretty guest bedroom. Um, and so we made the the canopy bed for her so that she was, you know, feel very sort of cozy in here. And some of the architectural elements you can see here, um, there's a, a slanted sort of wall behind that we, that we hid with the bed. We've got some really sweet prints from Inslee that I actually just had framed um, and put on the walls. So again, there's details that come together over years and years. And um, I just thought they were fabulous looking and are, are really a stunner. Um, again, just a, a simple sisal rug on the floor and because um, it really doesn't need more. When you have, you know, these walls, you, you want to keep it, you want to keep it very simple. Um, she has a pine chest of drawers that were, um, that were mine growing up and antique mirror. Um, there's an armoire here that she just throws stuff in that was in my sister's room growing up. So again, I like to incorporate things that um, are from um, my house growing up, but then, you know, also get like a little table like that to make it a little bit more casual, give her a reading area um, and, and make it a little bit fun and young for her. So this is my older daughter's bedroom. And I'll be honest, I'm um, starting to come in here when um, somebody snores because I love this room. I, I feel like I'm in sleeping on a sofa. So again, you're gonna see more cushy walls. There's, there's fabric on the walls. It's a fabulous Schumacher print um, and, and simple sisal rug. Shelly helped me with this room as well. Um, I got, I've had this little chair for a long time, just got some blue and white buffalo check. I love old chairs and you can always reupholster them and change the look of a room. Um, a mirror that was my, um, my in my grandmother's house. Um, I actually just got this chest for the room because we did have a, like a bungalow five one, which was fabulous, but it was a little bit modern. And I saw this and I thought it was the sweetest thing and it could hold the world. Um, it was a better size um, for the wall, better scale. So I got that at an antique dealer here in Dallas. So I'm always sort of on the hunt, looking for things. That's my, that's my hobby. Um, and you can see again in, um, for my older daughter, the canopy bed again, it's really cozy. Um, this became a place of great comfort during COVID. This room has seen, um, you know, just a lot of usage <laughs> during COVID and, and with the teenager. And she's actually lucky enough because she has a um, dressing room that's attached with this bedroom as well. And we kept a lot of the original elements like a 70s mirror, which I, I wanna show you as well. So my older daughter got lucky in that this was the former master dressing room and bath and um, she annexed it as part of her room. So it's, um, this is all the original closets and hardware um, from the previous owners and even the dressing table. We just put a new piece of marble on it and you can see this fabulous <laughs> mirror that's like a Hollywood style mirror and um, I thought it has to be kept. It's just too good. And she loves it and she has spent a lot of time here doing makeup and, and having fun. And my younger daughter now I find is in here quite a bit coming in to take things um, or use the space or take t-shirts or things that um, were not taken to college. 
um, but just great drawer space. I mean, all these were built in, made for the previous owners. There's four large closets that, that go to the bathroom. And I told my daughter, there's unfortunately, you're only going to go downhill from here. Um, so you're probably going to be, you know, you're going to a college dorm, which is, you know, smaller than the size of this room. Um, but she's doing just fine and everyone adapts to the space that they have. So this is a solarium. It was formerly um, a garden room where it had sprinklers and we converted it because it really did not make sense and I don't have a green thumb. And we thought, let's use this space for entertaining, for um, eating, for playing cards. Um, we use it, it has actually a lot of purposes. It was actually mini school uh, during COVID for my second grader at the time. Um, and we had six girls in here with a teacher and we were running school here. So um, it's a great space. Um, there's a fabulous Julie Neal light, um, white plaster light. And um, we've got, you, you can just see it gives you like a great view to the yard. And we really did the um, landscape, um, landscaping around this room in particular. Oh, the dog that you just saw, that's Louie, um, the first dog I've had in my life. And this is actually his room probably. He sleeps out here. He really likes it out here. This is a dog bed, um, which is fabulous. It's an India Amory um, print that she, she works with a friend who makes these fabulous baskets. And I thought it was cute. And he hangs here and likes to sleep here. Um, the fountain was here, the, the line fountain. So we kept that, we painted everything white. Um, just wanted to you know, really clean it up, freshen it. There's a planting area over there. Um, and we actually kept it. So that was the original planting area. And I just put a lot of the blue and white vases and everything and, and tucked it away there. It actually becomes a great buffet when we have dinner parties or um, if we have any luncheons in here. Um, we did some black and white uh, marble on the floor to sort of to dress it up. And um, there's a lot of usages for this, um, for this room. And it's, our, it's probably one of our favorites in the house because it's just so bright, it's cheerful. Um, and it's a great passageway to go in the morning to, to the garage. We're also outside to the pool, which is where we'll go right now. Um, we'll talk about the pool and how we redesigned um, the backyard. We completely scraped it and also put in a pool house. So now we're in the backyard. Um, we completely scraped the space. There was a winding pool and I wanted to have a, um, a rectangle pool. And um, the landscape architect that we worked with um, he actually recommended that, you know, in an ode to my heritage, we do Greek tile around the pool. Um, so we've got the Greek tile there, which is, which is fun. Um, we just did in, in Texas, you really can't do a lot with a lot of different plants. Boxwoods actually work really well. They're hardy. They can take the heat. They can also withstand the cold. Um, so you see a lot of boxwoods and we just really made it a green space. Um, and use the Chicago brick that you can see to tie it into um, the fireplaces. Um, we made an eating area. We do like to grill, we do like to entertain. Um, so we put in an eating area and a grill area and um, got some uh, table and chairs um, that were vintage um, in Florida. And so again, just wanted to make it like a bright, um, cheerful, inviting space where we could entertain and people could feel comfortable. Um, then we, we added on the pool house and we're really thoughtful and um, wanted to make sure that the brick was mat matched the original home. Um, and you can see there's a, some of the Greek detailing, um, Greek key detailing that's in the um, framework of the original home. And we're, you can see up here with the, the curtain treatments, the Greek key pattern as well. So in the pool house, we just wanted it to be light, airy, um, and an opportunity to be able to, to watch people in the pool, but also a place to get away from the sun. Um, so we made this covered space and really made it just another outdoor living space. Um, so again, you can see the mirror. I used like an old um, Chippendale mirror, painted it a, a high gloss white because it was the right scale for the room. These chairs, I actually keep them out here for most of the year um, because it's year round and it has like a, a faux sort of like ostrich pink um, detailing. These were in my mom's house. So wanted to make that part of the room and then went down and got a vintage set of um, furniture um, from one of my favorite stores down there, Palm Beach Regency, painted um, like fix and read, um, painted it all a high gloss white to really make it young, fun, fresh, and give it an old feel. So it matched the feel and the age of the home. Um, we put in a little bar just to make it fun. And again, like to have multiple entertaining areas. Um, so we put a bar out here so we could entertain, have a fridge, 
You had drinks for the kids because they need it because it's warm. Home means comfort, relaxation, um, my children, and being surrounded by things that I grew up with that remind me of my mother, um, my family, and my upbringing. And that gives me comfort. Um, so being around those things that were, were passed down from my grandmother to my mother to me with my children around, that's what home means to me. That, that gives me comfort. Hi, Homeworthy. I'm Javier. Welcome to my Dallas, Texas home. Coming in. Hello, I'm Javier Burkle. Uh, welcome to my house here in Dallas, Texas. I'm an interior designer and I can't wait to show you my home. Um, a little bit about my background. I grew up in Mexico City. Um, I went to college here and then, then I actually went to work for Neiman Marcus in their buying office. After that, I decided to transition back into a little bit more creative, which was through Ralph Lauren. Um, I started working in their home department. I was there for a couple of years and they were the ones that actually pushed me to start my own company and to kind of help them from an outside with visual and merchandising. Um, so that was six years ago when I started my own company and everything kind of just changed from there. So office is now based in the house and I have a couple employees that helped me with the projects that we're working on. So this home is a 1937 uh, cottage uh, bungalow. Um, it's kind of like an English inspired house that we wanted to bring back to its original style and aesthetics. So this house is actually completely different than when we bought it. We had to switch quite a bit of things and update a lot of it. Uh, one of the original things in the house is of course all the stone around it outside and then the floors. Other than that, everything else has been updated and changed. So this is our living room. Um, this is kind of like a place where we welcome our friends to have a cocktail before we go to dinner. This is kind of like the cozy place where we're during the holidays, we have our Christmas tree, where we exchange gifts, where we have our fireplace on. Um, this is actually maybe the third time we've remodeled this room. Second time we adopted our new puppy that destroyed our couches. So after that, I found this painting that kind of gave me the full inspiration for the room. I love the combination of the navy with the rust with um, kind of like a little bit of a masculine look to it, adding a little bit of fun color. So that was kind of like the first piece that I picked for this rendition of the living room. Um, I love that this is kind of like an easy conversation room. We don't, we want to make sure that everyone feels comfortable. There's stools that you can pull out if you want to just come and sit. Um, the fireplace is original and we wanted to keep a couple of things original to the house. We also raised the ceiling in this room in this last renovation, which made it feel a lot different than the nine foot ceilings. So that was a huge change because I was obsessed with this light and this light needed to make it home. So this is a Ralph Lauren chandelier. Um, and I love the combination with the brass and the leather. It gives it kind of like a masculine but old school look to the room. Clearly working at Ralph Lauren kind of influenced a lot of my look. All that combination of like, uh, metals with leather with kind of like a European international look also kind of a little bit of American and masculine kind of like influenced in every single room um, I love it that feels lived it doesn't need to feel like it's a gallery or like a show house it's kind of like a lived room where you want to be comfortable that's why I want my guests to feel and also as when we're just around and we're just by the fireplace or just reading having a drink um, it just needs to be lived and comfortable so this is actually a pair of chests that I found from Scout Design. I told them that if they could find a place, this would be it. Um, I love the storage, but I also love kind of like the combination of the stone with a little bit of a vintage wood. Um, again, since we kept kind of like the look of the house, I wanted to bring some of the vintage pieces that give it a little bit more original character. I clearly like some layers. So there's always books and trays and like the layers of like different items. Again, every single piece in the house has a little bit of history. This came from a trip to Turkey. This was drawn by my grandmother. She was an art, she is an artist. Um, just every single thing has a little bit of a story during our travels or our family. Um, that kind of makes it a little bit more special. That is an unbelievable piece of art. Thanks. She is very, very creative and she's super talented. That is one of, I think, five pieces that I own of hers. And 
they're kind of like my most precious pieces that I would love to save forever. So, so this actually is a, another Ralph Lauren piece that I actually bought a couple years ago from an estate sale. Um, it actually holds my favorite book in the house. This was my grandfather's original drawings of the Mexican cathedral. Um, it was given to me by my grandmother. She knew that I was going into design and architecture. So this was kind of like her, you can do it. This is in your blood, go for it kind of thing. It's kind of like one of my favorite pieces and it's super special. Um, the rest, as you can tell, is all layers. And of course, there's always my turtle shells. <laughs> I love a turtle shell theme. You'll see them throughout the house. There's quite a bit of them. They come everywhere. And I love kind of like the story of like the shell is kind of like different for every single one, but also it's kind of like, okay, that one's someone's home. I love thinking of someone's like home as something special and unique. So that's kind of like a unique for that one turtle. So this is the original mantle from the house. We actually just lacquered it and changed the tile to give it a little bit of an updated look. We love the scale and it kind of gives the height of the ceiling still even more of an impact when you walk in. Um, I love lacquering things in black. I feel like it just gives you kind of like a new air of fresh air. Um, and it just feels a lot more like updated, but at the same time, it doesn't feel like it lost its character. I don't have the best green thumb, but I love having plants around. So I love changing it out and having as many plants around. I feel like it just gives the room a lot of life and a lot of like uh, color, just that kind of changes seasonally. Um, that's actually a plan that was given to, by one of our best friends on our first trip to Mexico City together. And it's actually the plan that survived the longest, which is crossing my fingers will still be there for a while. So How old is it? Uh, I'm going to say maybe like four and a half years old. And uh, it's actually a plan that's actually original to Mexico City. So that's why they were like, thanks for taking us to Mexico and showing us your home. Want to bring a little bit of Mexico to your house. Keep it alive kind of thing. And, it's been there. It's still there. Okay, so this is actually, we call her Monique. I've had her for a couple, like she's moved with me a couple times. I bought her at the Saks Fifth Avenue closing here in Dallas. Uh, it was kind of like their closing sale. Everyone was buying fixtures. And of course I ended up buying a gigantic picture. We call her Monique because that was actually my roommate at the time. And she kind of looked like her. So we kept saying to all of our guests that that was her. So she's moved with us. It's one of my favorite pieces. I love the scale. I feel like when you buy bigger art and like smaller rooms, it just makes the room big, feel bigger and a little bit more special. So that's a fun piece that will move with me again. So we had been looking for a home in this neighborhood for a couple of years. Uh, we drove up and down these streets every weekend trying to figure out what the best house was gonna be. Uh, and this actually came as a hit pocket, which was that it was not in the market, but it was coming up. So we came to see it the first day that it came out and we knew exactly that this was the project that we wanted to take. So the house was in good condition as in like the structure was actually very strong still. Um, other than that, electric had to be changed, plumbing had to be updated, windows had to be completely switched out. So it had a good bones that just needed a lot of love. Welcome to the dining room. This is actually one of my favorite rooms in the house. Love hosting dinner parties. I want people to be comfortable and have the most fun time having conversations. Uh, this room, I wanted to actually keep it a little cozy. So we didn't raise the ceiling in here. We wanted to make it still look like super moody and dark, um, candle lit whenever we're doing our dinner parties. Um, this is actually one of my most, um, like one of the most special walls in the house. I love layering the grass cloth with all these paintings that have a little meaning um, and different history to it. So one of my favorite things is actually this golden egg. Um, this is actually the centerpiece for our golden egg dinner party. It actually holds your flatware and we have a different theme every month for our golden egg. So it sits six, everyone has to bring a different course and we change it every month. So for example, for September, it's Mexican independence. So we do Mexican theme food. For November, we do a Thanksgiving dinner. For December, we'll do a little Christmas. But we change it up every month and it's always the same group of people. The golden egg is always the centerpiece and I just do the flower arrangements and the candle depending on the theme. My favorite drink is tequila and soda. So clearly this is the tequila mezcal side. That is what we mix every weekend with just a little Topo Chico, not even lime or lemon, just straight up. Uh, and this is kind of like for the rest of the people that come over. These are actually tequilas too, but clearly that's the influence that we like serving. Um, 
this is just an easy bar. I love having the bar in the dining room so that when you're like having dinner, we can just serve straight. You don't have to get up to go to the kitchen. Um, there's a couple pieces that are kind of meaningful. This actually came from my partner, Mason. He's had that piece for a long time. And I thought it was kind of like fun with a question theme, Ralph Lauren look. Um, I also love monkeys, as I've mentioned. So having a little monkey in every room is kind of like a little special and kind of fun to just have it just peeking and having a little cigarette while you're having dinner. Um, the ceiling in this room is actually one of my favorite things. Uh, this was painted by Ashley Braithwaite. Uh, she used 18 pencils to do it. Uh, and it's kind of fun because as you walk around, when you walk in, you see kind of one side of the clouds, but when you go to the other side, it kind of like changes. And at night, it kind of glows a little different. So it's a really fun effect that she created. It's all pencil lines that she worked on. Yeah, she was here for almost two weeks, just doing little lines all over the ceiling. She had to get a really good massage after. <laughs> But it's a super fun effect. I feel like people, when you're sitting at the table, it's kind of fun to look up and just look at the clouds. My favorite thing about the room is that we could fit a round table. I love having a round table because it's just like so easy for conversation. When it's a long table, I feel like communication gets a little lost between the two sides. With this, it's just one single table, one single round. There's no head of the table or special seats other than the couch. The couch is definitely a little more comfortable than the seats, but still, it's still a round table, so everyone has the same opportunity to have a conversation. And you can hear each other. Um, anytime that I can do a round table at a project, that's what I like pushing for. I think dark colors on the wall is actually kind of like a lost myth that if it's dark, the room is going to feel smaller. Um, yes, it's going to make it moodier, but it's not going to make it feel the size different. It's actually all about the lighting. So even painting your walls or doing a gra uh, black grass cloth like this room, like it actually makes it even kind of go a little bit deeper out. And it's just kind of like the art kind of floating, which makes it even bigger. Um, it's all about the lighting and like, of course, the look that you're wanting to go for. For this room, I would definitely wanted to create it a little bit moodier and darker and like where you feel a little bit more comfortable. That is actually a painting of the French Revolution. My grandmother's French. So when I found this at an antique shop, I was like, I need to take that and that should go somewhere else special. Uh, it actually hang in my powder bathroom in my last place for the longest time. And people had the longest conversations about like the nicest piece in my house be in the powder bath. And now of course it's in the dining room. It's kind of like everyone's having a dinner at this place. It's kind of connection with the dining area. Uh, it was just kind of fun to kind of bring some of the French inspiration from like a family, you know, style heirloom kind of thing so and it's right next to the lobster right next to the french lobster <laughs> which is i found that around to last year uh one of my best friends and i went together and he was obsessed with the lobster and i was like i'm just gonna buy it because i don't know it's just fun but it actually fit perfect in the dining room i was like perfect kind of like dinner theme so and it's a fun pop of color that i was not expecting it was going to work in this room those pieces of art are always like some people wanted to design a room around their piece of art so people kind of like, oh, the hope said like design a room and then the art will find its place. This is kind of like one of those that it was like the last piece that found its little corner and kind of added a little color. Another one of my favorite collections is uh, these spies. They were actually a gift from a client. Uh, they're the Vanity Fair spies. Each one is uh, a different gentleman and it actually has the history in the back of what they did or what their profession was. Uh, there's a lot of different versions of them these were actually a gift and they're one of my favorite pieces um i love that they each one is kind of looking a different way it kind of creates a little bit of a different mood and like they're either staring at you at the table or they're like talking about you kind of like behind your back kind of thing so those are kind of fun pieces um i love doing the sofa in the dining room i feel like it's kind of like a special place but also i kind of wanted to add a different fabric and a different shape that it didn't just feel like a collection of chairs i kind of like adding that extra like feeling and like um color just to make it a little bit different and not just like a you bought the set uh, you know as this eight chairs and that's all matching ah, i call myself a collected maximalist so we love layers we love having a lot of items that have stories uh, we love traveling so every time that we go somewhere new we try to bring something that kind of reminds us of our trips um, we also love combining our home heirlooms, so every single piece that has something 
from our family that means something, we put it out just to like kind of remind us of where we come from. Okay, so this is the kitchen. This is one of the biggest transformations in the house. Uh, this was actually done a couple years after we moved in because I just wanted to understand what the layout and the functionality of the kitchen needed to be. Um, mainly, the, um, we wanted to center the stove and make the windows kind of like focal points. The stove used to be to the side, the sink used to be kind of like in an awkward position. So we actually made the windows bigger, created a little sink area, center the stove and make this tile and built in. It's kind of like the focal point. Um, with the kitchen, again, I didn't want it to look just like a brand new kitchen. I still wanted to bring some of the character of the original house. So that's why I wanted to do kind of like a different shape on the built-ins, not just kind of like all squared out and add a little bit of like natural tones with the brass suit for it to look like it belonged to the original house. This is kind of like a little island. This kitchen, as much as it would be fun to cook in it, it's actually just for prepping and making making drinks. Um, but we, as you know, the center of the house is always the kitchen. So we love having our friends just kind of like coming around and we want it to be a little bit bigger so that people just like surround the island and hang out while we're just prepping the catering food. <laughs> Um, originally this side was actually just pantry slash, um, washer and dryer. And we wanted to incorporate this kind of like as part of the kitchen. So kind of give it a little bit more of an easier flow with the hallway. So speaking of catering, we host the Friendsgiving once a year with about 30 people. Almost every single piece of that, um, catering is actually cooked by someone else. We don't usually do anything. Um, but same with the holidays, we throw a Christmas party and we do chicken fingers from Cane's. If you're from Texas or Mississippi, you'll understand Cane's is the best chicken with the cane sauce. And we'll just do towers of Cane's chicken here in the uh, island, in the kitchen and in the office. So people can kind of walk around and like, um, have food as they're drinking and enjoying the carolers. All the sauces are in, um, gravy boats. To kind of dress it up, you still need to like make it special during the holidays. So gravy boats and silver platters, everything served to the nines just to make it look a little more holiday friendly and special. Another one of my favorite things is actually having the bigger windows and be able to look out of the pool in the renovated backyard. Um, when we're having a party, it's kind of fun to see if anyone needs drinks or if we need to like be bringing anything out just to kind of like enjoy the view. We'll go see the bedrooms, but we'll go to the backyard in a little bit. The lighting is actually super special. It came from a French elementary school. This antique dealer in McKinney found it. They had a set of three. I wish I could have fit all three, but there's only space for one and it's one of my favorite things in the house. So even though I don't like to cook, I love hosting dinner parties. So this is the glassware collection to so setting up different themes for our dinner parties. And this is all the china and um, plates for all the times that we have people over for dinner. So you have many themes. Yes, I mean, we host at least one dinner party a month and I don't think I've set the same table twice. Um, these actually came from Target. I'm obsessed with them and this is actually our next dinner party theme. Uh, we're gonna do a Mexican Dia de los Muertos idea. So this is gonna go with all the terracotta colors. Super excited about the shape. I thought it was super different. So same as high and low, I love combining all the new. So this is my grandmother's china and I love combining with kind of updated um, chargers or glassware. It's kind of fun to have a different combination of patterns on your table. So that's kind of fun to bring a little bit of history with some of the new, even a target find. So before we go into the bedroom, this is kind of like the connection between the living, dining area, and the bedroom side. This is our hallway, which is kind of like our catch-all bookcases, but also every single thing in it has a little bit of a meaning. Um, for example, this is a uh, painting that I got made of our dogs. It's a little sketch made by this artist here in Dallas, kind of fun. Um, that is my grandmother's silver set that I love having, just so I kind of look at it. Um, and think of like fun times with her having little tea in her house. Um, of course, I love collecting coffee table books and it gives me kind of like a color organization um, attack to be able to like add more books in here. Um, 
Each book, of course, kind of like inspiration, and most of them are interior design. But of course, fashion kind of like goes but hand in hand with all that. So, a um, couple other pieces. Um, again, love Ralph Lauren. So, a little Ralph Lauren's call that when I was working there was kind of like my goodbye gift when I left the company. Love a blue and white jar. I feel like that's always timeless and it kind of goes in every single shelf. This is actually a set of six. It was supposed to be maybe at the pharmacy, and each one had a different. Uh, ingredient, so it's kind of fun because I was able to split them and there's a couple of them hidden in other bookcases. Um, another one of my favorite items are these tiny little hands. Of course, it's a miniature version, but this is a mold to making gloves. Not the fancy kind, just kind of like the plastic, like wash your dishes, latex, like not your, your, your everyday one, not your special one. So I love those little quirky little moments to kind of layer in your bookcases and have a little story. Welcome to the bedroom. This is the primary bedroom of the house. Um, this is kind of like our cozy, more intimate, kind of like more comfortable room in the house. Uh, I wanted to make it very masculine with a lot of textures and more uh, of a warmer space. Um, we added the texture in the ceiling. I call the ceiling the fifth wall of a room. It's kind of fun to add a little bit of a different impact just to kind of open the space and not just have one giant white wall that doesn't have that much of a interest to the eye. Um, I love layering different colors and patterns on a bed. Um, I think the more texture and um, interest that you can put on a bed, it's kind of like more inviting and definitely more comfortable. There's a lot of inspiration from Ralph Lauren, of course. I love doing kind of like the same Ralph Lauren kind of gallery walls with collecting of different pieces, different eras, adding a little bit of color. Um, I love adding reading lights kind of just at night when you're just wanting like a little bit of a mood light. Um, and of course, I love adding the bamboo shade so you don't have to be closing your curtains every single time. Um, it just makes it a little easier and adds a little bit more of like a natural texture to it as well. Yeah, there's different space in the room. I mean, this is definitely where I kind of sit in the morning and kind of just check my email, check my mail, kind of get some work done. This kind of like when we're watching TV, it's kind of nice to just be able to sit and not just be on the bed and laying down. That's kind of like a corner. That's kind of just cozy for like a reading nook. Uh, kind of nice with the natural light from the doors and low reading light. Um, I like creating different moments in every room, different stations. I kind of you move around where it's not just all focused on the bed. I can't sleep without a fan, so we definitely had to make it make it a little bit special. Um, I always make fun of my clients that they say we need a fan in the bedroom, but at the same time, I'm one of those people. Uh, in Texas, you definitely need it. If we lose power and we don't have a, have a fan, you're gonna have to move out of your house. So that is a must in a bedroom. Okay, this dresser is a vintage Bloomingdale's um, design. Uh, it is supposed to look like it's a turtle shell, but it's actually all bamboo that has been treated to look like the effect of a turtle shell. So clearly I was going to be obsessed with it. Um, of course, it's great storage and I just love layering it surrounding the TV so the TV is not just the focal point. Even setting the lamp kind of like a little bit in front of it kind of makes it like a little bit more layered and not just what you look at when you first look at the wall. Um, I think lampshades are one of the most important things in a room. It's kind of like another white canvas that should be interesting and texturized and add a little bit of color. So most of the lampshades in the house or at clients' houses, I like doing something interesting with it. Originally, this was a window. So I was able to find these vintage doors that just, we just needed to cut the stone out, stone that we actually used to do the little step that takes us out to the pool. Welcome to the backyard. So this was actually a year project. We had a little issue with some trees that were growing back here when we originally bought the house. That was the original driveway to the garage. And that back area was kind of like just the mist area. So we had to take all these trees out, clean it all up. And that's when we decided that we need to do different areas in the backyard. So this is off of the primary, which is kind of like where we laid out, like lay in the morning and kind of like check our mail, kind of like have a little bit of a get the day started moment. And this is actually our entertaining area. We love having people over to the pool and then grilling and like just enjoying the fireplace. Um, 
It's not a huge size, but it's kind of fun because this is what we call our drinking pool. It has a bench all around. So we're not going to be doing laps. We're actually just going to be relaxing and sitting around. So the inspiration for the backyard area is actually bringing a little bit of a, my Me Mexican heritage. I love kind of like how all the properties in Mexico and the Haciendas have like the big stone walls, um, but also it kind of creates like a living area. It's not just like a backyard for certain activities. We actually want to create like a full living space where you can have pretty much your entire life out here. So there's like your dining and you're sitting and like you're hanging out. There's not just specific activities that you come and do out. It's kind of like year round, sit by the fire or like have a dinner party. Um, so that was kind of like the main inspiration. I love also the idea of like the black and white to kind of keep it consistent with the house. Um, so we love the idea of like painting all the stone white to make it a little bit cleaner and just making the pop of black and like the built in pergola and some of the furniture. So the space when we first bought the house is actually just grass pretty much in this area where the pool is. Everything else was pretty bad looking, not very healthy trees that we actually had to take care of. And at some points they were actually not able to survive. So we decided to take everything down and just make it a little bit more open and more of like a clean space. Now, let me show you one of my favorite things. When we built the pool, I always said that I wanted to have an outdoor shower. So we were able to add it to this side of the house, kind of giving us a little bit of a privacy and a little bit of an oasis back here. Actually, I come here a lot, way more than my regular shower. So it's kind of nice to have the option. Uh, with the Texas heat, it's kind of nice also after the pool to come and take a cold shower after you've been in the pool and like just go to dinner right after. So it's kind of nice to have the option and. It's an outdoor shower, just being outside is kind of like the nicest thing to have. So this was actually a gift from one of our best friends. They came from uh, New Mexico. They're just dried chilies. It's super fun because like as the summers change, like as the weather keeps changing, the chilies keep changing colors. Um, I don't know if at some point we might use it to make some salsa or something, but they're kind of a fun little texture addition to just hang in the shower. So now we're going to the office. This actually used to be the original detached garage to the house. Uh, so we decided to finish it out and have a working space slash presentation room for, to have our clients in. So again, this is another room that we decided to raise the ceiling to make it a little more spacious, add a little window, add a lot of glass doors, and we had a little uh, bathroom in this room as well. I know this space, we actually wanted to make it a little bit more neutral, a little bit less moody and dark just to feel a little bit more welcoming and a little bit more of a creative space it's easier for us to have a presentation without having all these distractions of like moody and like it's easier to see the colors and like see all the textures that we're showing our clients so this is kind of like where we do a lot of presentations this is our communal desk so it's kind of like a creative space where we all kind of like come up with ideas and concepts for our projects i feel like i've been able to combine my mexican heritage with my american education and creating a very collected and like, I would say maybe like a little international look, which kind of helps differentiate and kind of like create a little bit of a Mexican spice to my um, aesthetics. My favorite thing about this home, it's kind of hard to pick just one, but I kind of love that it has some history and that we were able to restore it to its original like um, value and like everything is kind of like, looks new but it, nothing changed to what it actually looked almost 100 years ago um i love the little spaces i love having different rooms for different occasions um i don't mind an open concept home but i love being able to host people in different parts of the house with different feelings so if we're in this room it's kind of fun to have a drink and make it cozy and have the fire on and then when the dinner is ready we move into the dining room and have more of like a conversation sit down um, drinks and just spend the rest of the evening. So that's kind of special about the home. This is the primary bathroom. This is the room that we spent quite a bit of time in the morning. And we had this mural made by one of our local friends, artist, her name is Ashley Braithwaite. She spent five weeks here working on all the details. And she, I love that she hid kind of a couple little things throughout the walls. For example, this is my favorite tequila. She put on my little bench on my side. She did like little squirrel. Um, and then on this side, this is my initial and my partner's initials on the tree. Um, this is my family crest. 
So it's kind of fun that as we kind of like lived in it, we found a lot of other different like things that she hid in there, which is kind of really fun. Um, something that I love doing is turning pieces of furniture into vanities. So they already have a little bit of character and it do doesn't look just like a built-in. These are actually pieces that I found a couple years ago that I transformed into vanities. Um, the only thing that you need to do is kind of like rework the drawers to make sure that all the plumbing works with your um, sinks and faucets. Um, again, I wanted to go back to the original look of the house. So that's why we decided to do the two faucets, one cold, one hot, instead of like doing just like the traditional um, two sides. Going to this side, the original shower tub water closet area was completely different so i decided to open it all up and create just one wet area so we have his and his showers with the tub in the middle it used to be a shower a tub and then the water closet on this side so we just wanted to create just one big area kind of like make it a little bit more interesting and a little bit more spacious and symmetric with the rest of the bathroom it's actually pretty nice it's kind of nice also that you don't have to rush someone to be able to get into the shower you can take your time and you know, to your own schedule in the morning. Welcome to the closet. This used to be my office, but since I needed a little bit more storage, we have to move the office to the garage and move my closet in here. I think a dressing was one of the most important rooms in the house. I feel like that's where you get inspired to like what you're gonna look like for the day. Like, uh, and one of my favorite things is changing my shoes. Clearly I have a little bit of a problem with smoking slippers. Uh, I have a collection of smoking slippers and sabas, which are some of the most comfortable shoes. And I love that that's kind of like the focal point whenever I need to get dressed. Um, some of my favorite things in this room are actually the lights. Those are Timothy Alton. I love the theme of like a top hat for like a closet. It actually kind of gives you good light, but also it's kind of like a fun conversation and little work of art sculpture looking. Um, I love doing everything by color and kind of like changing it by season. So we did all the hanging and all the sweaters just on top. It's a disorganized, it's a very organized mess. I know where everything is, although it looks like there's a lot going on in here. So I'm clearly a collector and I love a little maximalist. So this is the collection of ties. I barely wear a tie, it's only if it's necessary. And there's a little moment where it's just like some of my most special intimate pieces. Um, that is a Birkin bag that my mom used to carry. She didn't like it and it was a little bit too heavy for her. So she gave it to me so I could frame it and keep it in my closet. Um, this is actually one of my other favorite pieces. This actually came from the original Neiman Marcus downtown. Um, and I feel like it's super special. It was in the dressing room in one of the biggest stores in the country. And I was able to get one of the pieces here. These are my favorite stubs. I feel like it kind of talks about like my everyday today. They're like paint splattered, which is exactly how I feel every single day after work. Um, I feel like when I wear them, I feel like I'm already like ready to go for the day and get to the projects and get the paint going. Welcome to the den. This is where we watch our TV and hang out in like Sunday afternoons. Um, this room actually was all inspired by the painting um, hanging by the uh, window. That's actually my grandmother's self portrait. Uh, that was one of her tests when she was graduating from art school. So when she gifted me that, I kind of wanted to create a room around those colors and that's why this room turned out to be navy and like browns. Um, this is just kind of like a cozy room that we love just to hang out. Again, I love adding a little detail on the ceiling just to make it a little um, more interesting. This is a wallpaper that looks like fabric, um, but it gives you that linen denim look. So something that I love doing is actually finding vintage pieces, either in the art or in pieces of furniture. Uh, that side table, for example, came from my estate sale a couple blocks away, and it's one of my favorite pieces. Um, this dresser came from um, Brown Top a couple years ago, and I paid I think, $200, and it just gives it so much character, and it feels like it kind of brings everything together. Same with the art. There's several pieces that is just kind of like the fun story of where I found it either at a vintage shop or at a state sale, it's kind of fun to layer those pieces with some of the new things that you find, um, just to create that balance. What does the word home mean to you? Um, that's your safe place. That's where you keep your most valuable things, of course, and where you should be like the most comfortable. Um, and also it's kind of like the place that you welcome people to get to know you a little better. This is kind of like your most intimate place that you open up to other people. Happy 
it's Mally Skog. Sorry, I had to kick the door. It's got all jammed with the humidity. This is my Palm Beach house, and I'd love you to come in and take a look around. I'm Mally Skog. We are in Palm Beach, Florida, the wonderful bubble that every 60-something couple has ended up in recently. I don't like it. I adore it. It's just the strangest thing. Um, I lived in Boston for many years and moved down here pre-COVID, and I just fell in love with this place. I don't know whether it's the warm sunshine or the greenery or the friendly people, the bike path, the beach walks. I mean, it's an ideal life for me. Oh, and the restaurants. Love the restaurants. I'm an interior designer. I have a small amount of good clients that I work with in the Cape and Boston um, is, and a few projects down here. But my career has really veered off into being um, a fabric and wallpaper designer. And actually just being a designer, I love inventing um, new things. And um, as my um, own fabric and wallpaper um, designs progressed, people started noticing me. And I've also uh, designed other things. I did a little um, furniture line for these this, these young friends of mine, Dal, which was so incredible and so difficult. Designing furniture is so difficult. Um, and ended up going to the Philippines and going to their factory. What I absolutely love is all the new adventures that come my way. Well, what happened was my poor hubby was just so bored of me complaining and being so gloomy about cold Boston winters um, that we came down and had a look for just a small house for holidays and weekends and it was going to be my treat. It actually, this house is my treat um, and I had made this list of everything that I thought would be just perfect, easy living, casual. Um, I wanted to put all my South African things in it. I wanted to be able to have overnight guests, but keep everything very informal. And we walked into this house first. And unfortunately, I'm a Capricorn and my hubby is a Libran. So we walked in and it was just, you know, staged pretty horribly. But it was everything that I wanted. And I was like, this is the one, I'll take it. Um, and my hubby made me drag through 16 other houses, big ones, small ones, bits of land, and I knew we'd end up here. <laughs> um, and basically, there was nothing that I would really, um, that I really hated. I mean, I don't love all the tiles in the bathrooms, but, you know, as an interior designer, I think you realize there are, bigger fish to fry. I mean, people get so stuck on small things. So um, I painted because I just love Farrow and Ball paint. And so um, I just painted the whole house in nice non-builders paint, changed the light fittings, and that was it. I mean, just moved in and put my footprint on it. <music> the little entrance hall to my lovely bungalow house. Um, the reason I bought the house and decided on the house, I just love the clean white tiles. I knew that I wanted a bench in here and I found this cheap and cheerful one and put this amazing fabric on it, which has since been discontinued. And of course, everyone asks me where it comes from. I love Vaughan, they are my favorite lights. And um, this little hall table I saw in London at Chelsea Harbour and had to have it. These are from a, I, whenever I 
do a launch or do a show house, I always keep the things that I buy because they're just little memories. This was from a little launch that I did for furniture. I love Yaya Kusama and um, always have, so I had to have some of her things. All the African baskets in this house have been bought in the tourist stores, which I spend my life in. Um, behind you are these incredible ceramic plates that I found this ceramicist that um, has this little shelf in this tourist store. He is so untrained, but I mean, they're, they're just absolutely brilliant. And they're like, you know, $25 each, but I love them. This is Cherish, my friend Anna Brockway. That's my Christmas present from Anna Brockway because who doesn't love green bars? And um, so this is my vibe that I was trying to put together. A little bit of vintage, a little bit of um, modern, and a little bit of Africa, which is what I am. Going through to the living room area. Um, I like this setup because it's good for parties because people can circulate and you can just um, put nibbles out on the table. I like to do really casual entertaining. Up here is my ode to Palm Beach and um, I'd love to squeeze some more parrots in but um, my husband's like enough with the parrots already. Um, I didn't want a I didn't want paintings on either side of the fireplace. So I found these incredible old Hollywood whatever they are. They look like water lily things. The vintage chairs, well antique chairs are from Cherish. My friend Anna again. I love supporting my girlfriends and their enterprises. And these amazing embroidered things are actually beer can tops that I bought in um, Cape Town and just I they were the first thing I bought for this house and you know it's interesting um, I just heard Ken Falk speak and he said he sees a movie in his brain of how things are going to be and it's very irritating for the people around you because I knew exactly what this house was going to look like and I knew that when you walked in the door those were going to be there on that wall. Um, it's just, it's my only superpower I have, basically. I love um, this brunch wick. I love old um, textile styles. These are actually pillows that I designed. This is um, my uh, interpretation of an ECAT. Um, Thrown over the back of the sofa is a new Kenty cloth that I just picked up in South Africa. Now this, I know not everyone would do with red and orange and yellow, but it looks perfect to my eye. Sorry. Um, that one I had from a show house. This one I had made. Um, this is um, from Lee Jofa. That fabric I designed for stout. And, um, you know, I just, I don't know why, but I like every, that one layer of color and pattern to um, just pull the whole room inside of itself with this quiet surround. It's my favorite kind of decorating. I must apologize, I haven't cleaned up this end of my table, even though I knew you guys were coming because I'm mid-process of recoloring um, a new collection for Stout. And also, I designed some um, things in South Africa. This is from a little pashmina that I bought at a pop-up. But this is what I'm so excited about. This um, candy cloth that I uh, painted in South Africa is going to be one of my new wovens. Um, I just need this mess around me just here so that I can sit down and choose an hour and just get into it again. I can't put my stuff away. Um, obsessed with shells, yes. Some I've picked up, some my friends give me that they've picked up. 
but um, it's just so hard when you walk past a beautiful shell on the beach. I can't not pick it up. These are wine coasters, housewarming presents, antiques from a friend. This um, I inherited from my mum, this little fat lady. Um, this um, is, what's her name again? Do you remember? She's very famous Connecticut Potter. Um, plants, and these were my, um, these hydrangeas were in my Valentine's uh, flowers, and I can't throw them away. So, I mean, I maybe they a little bit sort of meh, but I love them. So over in this crazy corner, um, I have been collecting um, antique uh, textiles for a long time. In London, they have this amazing um, antiques fair in Battersea, and this one deal, I just absolutely love the colors in this ECAT, and so turned it into um, a picture. And um, these little palm trees are made in Cape Town by some African beaders. A friend of mine started this collaborative for them. Um, I think it's called Boys on the Side of the Road. Anyway, I just think they're so sweet. And then, you know, supporting Amanda Lindroth, supporting Dunes and Duchess. Actually, this is a friend um, gave that to me, that um, Stacy Kunstel, who makes these beautiful um, candlesticks. So everything in my house, even though it looks so cluttered, is very meaningful. <laughs> it's all meaningful to me. Going through to the kitchen, um, it's a, an obvious new build, plain white kitchen. Not that spectacular, but I mean, I probably would have put a white kitchen in anyway. And the countertops are quite nice. I absolutely hated the backsplash, but it's amazing how you just get used to things. And also, I couldn't be bothered with all that mess. So, um, you know, I've made, I've made peace with it. And um, it's very functional, and um, we eat a lot at this counter. And then round this way is, um, it's easy to get outside um, for having breakfast on that little round table. These sofas were the only thing that I kept um, from the staging, the real estate staging. They were just exactly the right size. They're actually just junk. But you know what? It's fine. Um, I recovered them and just filled them with pillows that I love. This is my fabric. Actually, one of my most popular fabrics, Flora. And then I love buying these um, African fabrics. You can buy them in Chelsea Market. Um, what's it called? Chelsea Flea. My daughter and I go shopping there, and there's this East African guy, and I'm always, look at me, I'm always buying textiles from him. And he's just so sweet, and they make great pillows. So I just wanted to keep this side of the house easy breezy. I love these from Make Goods. And then always with my little vintage pieces. I don't know if you have ever been to the Elephant's Foot, but it is this antique um, shop, old fashioned antique shop on South Dixie, where they have a whole bunch of brown furniture. I just love it, and I found that foot bath in there. I love the ceilings. I like the fact that it is a blank canvas. It doesn't really say anything if you take all of my stuff out of it. It's just got this very easy, breezy, casual atmosphere. What do you think? And it's bright. And it's not stodgy at all. I mean, because Palm Beach can be very formal. And I think people see the clipped hedges and everything. And they think that life in Palm Beach is pretty formal. And the entertaining is formal. But I just love that this house hasn't got that atmosphere that you can just 
I, when I have parties, people are just all over the place and, you know, just put the, all the wine out on the patio outside. I like that just relaxed um, living. Let's just have a little look outside here. One of the reasons I just love this house was this deep closure. And um, you can fit a lot of furniture in it. We have breakfast out here and um, really um, when it's hot and stuffy we just put on the fans. And I, not all of these are indoor outdoor pillows. Um, these are Fanny Shorter. I absolutely love her fabrics and they're faded. And I don't mind that they faded. Um, but anyway, this is just a good place to sit in the morning, read the paper. And I'm sorry, it's a bit of a gloomy day today. But normally, the pool is just a little sparkling pool in the middle of our garden. Now I'm going to show you the grown-up part of the house down here, where we live. But um, just a quick stop at... I always say that this is exactly what the inside of my brain looks like. Um, all my little collections that I picked up in the antique stores and in South Africa over the years. Um, I was just in Paris last week at the Deco Art Show and I bought this ink. I'm obsessed with jugs for putting um, flowers in and I bought that in the Marché au Pousse on uh, La... It was the coldest I've ever been in my entire life. I also picked up this little um, Café au Lait, which are... You can't find them very easily. You know that the French used to have their coffee like that in the mornings, in the old days. I don't know if they still do it. Africa, um, more jugs. I, I went through a stage of loving art glass. I'm sort of over it now. And, um, oh, I picked up, this is going to the framers. Isn't that the most beautiful little oil painting that I bought in this dusty little shop in Paris? Um, so that's um, how I operate. If I see it and I love it, I go away and then I go all the way around and then end up buying it. So come down here. South Africa, a um, sweet artist that I like, and then, oh, his and her bathrooms, the secret to a happy marriage, plus, look at the one I get, it's ginormous, and um, literally, the only thing I had to do was change the light fittings. I did those um, little Aaron ones, in here I think they look quite jolly and um, unfortunately you can see absolutely everything in that light so this is our bedroom which is very peaceful and calm and um, actually my husband was my client in here and I know that he doesn't like a very busy bedroom so, um, and these are his favorite colors, blue and yellow. So uh, that was my little um, compromise for him to have this nice quiet, but I could still add some fun little touches. Um, I love this bench made by my friend, Stacy, Dunes and Duchess bench. Vaughan lamps copied by everyone but the Vaughan one is absolutely the nicest and then behind you um, Alex Mason who is a friend of mine and a fabric designer I bought those at one of her pop-up um, little things at um, in LA and she actually prints my wallpaper so I have all these lovely women enterprise network connections that I just love that about our community in our industry. These are from South Africa. You used to be able to pick up these sea urchins when I was young. Um, they were just scattered all over the beach. I bought those in a shop in South Africa and 
they're very brittle. I don't know how long they're going to last. But they just remind me of my childhood. I didn't actually pick up every single one of those. I have to admit. I think one of the most um, influential things for me was being born in South Africa and losing my dad when I was very young. My mum was very young. So I was in a very matriarchal household where um, we had to make do a lot. My mum was 32 years old when my dad died. So we were all team us. And so that has made me um, very fearless in life because when you've had that happened to you. I mean, somebody's sofa coming in in the wrong color is not a drama. Um, so being in South Africa, having this um, pull together thing, um, that's the most valuable asset for me because nothing really derails me. Um, and people think it's my energy or whatever but it's just the gift of um living in a family like that in the sunshine my you know i can make curtains i can cook i can i have been given this gift by the start in my life to tell you the truth now we're going into this little bedroom that i turned into my office because it's my space, I have felt that I could go absolutely crazy with my fabric and wallpaper. I don't think a normal person would put my blue Brimfield um, wallpaper with these curtains. This pattern is called Emmy and I designed it and named it after my mum. And um, when I showed her the strike off, she said, oh, well, actually, that's the nicest fabric that you've designed. So, you know, she put that out there straight away. Anyway, this is where I work. And um, I do my email, but also it's my escape hatch. And I love to have a day bed in my office. So I can close this door and um, grab my little mohair rug, plug in my a book, and um, no one is allowed to come beyond that door. I like to have a nice little nap in the afternoon, especially if I've had a busy week. And also, when the house is full, it's an extra bed um, for overflow guests. The dog absolutely loves her little doggy bed. When I designed my first collection for stout fabrics, they wanted me to buy some vintage pieces to cover. Um, and I was on South Dixie and I saw this dog bed, went straight in my car. And I don't know how she knows, but um, she knows that it's hers. And when I come in here, she is there having a little rest as well, her day bed. I used to think needlepoint was cheesy, but it's so interesting how um, everything old is new again. And I'm very influenced by my daughters, especially my New York daughter, who is just the ultimate grand millennial. And she started, um, loving needlepoint and actually I had done some needlepoint when I was pregnant with my kids and I was going to chuck these pillows out and she grabbed them they're in her apartment in New York so um uh, my friend who has a little online store to let me choose and that was my first favorite thing and no one likes the shady beach. It was very appropriate for Palm Beach. Um, Priscilla, um, no, Pamela Hofmeister is a Instagram friend that has turned out to be such an amazing painter. She's so famous now. We made friends on Instagram years and years ago. 
and I love her interiors. I have a few of them in my house. More African fabrics from the guy at Chelsea Flea. And what else? I bought that painting in South Africa when I was coming back the other day and I'm just haven't got round to going to the framers. So this is my daughter's room, um, the pink guest room. And um, I just absolutely love the headboard and this incredible um, fabric. I give this to my daughter because um, they, they're the naughty ones that um, smoke, the ones from London. So this is the smoking room. You can go up the side there. And um, I just, the Peter Dunham headboard is just very, very jolly and fun. Some of my fabrics are scattered around, but I don't do too much of that. I love everyone's fabric, so um, it's fine. I just layer it all in. This little painting I bought in Wellfleet. And um, when I'm in Cape Cod, my favorite thing to do is get in my car with my daughter and we just drive all over the place. And Wellfleet has got the most amazing little art galleries all along the main street. And you know what it's like when you're just walking along the road and you look through the window and you see a painting and actually the guy was there um, painting another painting, so we chatted. That late afternoon light that just made that house glow, it just, it touched me. So um, most of the things in my house have meaning. I don't like just buying things because they're the right color or the right size for a space. I think it's very important that you um, make these, make it, make it meaningful and right. And I think people can sense it when they're in your space. Home means that, um, actually home can be anywhere. It's, it's, it's very interesting. Um, when I go to South Africa and um, I go into my house in Plettenberg Bay, which I have not had not been in for three years, and I was very hesitant to go back, to tell you the honest truth, because my mum had died, and I just didn't know if I needed that in my life, because I'm so happy in Palm Beach, and I just didn't know whether I should open that channel again and reconfuse myself. But anyway, my hubby said, just keep an open mind, and let's just go out for the holidays and I walked into my house in Plett and I was so relieved because nobody had moved my stuff around and even though people had stayed there and we'd lent it to friends where this basket is on that book is home to me it's just this atmosphere that I like to create around myself this nest and it's probably from you know having to figure life out um, for myself from the age of 11 um, so that is just precious to me to just be in this atmosphere of what I have made and created for myself Hi Homeworthy, I'm Joanna. Welcome to our home in Connecticut. Come on in. Hi, I'm Joanna Buchanan and I have a business in home. I'm a designer and um, I design tabletop, home decor, and I especially love doing Christmas ornaments. I'm based in Wilton, Connecticut, which is a town that I had never heard of um, before we started looking for a house in Connecticut. 
Um, and my husband and I pulled up actually, and we fell in love with this house. It was completely derelict, overgrown. It's 18, early 18, I think it's 1816 or something it was built. Um, and it's got some newer extensions um, that were done in the 60s. And what I love about the house is that it's set in really beautiful gardens and it's sort of set on a hill. So from all the windows, you see greenery and you see nature from pretty much everywhere in the house. We did so much to this house and my husband is a contractor, so we both love the romance of a derelict uh, rundown um, place, but we also both, I think, have a very similar vision of what we think, what we know things can be. So when we first uh, saw this place, um, everything was really dark, weird blue carpet everywhere, the walls were navy, it was a very, very dark house. Um, and there was uh, wood, a lot, a lot of natural wood. And when we, when we saw it, we knew in both immediately what we wanted to do. We wanted it to feel like a garden inside and we wanted to paint everything white. My husband's a big, let's paint everything white. And I knew I wanted to really make it, um, I really wanted it to feel colorful and optimistic and modern. I didn't want it to feel a little bit sort of like an old English estate. I didn't want that feel. Um, and so we moved really quickly. Um, my husband's guys came in and, you know, within two weeks, pretty much floors were sanded, paint, blah, blah, blah. We'd ripped things out and changed things around. But fundamentally, the structure of the house stayed the same. Most of what we did was cosmetic. Well, new kitchen, new bathrooms, I guess that, yeah, there was a lot of work. But, um, and he said to me, the electrician's coming tomorrow. Have you picked your lights? And I was like, no. So I was running to open light stores, you know, nearby trying to find something. Um, so we moved quickly and that was, that was nice. So I was born in the Philippines. I grew up in Hong Kong. I went to school in England and then I moved to New York, worked in New York um, and also worked a lot in India as well, um, traveling to India multiple times for months on end. So I think I have such a global view of the world. I feel like all these visual elements have distilled themselves into my brain. And when I'm designing now, I really pull from that. I, I do very little kind of academic research. I really am looking into myself and reflecting on the things I've seen and um, pulling all those different influences into my work. So I loved the bling of Hong Kong and the gold in Hong Kong. I love the textiles and the amazing color in India. I love now being in um, Connecticut and having my garden be a huge influence on my work. And um, obviously city living both in Hong Kong and New York, um, that sort of hard edged glamour is, is how I imagine those cities. And I always think of that too when I'm designing. So this is our reading room and it's actually our children that named it this because when we moved into this house we weren't sure what this space was going to be used for and um, very very initially both children found this the room that they wanted to sit and read in and so as my husband and I were encouraging every form of reading we were like go for it we're going to call it the reading room and so the name has kind of stuck and what I like about it is that there's no tv in here it's very quiet it's got beautiful light and um, we've got some really cool vintage um, library carts that we use um, for our books, which we've out completely outgrown now. So we need to find more vintage library carts for that. Um, we've got a brilliant old um, fireplace here. It doesn't work. So we filled it with kind of plants and color, which I love. And then we painted everything white, um, the high gloss white when we moved in. It was, as I said, it was really dark. There was a lot of dark wood. Um, and I love just taking these really old distressed beams and painting them high gloss. I think it's so fresh looking. Some of my favorite pieces of furniture are in here. These are vintage chairs that um, we picked up at flea markets and then we lacquered them in these really, in this one we lacquered in this fabulous um, sort of semi uh, gloss turquoise and then did the upholster upholstering to match, which I love. And then this one is so cool. I had this um, piece of vintage um, Indian fabric from my travels. And I loved the idea of taking a very sort of traditional preppy cane chair and upholstering it in um, beautiful Indian textiles. And then this is a funny piece. My husband is um, 
a big lover of quirky things. It's actually a coffee table made from skateboards. So it's, I love the mix of all of these kind of funny bits in here. Um, this is um, a cabinet that I had from my apartment in London. I got that at one of the, I think Portobello Market or something. And I had the glass top cut for it. And I love all these things on top. They're just so, it's an, um, an eclectic mix. This is such a, this I think sums me up probably because this is, it should have a very traditional kind of Roman bust on the top of this marble pedestal, but I love it with the Buddha on top. So I think that juxt juxtaposition of classical and slightly hippie Indian Eastern vibe, it just, to me that, I just love what this stands for. Nothing to as it should be. Um, we've got beautiful light in this room, as you can see, and the windows look out onto um, some of the back garden and this really cool gold glass ball that we bought at a vintage shop in Connecticut that actually belonged to, what's the name of the producer with the red hair? Ron Howard. So Ron Howard used to have an estate in Connecticut and apparently chuck, you know, sold it all off and we bought his beautiful gold ball. And as we go through the house, you will see, I love, love, love round things and I love um, balls in all different sort of iterations. So I love, love, love this room and everyone who comes in here is firstly just like, oh my God, I can't believe you made such a bold choice with the wallpaper, which we'll see. But I think to me it is absolutely the garden inside. And then this was something, um, the fireplace that we put in when we moved in, there was the weirdest fireplace um, or, and mantelpiece, mantelpiece that didn't have a shelf. And I was like, oh my God, that's the ultimate accessorizing opportunity is a shelf above a fireplace. So we bought this fireplace, I think from somewhere like Home Depot, but then used um, the English Paints of Europe paint to get, the, get this amazing green color. Um, these are all mirrors that I've collected um, over the years from London, actually mostly London and some New York. And then these are pieces that Brad and I both, we literally always fall in love with the same thing and each other. Oh my God. <laughs> um, but we saw these um, gold pine cones and just loved them. And then this is um, one of Brad's old pieces. God knows who this guy is, but um, he's kind of cool up here. And I just love the mixing of the gold and the silver. I love all the different textures on here. And I work really hard to keep the plants alive because it is not easy. Um, this is actually something that Brad found on the street. Um, and I think it's so pretty. Again, the balls, the round things. Um, and I love this. It's a vintage one. We had it rewired, so it's really cool. And then over in this corner, we have, um, this is actually a garden table that um, we brought inside. Um, and I just, we collected these funny things on here. These are Hubble telescopes, apparently. Um, and I think both of, we, we saw them and I think we got completely scammed because they were so expensive. And we were like, you know what? We didn't really need to buy the Hubble telescope to have um, in our house, but it's a good story. But we bought them before we had kids and we were sort of, you know, had money to spend on things like that. This is a cool um, lamp that I found actually in Brad's garage before we got married. And then I had this um, bronze, um, brass lampshade uh, made for it. And so many people come in and they're like, oh my God, where can I get a brass lampshade made? And the place that I had it made in the city has gone out of business, so it's not there anymore, which is a shame. Um, and then, oh, more balls over here in this corner. Oh, and this is actually, um, this is one of my trays from the new collection. And I always like to put things that I've designed into the house to see if they work, if the colors work, because my collection is very much an expression of my personal aesthetic, obviously. And so if things work in the house, then they're probably going to work in the collection. So I love this new ECAT tray and I love the play of the ECAT with the stripe. So this is another uh, piece that people seem to love when they come into the house. It's um, designer guild fabric on, I think it's a Mitchell gold Ottoman. Um, and it has really withstood the test of time and children and a lot of children jumping up and down on it. So I would say to people, don't be scared of using velvet and precious fabrics because sometimes they really are just completely fine. 
Um, in this corner, I've got my little collection of balls. So these are some of my glass balls that um, I've collected over the years. And just, I also love glass. Um, I just love the way it takes color. I love the translucent um, aspect of it. And I love playing that against this vintage mirror again with the circles. This is a piece that I bought in a market and then I painted it gold and kind of distressed it. And I've had this with me for such a long time. Um, I also love to have lots of textiles around. So we always have um, Indian quilts and I've got a lovely cashmere um, throw there so that when you're watching TV, you can, there's always tons of, we call them tuckles, to kind of snuggle in with and um, just get really kind of cozy with. So um, we bought these lights at a vintage store um, and they're a pair, but a kind of mismatched pair. So we have one here and one over there, but we made them a proper pair by having the matching shades made in the black um, gloss. And then actually this is another street find. So um, it was funny as I was kind of going through the house thinking about what I was gonna say, I was like, oh my God, all of our furniture is from the street. Um, but this was another street find that we just painted black. It's one of those vintage um, magazine kind of racks, but I love it in here because it's kind of light and airy and it doesn't take up too much space. It's funny because I think I read somewhere once upon a time that as you get older, you do have this inherent desire to be closer to nature. And um, I read it when I was young and thought, oh my God, they're insane. I'm never gonna leave the city. But actually I, my husband and I were both drawn to having more space. Um, and the beauty of nature, I think you do not get in the city. So the transition was difficult at first because I didn't drive. So I was, I moved here and I was like stuck in the middle of nowhere in a garden, which was beautiful, but still not driving. Um, but I, we still spend a lot of time in the city. We still have a place there. So we're back and forth quite a lot. And I do find when I come home now, I think it's age, um, that I am so grateful to just be surrounded by all this green and beauty. Um, and for me, gardening has was a hobby when I was growing up in, well, when I was in England at my parents' house. And now gardening is one of my um, massive hobbies as well. So um, I think that has eased the transition. Okay, so this room I love because there's light coming in from both sides and it is absolutely, you feel like you're inside outside with all this glass, it's so cool. And we use this, again, a multi-purpose room. We use it as um, a kind of dumping ground for a lot of the sports equipment and things like that. But it also um, houses our music area. So that's where the kids do their piano and we've got guitars and stuff there. Um, and also we use this as a dining room. So actually it was so fun. I got to set up the table for a spring um, lunch, brunch, whatever. So it was normally there's more stuff on here, but it was nice to clean it up and, um, and really sort of set the scene for a pretty sort of spring brunch. Um, this is an area where I play with a lot of my textiles. So these um, are all things that I've designed, all the pillows in our collection. And I love to play with them and see what works together, what colors are working together, what fabrications work together. And it's very impactful and I do change it seasonally. Um, so this is definitely more of a spring vibe. Sometimes I'll do something a little bit darker and moodier, but this is definitely all about fresh greens and gorgeous pinks. So that is my spring color palette. Um, I love the lights in this room. Um, they have this beautiful sort of, they're really oversized. They've got this really cool uh, natural texture. And I love that against the kind of slightly more glamorous um, mirror that we painted matte white. We painted the piano white, like we'll paint anything. <laughs> we give us anything and we'll paint it white. Um, and then we've just got some cool pieces in here. These, um, this is a vintage armoire that holds a whole host of Lego and um, photo albums and stuff. And then some of the cool lights that I've had. And then my husband is always picking up artwork. And actually, as I was getting the room ready yesterday, I was like, wait a minute, there's a painting up there that I've never seen before. And he had obviously just come in and just chucked it up there and hoped I wouldn't notice, and I didn't. Um, but yeah, so he's always finding paintings and just sort of popping them in the house. But actually, some of these paintings are his. Like, this is one of um, his paintings, which I absolutely love. And um, this is another one of his. So 
I love having his paintings around the house as well. So it's just, you know, it's a mix. So I was having a play with some of our new spring collection and um, trying to decide if I was setting a spring or having a spring brunch, what, what would I do? So I loved bringing in um, or being inspired by really this beautiful color palette of the flowers, the pale, pale pink and this really lovely lilac. Um, and obviously green is a huge color for me. I love it. And then this, these are some of our new um, pieces in the collection. So this is our bow napkin, which is actually kind of fabulous because it has the bow tied onto the back or stitched onto the back. So you tie the bow yourself. Um, and this is our melamine collection, which I was inspired by some of my mum's old china. But we put in our butterfly into the um, pattern. And then we also... The stripey bee is a big part of the Joanna Buchanan collection. So we also put the stripey bee in there. Oh, and here's the stripey bee as well. So this is this is the bee embroidered on straw. And then this is one of our beautiful new tablecloths, which is the golden bee. So this is white linen with these beautiful um, golden bees kind of embroidered all over the tablecloth. So I was feeling very springy and um, loving this palette of kind of acid pastels they're not sickly sweet they've got a little bit more punch to them um, this is the aqua with um, the pink which I love that color combination I think it's really it's strong it's not insipid but it's not too bold or overwhelming um, and then actually this is one of our new um, capice trays that I've designed and I love the kind of luminescent um, look of the capice and then these are our candlesticks so you can see like I really try to use what I design to make sure that it is useful it is beautiful and um, hopefully we'll set an amazing table um, and you can have lots of fun parties with us with our things it's so funny I did a career day at school this week um, for my children so I'm very much in career mode at the moment um, I um, knew I always loved um, fashion and design and even as a child I was always you know tie-dyeing my mother's sheets and turning them into tablecloths and painting fabric and decorating cardboard boxes for my stuffed animals houses and stuff like that so I always had a passion for design I followed that through at university um, and then through an internship got a job in London and worked in London in a corporate environment for six years moved to New York and worked in a multiple corporate environments as a designer um, and then I actually I lost my job um, around eight years ago and um, a friend of mine who I had worked with said oh come to and you know do something for me for One Kings Lane and I said oh you know not really interested taking a bit of a break and she said no 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 you have to but and I said, only if it's my own brand, only if it's Christmas ornaments. And she was like, you're out of your mind. You've never, you know, you don't know anything about the Christmas market. But I said, no, that's what I want to do. God knows where that came from. Um, but anyway, and it started with, so One King's Lane was my very first um, customer. And then it just grew. You kind of get a bit of an ego about things. And you're like, oh, people like what I'm doing as, as for myself, not working for someone else. Um, and the business started, as I said, eight, nine years ago. And now we're with amazing clients around the world. We're in Neiman Marcus. We're in Bloomingdale's. We have a very deep relationship with Harrods in the UK. And we've got some fabulous boutiques um, in Monaco and um, South America. So it, it's an amazing. I feel like everything's come full circle because I feel like a child of the world. And now our brand is a global brand. So it's cool. So this is my studio, which is actually incredibly tidy. And my children who are always, you know, shaming me for having such a messy studio would actually agree that it's tidy. Although I know to the naked eye, everyone's probably looking at it going, oh my God, how can anyone work in a space like this? But I have everything here that I need. Um, and I know where everything is, which is actually um, does sometimes impress people. But I have all my um, inspiration. I have ideas on the go. I have samples in here. Um, and I think part of the way I work is having the juxtaposition of things um, just kind of lying around. And sometimes as a creative, you'll be like, oh, my God, I never thought of putting that with that. And it's only just because you had those two things sitting in your office at the same time together and it just kind of jogs your memory or jogs your brain in a way that 
wouldn't have been jogged if you were in a really spotlessly clean place. Um, so anyway, I have um, all my working things on here. It's kind of divided by sections. I have a lot of my vintage pieces here. You can see these are works in progress. I have tons and tons of um, reference. I mean, this is just like an Aladdin's cave for someone that loves color and texture. These are, you know, like a bajillion uh, ribbon options from my trips to India. I have all my Pantone color books and all my um, reference books. I have images of all my photo shoots that we've done, packaging, again, more textiles and, um, and just, you know, things that will inspire me that I'll kind of dig through and find. Um, and then this is my, oh my God, please don't look at this. We'll just do a real slow pan across that because I, I meant to tidy it and I didn't. But um, I've got some really pretty things over here that I keep meaning to kind of do. I keep meaning to get a cool lampshade for um, that light. I've got some nice plants in here. I also love dead flowers as well. So you can see the hyacinths are a little bit dead, but I, can't, I love the smell so much. I refuse to get rid of them until they're completely falling apart. Um, and then I love all the details in here. Like I've got my pens in my pots. This is some of the jewelry um, that I'm working on with some of the stones that I've got um, that I'm playing with. And then I always love to have fresh flowers in here as well. So that really gives me a lift. And this light um, we got for our wedding from ABC Carpet. And to me, it is just one of the most beautiful things in the world. Um, I love, again, the glass the orange in there is so strong. I love it. Um, and then this table we actually had made for the studio space so that it's got the work countertop and then all this amazing shelving underneath. Um, Cause you can see, I do need a lot of, a lot of space for my things. Yeah. I think people come to the house and they always say, I feel like I'm on holiday. And um, one day, I mean, we, we've got a really pretty pool, a really old kind of like black pool and a really cool old pool house. And people kind of go out there and they just can't believe that, to your point, they're just an hour from New York. Um, but we work a lot in the garden. We really try and create this feeling of um, just beauty. We really do. It, it matters to us. We like living um surrounded by beautiful things and having the greenery so close. So I think for me, I love um, color. That's number one. I love pattern and I love the play of color and pattern. And I hate things that look too cookie cutter. And I like the feeling of an eclectic layered home. Um, Brad and I, that Brad's my husband and I both have collected pieces over the years. So things in here mean something to us. And to me, it's about putting it in a putting things together in a way that works, not buying things to fit the situation. So this is the kitchen in our house. You can see the ceilings get a little bit lower. Um, but again, we painted everything white, white, white. This is one of um, Brad's paintings, which I love. I think it's such a brilliant um, spot for it. And I love the drama of the black and the olive. So we put in the kitchen. Um, it's Ikea. So high, low, um, with the wooden um, butcher block top and the cool kind of um, gray cabinets. I love the warmth of that. And then we put in, um, I, we originally put in the tiles and I couldn't figure out what else we wanted to do. I just, I, the tiles were cool, but it wasn't enough. So then I think about two years ago, I said, you know what, let's put a shelf in because I love the look of a shelf in a kitchen. And then let's just go bonkers with the wallpaper, which is what we did. And when Brad saw it, he was like, there's a key in there. It's like crazy. But I was like, I love it because it feels again like the garden coming inside. And then on our center island, I just have all this greenery. So you can see I'm not really, it's not really a chef's kitchen. I would say it's a gardener's kitchen. Um, and then I've got, you know, things that I'm trying to keep alive here. I'm not the best houseplant person, but I'm doing my best. Um, and then we've got more books. Um, again, like we just can't seem to have enough space for all our books. And um, this is a really cool um, table that I found on eBay. And then we had the, um, the plexiglass cut to size and shape. And then these are just kind of fun Ikea chairs. But I love how transparent this whole corner is it just feels very light and um, I think that's what we needed in this room 
And then this is a really cool piece um, that we got. I can't remember where we got it, but we replaced the, it's like a vintage filing cabinet, but we replaced the, um, the panels with mirrors so that it was reflecting of light. And then we've got our bar in here, which is kind of fun. Um, and then I'm not gonna show you what's in the other, in the other um, sections, but it's just like kitchen stuff. Um, and then this is a really lovely piece that Brad made um, years ago before we met, but I, we added the glasses kind of later. So that's, and I like to think that that's me and that's him. And I like having these moments of very sort of simple, quiet, textural um, feeling and color in amongst all the craziness of the colors of the house, you know? So I think having the, 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 the quiet moments is nice. And um, I really didn't take down, my son just turned 13. And I love these uh, crazy um, silver balloons. But normally this corner is a little bit quiet because we just have one sort of single lamp. But again, silver and gold, love it together. So anyway, yeah, so that's our kitchen. And then, oh, this is a really um, beautiful light that I found. I think this was an eBay find as well. I needed to find something that was really shallow um, because the ceilings are low in here, but I wanted, again, I wanted something really sparkly and really um, dramatic, and I just love that. We actually ended up shipping it from Germany, I think, um, but it is so perfect in here, those giant kind of gobby glass stones at the top, it's so cool. So my obsession with wallpaper has not stopped and continues everywhere, so we ended up wallpapering up the stairs and in the hallway upstairs, this fabulous um, blue and white stripe, which I just think looks so fresh. And it was so funny, I realized when I just was doing this, I'm wearing the blue and white stripe shirt as well. So I feel like I'm blending in. Um, but I love all the different angles of the wallpaper when you start cutting it around the corners, but we literally wallpapered everywhere we could. When I set about designing a space, I always think about the mood that I'm trying to create. Is it moody? Is it dramatic? Is it, you know, cozy? And I think this house is very optimistic feeling. And I think it's the color and the light in here that's so lovely. And when people come in, they, I love that reaction of like, wow, people don't expect an old house to look like this. So I think I love the, the happiness about the house. I think it's just got a really good vibe. So this is the bedroom and it's not very big, but I love it because it just is so light and bright. You can see we don't have any curtains. I love going to sleep at night, seeing the moon outside and the stars. And I love waking up to the natural light and the birds singing. And um, this is totally, um, I would, it's my sanctuary. I come up here, I find it so relaxing. I love my bed. I love all the textiles on here. There is, we are not a, a, a white bed person, but these are things that I've had made from my travels to India. These are textiles that I picked up over the years. This is a really cool piece because this is um, some, a piece of fabric that I found in Japan um, when I was there and I had it upholstered onto the Lucite base. So I love, again, the juxtaposition of a sort of 60s Lucite piece with crazy Japanese um, vintage OB fabric on there. Um, and I, these glass balls, again, glass balls were given to me um, or given to us as wedding presents, which I think are so lovely in here. And really the color inspiration for the room came from this gorgeous vase, which is the green, the orange um, and the pink. And I just think this color palette is so gorgeous. I love it. And um, you can see I look out over the garden so I can see what's going on and I really feel very connected to, um, to our outside space in this room. We have rugs in the reading room and the TV room, but like upstairs, I, we painted all the floorboards white high gloss and I love, um, I love the feel of that and I love the texture of it. Um, so yes, I think in smaller rooms, um, like this bedroom, we didn't need a rug. I think I like the sort of feeling of the sort of spareness and the extreme amount of white in here, I think is really nice. I have no idea, but I mean, my husband is six foot and he can get in and he's okay. I'm five foot six, so it's probably uh, seven foot probably, I think. So I'm gonna quickly show you my son's room because he, 
it's a work in progress, but he's just moved into this room. We're just decorating it for him. And he organized um, and picked out all the shelves. He decided he wanted these shelves to show his shoes. Um, you can see how neat and tidy he is. Everything's very organized. Um, and he started doing some drawings of shoes. Here are his shoe cleaning kits. Like it doesn't end with the shoes. So anyway, um, he is so thrilled to have this space and to have it um, be his own. And I'm so happy that he's decorating it how he wants it. Home means to me somewhere where I can truly relax. Although here we are filming in the home today. <laughs> so it's, it's a little bit of a workspace too, but I love at the end of the night, um, closing the gate, and I love a fire and it's really somewhere where you can relax and read a book, be with the family. And I like that there's quiet times and there's busy times too. You know, there's when everyone's around and it's noisy and fun and it's kind of slightly chaotic, that's brilliant. But I also love it when it's really quiet and really still. Um, so I think, you know, home is a space that can embrace all aspects of your life really. Hi, I'm Cynthia. Welcome to our Coral Gables home. My name is Cynthia Hudson. I am the Senior Vice President and Managing Director of CNN and Español. We are in beautiful Coral Gables, Florida, uh, which is a historic area, and it is uh, this home is right on historic Coral Way. This is one of only 32 coral rock homes left in the Coral Gables and Miami area. And it was originally built by George Merrick, who was the founder of Coral Gables. And it was designed by H.G. Fink, who was his premier architect. And they used the natural stone of the region to start their original homes here before it was actually incorporated. So the house is now 100 years old, um, while Coral Gables actually is started in 1926. I find it interesting to be somebody like we call on the hyphen, where my father um, was born in the US, I was born in the US, but my mother was born in Cuba. And I think there's an, a, a, a really interesting moment where those cultures merge in people like me. So this is the entry foyer. It was originally a porch um, and unfortunately, the owners, this home has only had three owners, um, at some point covered over the original coral rock with a plaster. And I was able to actually chip away at that plaster to create the beautiful uh, rock wall. We raised the ceiling and did the beautiful beams. Um, and we turned this into a foyer because we felt that the immediate um, access to the front yard needed a, a welcoming area to get to the rest of the house. So over here we have a settee that I bought a beautiful federal style Duncan Fife. If you look at the legs it's the perfect Duncan Fife uh, little mini sofa if you will. And I bought it 25 years ago from an antique shop owned by a friend of mine and she called me about 10 years later to say I think I found the matching pair and so I went and bought the other one and I'm just so thrilled I think I always joke around with my family that these will be buried with me <laughs> and a painting that my father did my father uh, was an incredibly talented man although he was a university professor um, he uh, loved to try new things and he painted and he was just a, I think a renaissance man so now we enter the living room and the living room has the beautiful coral fireplace um, and it's one of those grand rooms with the high ceilings and we were able to really respect the architecture that was designed to create that sense of formality from the architect. When you have a large art collection and it's colorful, um, you want to make the room around it as neutral as possible so that it's not conflicting and comp competing with the art. And so I've tried to always keep palettes of either grays or beiges or off-whites. That way we can really bring the color through the art. So I have several favorites in my room, but I would say that one of the tops obviously is the portrait by um, Spanish artist Nati Cañada, who um, I worked with when I was at Cosmopolitan TV. And she did a series on historic women and was kind enough to say, I'm gonna be going through Miami. Do you want me to paint your portrait? And it was very expensive, but I thought it was a great investment 
And it was most importantly dear to my heart because it's my daughters when they were young and myself. And my husband at the time cried when he saw the painting uh, finished. Unfortunately, um, a lot of beautiful art was left in Cuba by my grandfather and grandmother when they fled in 1960. But they did bring two pieces in their car when they took the ferry from Havana to Key West, thinking that they would someday go back. And the two pieces that they took were this beautiful painting of a Cuban landscape on board from the 19th century in the 1800s by Reynoso. His work is in the Museo uh, of Cuban Art in Havana. And this painting by a Spanish uh, impressionist whose last name is Llaverias, and um, it's depicting the port of Barcelona. And over here, we have a beautiful fan that belonged to my great-grandmother, Victoria de la Vega y Sirven. <laughs> and it's beautiful because it's um, all mother of pearl, and it's hand-painted. My mother always treasured it, and I treasure it too. Um, I love to find things that mean something, that, that speak to me and surround the, my home and the people that I love with things that I think evoke and create opportunity for you to reflect and create moments of memories. And so each one of the things that's in my home has some kind of special meaning. It reminds me of a, of a, of a trip or it reminds me of a person that I've loved. So we walk into the formal dining room and I love the shape. I had always had a long table and here I was able to do a round table. And I think that round tables create just a beautiful moment for conversation when you're having a dinner party. And so I was able to combine it with antique chairs and do something fascinating with my furniture. But what I love is this piece. This is an antique Italian bookcase. And this bookcase is Burlwood, which is so in now. <laughs> but whoever said Burlwood went out of style. Um, and I just love the fact that I can keep some of my family heirlooms and collectibles in there without it being too showy. Um, and at the same time, it's just such a grand piece. So this is the original kitchen area of the home, which we then expanded to add a large Florida room. And the great thing about this kitchen is that we were able to do it in a seamless manner, incorporating the original rock from the walls with the beams that were used for, to support the structure, which we clad in the same wood that was used for the beams on the ceiling. But what's special is the secret door to the basement below, which is a wine cellar. And I'll show you how we get there. So through the secret door um, underneath the house, we came into a basement space that was always here um, because the house is highly elevated. And we just finished it off into a wine cellar. Um, and what we have is a piece that I love. It was an antique um, carousel horse, but it's by the same uh, person who created the horses at Disney World. And so this is from the 1950s. This is my husband's sanctuary. We have our wine collection. We play dominoes. This is where you see the interesting combination. This is our domino table. Um, and it's a fun place to watch movies um, on a rainy day. It's especially comforting to be down here and, and just, uh, you know, hang out. And uh, the painting uh, behind me is not a painting. It's actually a collection of photographs that my husband took of antique doors from our honeymoon on the Danube. So on the way to the family quarters, we have four bedrooms on this side, plus an office over there. And um, it's interesting because this is basically a family sanctuary where I have portraits of my father, my mother, my daughters when they were little girls. And what used to be a window, which was the only way that Historic would allow us to create the addition to our master suite. Here we enter the master area, our sanctuary, and of course, the crazy lining of a wall with pictures from all of our six children. So the first thing you find is our Art Deco style master bath. And I was able to find these beautiful raised glazed tiles from the 1920s from England. And I imported them. They were actually more expensive than all the marble. But I was able to create and evoke the 1920s, which was respecting the architecture of the house. And we did the same with the lamps and the mirrors and the cabinetry. And I was able to actually find the lotus leaf type of wallpaper that matches the original tiles. 
And then as we continue this way, we have the actual bedroom, which is, I think, proportionate to the sizes of the spaces in the home. I think a lot of times people make these huge additions and it feels like an addition. We wanted this to feel like it was always here. And uh, my favorite is that I have the double doors that face the pool and the beautiful backyard. And it's just such a great and relaxing space. So here we are on the back terrace that is um, beautiful coral rock. And we did the pool to be a lounging pool and a relaxing pool. It's very shallow, it's only five feet, but it's really made so that we can actually relax inside of the pool and not have to be worrying about not having enough room. And there's plenty of space for people to sit uh, out here and enjoy the beautiful weather. So the entire house was built around a courtyard that we created to mix the old and the new. And it's my favorite spot of the house. So we have the beautiful lemon trees that my husband tends to. These are Meyer lemons and they're huge and they're delicious. We use them for everything from pies to seafood. Um, I'm, I'm trying to find somebody who can make limoncello with them. Um, and here we have the fountains that we just thought would give this a charming effect with the uh, Juliet balcony doors because the house is so high above um, the main level. And it just gives you this grand entrance into the living room, the formal living room. You really do feel like you're in Italy. That was the idea. The idea was to take advantage of the architecture, the setting, the sunlight, and really create a very, um, I want to say, organic environment that matches the home. Thanks for watching. For more homeworthy content, be sure to like and subscribe.